Hello everyone, welcome to the ninth round of the World Championship between Carlsen and Karyakin. Uh, I have Grandmaster Daniel Naroditsky here with me. Uh, yes, hello Daniel. Um, how do you feel today? That's good. Uh, looking forward to the game. I think I think it's going to be a really good one. Yes. So I'll mention that Carlson is black today, and he's uh, behind uh, by uh, one point. He lost the previous round, so four rounds left. And if he doesn't win any of these rounds, then he will lose the match. So today is black in an almost must-win situation, and we have several moves uh, for a start. Let's show the position from the game. So we'll input the moves uh, manually on our Leeches board. So um, Daniel, you can also put the moves if, if you wish after uh, bishop b5, a6, bishop a4. So far, uh, nothing we haven't seen before in this match. Knight f6, castles, b5, bishop b3. So far, we're following the main line of the Rui Lopez. In both of the previous games, Carlsen played bishop e7 with black. And Karyakin once played d3 and once rook e1. So this happened once and this happened once. But in this particular game, he went for a line he didn't play before in this match. Mm. Bishop c5. It's going to be interesting. Yes, and now Karyakin played a move that's also considered to be the main line, I believe. a4. I'm not sure about the rook, uh, the, the, the move order, but now rook b8 was played. Maybe actually c3 and then a4 is, is more common, yeah? Yeah, c3, d4, no, no, c3, d4, I think, and should be 6, a4 is the main line. Yeah, I, I, I'm never sure about the move orders here, if it's starting with a4 or d4, but uh, anyway... But it always transposes. Yeah, in most cases it transposes, so a4 was played, rook b8 was uh, replied instantly by Carlsen. Let's make sure that people can hear us, actually. I'll try to, to watch our own stream and see how it works. Mm. So, in the meantime, what do you think about the position? C3 is going to be played or maybe something else? I know also... Yeah, I think, yeah? I think C3 is going to be played in this main line. Carlson doesn't reveal anything. Uh, White's not really risking if he remembers all the theory. Yeah, that's true. Uh, this this line with you know knight a three knight takes b five, which always looks dangerous, but in reality, uh, usually you know black is the one who has to fight for a draw. Yes. So, so let's see. Uh, sure, Carlson needs something in mind. Yes. Uh, so the viewers can hear us. I hope. I'm not sure if they can hear you. I had to make sure of it. Um, because uh, I had the sound issues with uh, Skype in the past. So far, nobody complained. Uh, so people are asking what's the score. The score is four and a half, three and a half in Karyakin's favor. And uh, it, it just won. It, you can also say plus one in favor of Karyakin. He won one more game than uh, Carlsen. And uh, well, already no complaints at the first uh, few minutes. So this is good. And... Um, so I wanted to mention that in this position, also a takes b5 and knight c3 is uh, one of the possible lines. Maybe not necessarily in this particular order. Maybe first uh, something like d3. And then if, let's say, castles or d6, then uh, a takes b5, a takes b5, knight c3. And uh, with the idea after castles to go bishop g5 and knight d5 later, followed by quick... Well, let's say, hmm, I'm actually not sure. Maybe, no. Maybe we should be three, but then I d4 anyway, getting the two bishops. Yeah. I'm honestly so. not sure how this line goes, but uh, as far as I can remember, maybe it's only after castles, I don't know. Maybe after d6 there's something. I it's very hard to get all the move orders right, always. Yeah, the move orders are... Okay, but c3 on the board was played. 
Um, but, but I'm Mevo looking forward to the main line. I'm actually curious what they have in mind because I've played it for both colors. I wonder if Karakin will actually try for an edge somehow. Because uh, his openings must be quite uh, good right now. With all the preparation. Mm, so sorry. Had some slight issue. Um, so I see that the volume sound is not perfect, but it's good enough. I don't know what else uh, to do. Let's see. So C3 on the board. Carlson is thinking with black. And uh, what strategy would you have chosen if you were uh, playing in Carlson's place? Um, I would have tried to play solidly because uh, if he can hold comfortably in this game, of course he was incredibly upset and it's tempting to go on tilt um, when you're in this situation. But if he can hold, uh, you know, maybe even from a position of strength, and then he'll have white uh, and Carlson. White is he still is the favorite I think against Kar in any one game against Karyakin so I would I wouldn't mind a draw if I were Carlson in this game. Mm -hmm. um, his goal is to win one game at this point. It's not to win three. Uh, so I think he needs to do all he can to first tie the match and then he can think about winning it. Okay, we have some moves: d6, d4, bishop b6, a takes b5, and I assume Carlson will take on b5. There's not. Yeah. Any other option? Although it's really, you mean there's there there aren't any other alternatives? <laughs> Not that I can think of. Knight a3 on the board. <laughs> yeah. And now black to move. Usually castles is yeah. the common move here, sacrificing castles, a pawn. Yeah. And now uh, white usually goes for taking on b5, and that's what I predict. That's the logical follow-up to knight a3, and then. Uh, the th as theory follows here, black can choose between e takes d4 and bishop g4, or bishop g4 immediately. Um, yeah. I believe this is more common. Bishop g4 immediately, yeah. And we have it on the board. 12 it's bishop g4. Yeah. What's the main line now? I remember d5 uh, used to be the main line and now in... Bishop c. I think it's... Yes? I believed it was bishop c2, but I'm not sure. Yeah, me too, but I, I just wanted to state that d5 used to be uh, the main line here uh, at some point, but then they discovered a lot of dangerous attacking ideas for for black involving uh, knight jumps to h5 and h4 and so on. And uh, even uh, Khalifman recommended it in his bo theoretical book, uh, Openings 1e4 According to Anand. But it, it was busted, and bishop c2 lo for a long time uh, is considered to be the main line, and it's been played over the board. We have bishop c2, and now normally black takes at some point on f3, and white goes gf, knight h5, one of the, these type of uh, moves, yeah? Or maybe is, yeah, is yeah. it ed first? I don't remember. ed, cd, and rook e8. Uh, actually, I'm not sure which line is more trendy nowadays. I think I think bishop f3 is less common now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, it is the main line, and it was played, and now if I'm not wrong, cd is considered to be the main move. Yeah, but there's also is there knight takes d4? Well, now that I look, I see that it was played. Knight b takes d4. Uh, knight e4 was played in the game. Yeah. That, w that is what you meant, yeah? Yeah. And now knight takes, c takes, and uh, well, I analyzed it uh, a few years ago for white with c takes d4, knight bd4 I'm not aware of, but maybe it's uh, simplifying the game a little bit by exchanging these two knights. Okay, so where, so where, are we in the, where are we in the game? Uh, this is the position in the game, bishop takes f3 was played, g takes f3, knight h5 uh, on the board. Well, wow. I'm wondering how Very quickly. it will go down. Yes, th this has been uh, the fastest uh, opening uh, moves that I've seen in the match so far. Yeah, it's like they're playing bullets, yes. yeah. Yes. 
Hmm. I'm honestly out of theory. Like I, I, all of these positions look familiar, but it's very hard to distinguish between them. Yeah. By the way, I'll mention that uh, Daniel here with me is uh, in the U.S. right now. Where are you exactly? In Stanford, at the moment. I'm well. Currently, I'm at home, but I'm mm. I'm studying at Stanford. Yes. So. University. Yeah. Yeah. You're at home? And, yeah, uh, for Thanksgiving break. Is it San Francisco? Or... I'm never sure when it it's comes to the US. It's near San Francisco, but basically San Francisco, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so for you it's much easier to stay up until the end of the game, because uh, I assume it's... Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's like 11. It's not easy, but I, I manage. Yeah. <laughs> it's not easy. It's 11 o'clock, but I managed to stay up. So. Yeah. I like sleeping, but I'm just yeah. opening the window. Yeah, but I mean... Because, you know, America. Yeah. But still, there there is much less reason for you to complain, since if the game lasts for six hours... Oh, yeah. Six hours for me means I'm, I'm up until 3 a.m. While commentating yeah. these games. Kind but... Of... Yeah. Well... Well... So I have a feeling this game... It seems like the kind of thing that might end up perpetual very quickly. Yeah. Uh, if they will continue to play uh, highly theoretical moves, then I suspect... Uh, so, I mean, if something like bishop e3, then what does, let's say, be again? Bishop e3, I'm not sure. By the way, um, someone asked a good question. How do we know which position is in the game and which position is our analysis? So. Uh -huh. First, let's mention that the position on the board is after knight h5, right here. And every now and yeah. then, I'll show you uh, the the board. Actually, we have some some moves. Bishop e3 was played, or no, 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 it wasn't. <laughs> King h1, Queen f6, and then Bishop e3. There's not much I can say about the opening that can be too smart, because it's a, a matter of uh, opening theory. And uh, they are playing the moves quite fast, so there's no point checking the database and so on, since they're not thinking on each move. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll mention that uh, now it's uh, black to move. This is the position in the game, and uh, we will make moves without... If we don't say that it was played, then it means it's our analysis. And every now and then I'll show uh, our viewers this board over here. This will always be the board from the game. So, uh, and the, on Lee Chess, this one is the board where we analyze and we'll uh, mention uh, which part is analysis and which part is the game. So I hope this was clear. Right now, this is the exact position as you can see. And black to move. So Daniel, what do you think? I mean, of course it's a matter uh, of knowledge, but... Uh, well, I think knight of four should be the move here. Usually mm -hmm. it is. Yes. So I'm quickly checking the main line here. I'll also mention that move orders in chess is one of the most complicated and confusing topics, even for professionals. And I, I've even witnessed people in the highest levels uh, confusing move orders in the opening. Just not so long ago, for example, there is the game Nakamura versus Topalov, uh, if uh, you've seen it uh, from the Champions Showdown, where Topalov lost in like 13 moves. I think it was rapid, yeah. but I'm not sure. I, I didn't see the game. Yeah, but Topalov confused something in the opening and just lost a piece. So far, I'm. So the the moves from the opening have been all the most played moves. Surprise, surprise. The very main line. E takes d4. Then, let's see. Knight b takes d4 is actually the most popular move. I didn't know it. Even more than cd. Knight takes. Then c takes. 
bishop takes f3, gf3, knight h5, king h1, everything has been the main lines. B queen f6, bishop e3, and Karyakin is thinking. Um, yeah, so this is the position from the game, and this is what we're analyzing. Well, even though we have only like something like uh, 30 games in the database, if less than 30 games, this position was visited like 5,000 times because it's such a, a well-known mainline that uh, so many people have analyzed it. It's very common in the Rui so what the, What's the uh, most common move here? Well, there are three moves that have been uh, visited the most for black, but the one that seems to be the most popular according uh, to the games and the people who visited it is uh, rook to a8 in this position. Another choice, so let's put it on the board to show, uh, rook yeah, a8, it's... yeah, just uh, slowly uh, improving the pieces, trying to take over the a5. Oh, you're, you're creating a threat. Yeah, you're rook, rook takes a1. Yeah, yeah uh, so kind of forcing white to, to give up uh, the a file. Another option is, is uh, knight f4. There are four yeah. options that seem very popular here among the people who analyze this position. Knight f4. Another option is c5. And the one that uh, was checked a little bit less but might be even more challenging for white, judging by the statistics, is uh, g6. Uh -huh. So, as I mentioned... Uh, interesting. I wonder what the... Yeah, me too. Yeah, I wonder what the idea is. Maybe it's... Uh... Should be three, maybe g6. Uh, maybe the idea is to play knight g7 and then knight e6. Yeah, it's so, very possible. Uh, yeah, knight g7 and then knight e6. Not to d6, but to e6. Yeah, it's very possible. Um, I feel but, like. Yeah. Um, yeah, Carlsen is probably still in his preparation, but he's thinking, so he, he played c5. But it took him uh, quite a while to do it, so I wonder if he checked it or not. And if I didn't mention it in this stream, although I mentioned uh, in all the previous ones, we are checking all the game using only our brain and uh, the opening uh, the database since we don't know much about this particular position. So we just check how many times it was reached and uh, how many people visited uh, each move. But uh, we don't have any computer uh, programs, so we use our brains exclusively to, to do the analysis and we hope to maintain a high level of, uh, of uh, let's say, of moves. And, uh, yeah, and I think it's... Yeah, yeah. It's quite uh, interesting, an interesting experience for us because usually if we will do it, like without the crowd watching us, we'll probably be tempted to use the computer or won't be as serious for four hours straight. We'll oh, be dis like, um, nobody, nobody can take can hold us accountable, but here we yes, already exactly. claimed that we're not using the computer, we're, so we and, can't. And we're also a, less likely to be distracted by phones or other things, other different uh, potential distractions. Uh, there are so many nowadays in our modern age, so... Uh, someone mentioned earlier in the chat that uh, they can hear you a bit less than they can hear me. Well, I, I tried to solve this problem in the past, but no matter what I do, uh, it keeps the ratio between our voices the same. I don't know how to change your voice exclusively without well, affecting... I can speak. I can speak, I guess. I can, lower the, I can raise the volume on my own computer. Uh, let's try it and see how the viewers yeah, react. Okay, you can also scream the moves, but I uh, will prefer, I mean, people can just probably um, increase their volume um, and listen very carefully. So E5 was played. Seems like this position reminds me of a game by Hare Krishna that was played at some point. I think he was playing the black pieces and someone with white was pressuring him. But uh, it's probably... You know, there's some lines, yeah. I so D, D, E looks first here. Mm -hmm. But I guess Queen H4 can also, maybe also is considered. Yes. 
So in this position, it's, it's not Ari Krishna actually, it's Nakamura Kasimjanov. But uh, I remember, wow. I, I kind of remember that Nakamura was white and he managed to beat someone in this variation using some theoretical preparation. And with the move e5, he actually later on uh, managed to, to win against Kasimjanov. So this is from the Tromso Olympia 2014. E5. Queen e6, and uh, also we have it on the board in our game right now. Queen e6, oh, okay. Yes. So, so very theoretical. My, my here. Yes. So, let's see. In the Nakamura game, he followed up with uh, the move. Uh, he takes d6. Then... Uh -huh. Black played c4, white played b3, c3, wow. d5, queen takes d6, rook a6, and probably white is better, because he's a pawn up. So probably is somewhere in this line, Carlson found an improvement. Hopefully, for, for him. Or ma maybe he's just going for it and he's going to lose the same way. <laughs> lose what? He's go just going for this line and then he's going to lose the exactly the same way as if John that was his plan all along. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. <laughs> wow, Karyakin. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can tell you're being sarcastic. And, uh, yeah, that's why, uh, for the viewers who are intimately familiar with my sense of humor, I do overuse sarcasm, so just a <laughs> word of warning. I am yeah. sarcastic about 95% of the time I say things. Mm -hmm. Even now, and uh, <laughs> well, yeah, that was unintentional sarcasm. Yes, and uh, in in this, so it takes d six is not on the board. Um, so this is the yeah, position. So the position on the board is as a c five and now d five. No, queen e six was played queen actually, six. and now Karyakin, okay. Karyakin on the white pieces is thinking. And uh, while he does, since we, there's no point in analyzing uh, too many concrete variations now, uh, because it's still, in my opinion, part of the opening preparation. Let's, let's mention a few things about uh, the players. So first of all, um, it's quite common in world championships, at least as far as I've witnessed, to have a lot of draws and then have someone winning on game seven or eight. I recall Gelfand beating Anand for the first time in Game 7 and then Anand bounced back with, on Game 8. Uh, also, something about... Uh, there was another World Championship when it happened. But uh, I, I don't... I, I think... Well, Kromnik Lech, Lechow comes to mind in Brissago 2004, but mm -hmm. I don't remember when the, the results of the game started happening. Yeah, and also... Kasparov versus Anand, where Anand won, I think it was on game 8, after many draws. So Anand managed to win, and then Kasparov bounced back on the next round. Uh, so it's kind of symbolic, even though in those matches it was a little bit longer. I think they had more than 12 games, but uh, maybe 24 if I'm not wrong, but I, I really don't know. Uh, so we can check it. One of the perks of streaming is that I can say a bunch of things that I don't All know. Right, let, me, let, me, let me check, let me check, let me check. No, 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 uh, don't, don't so check. They played in New York, I think, also. Don't check, I was just about to say... Don't check, okay, okay. I was just about to say that one of the perks of streaming is that I can mention historical facts and then say that I don't know something, and people in the chat will just Google everything and tell us the answers. And we are just going to yeah. focus on the moves and uh, analyzing variations and talking uh, about things we don't know every now and then. Yeah, I guess that's, that's logical, because whenever I call up Google, well, it's already a distraction. Yes. So I would rather... <laughs> exactly. So, uh, I'm just obsessed with Googling stuff. So. Well, many of us are. I think in a way yeah. it's very similar to an engine. Uh, it's actually a search engine, yeah? You can call it a search it's an engine. engine. Yes. It's because you get knowledge immediately. It's, it's on-demand knowledge. Yeah. Above on-demand knowledge. 
Yeah, I think I'll remember it better if I just think about it and then after thinking about it I'll see the answer in the chat rather than searching actively. I feel like um, Kasparov versus Anand, was it 24 games? And uh, I remember Kasparov like won, after losing one game, he won like four of the next uh, six games or something. Yeah, he ended up crushing him in the end, but I yeah, don't Yeah, but, but uh, the fact that Anand was leading at some point in 95, it was uh, quite, uh, quite uh, interesting from historical point of view. By the way, speaking of historical facts, um, Sergei Karyakin, what can you tell us about him? What's so? What's unique about him from an historical point of view? Do you know? Uh, I think he's. I believe he's the youngest. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess it's just me, right? Not the, the, the viewers. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, he's the youngest. He's the youngest grandmaster in history. Exactly. He became a grandmaster at age twelve. At age twelve, and if you take that for granted, just think about what age you were doing at age twelve. Ridiculous. Think about what you were yeah, doing. Yeah. I remember like playing uh, football with my friends in the neighborhood and uh, dreaming about yeah. becoming a football player. Yeah, I mean, it was amazing. Yeah, I, I did some addition. I mean, and I thought I was so cool for you know doing some math homework, and here's this guy becoming a grandmaster and like the best in the whole world. Or yeah, a game that's existed for two thousand years. I think. Uh, he said in an He's interview kidding. once that he will be the world champion even when he was like that young or that he wants to be the world champion we have some connection uh, problems but it's it's probably from my end because uh, I'm streaming while skyping but uh, hopefully the viewers will forgive us um, oh. what were you saying? Can I get here? Yes, when he was twelve, he was uh, he was uh, Ruslan Ponomaryov's coach uh, or second. Uh, while Ponom Ruslan was like fifteen, <laughs> and Ponomaryov won the. But back at the time, they were both uh, living and uh, playing for the Ukrainian Chess Federation, and Sergei uh, changed it to the Russian Chess Federation a few years ago. But when they were both Ukrainian, uh, Ru Ruslan was uh, uh, challenging, playing in some tournament for the FIDE World Championship and actually won. And Sergei was his 12-year-old second and they, they called him the coach of tactics because he was so good with tactics. And um, yeah, I found it quite impressive that a 12-year-old is already a second of a world champion. <laughs> and I dreaming to... Really? Not 17? Yeah, or 17, yeah, 17. I remember something like 17 when he was like becoming but the still, youngest. He was like 27, 30 or anything. Yes, he was the youngest uh, world champion officially, but uh, it's a bit controversial because uh, the, wor the chess world was kind of split at the time, yeah? Or yeah. Yeah. And uh, since then, Sergei was. Any moves? Not yet. Sergei was dreaming okay. very big to become the very best, and uh, he, men he didn't even uh, shy from mentioning it uh, publicly. And uh, today, he's closer than he's, heaven he's ever been before. And uh, while I root for Carlsen, it, I can't help but uh, appreciating how well he plays. And uh, and feeling getting this feeling that Sergei deserves at least once to become world champion with all of his hard work and talent. Yeah. And did you see all? There were some interviews and some documentary that came out. And uh, yeah, apparently there was a documentary. Well, there's a documentary called Magnus and a documentary called Sergei, and I haven't seen either. 
Yeah. E takes d6 was played and c4 on the board. So, so far they are following that game. We can expect Sergei to play b3 with white. And uh, as far as uh, I remember in this documentary, uh, yes, something about Sergei's parents uh, mentioned how much they sacrificed uh everything in their power that just so that he can fight for uh, the world championship and improve his uh, career and uh yes and another interesting fact it's not so historical but it's just interesting that sergey is only 26 years old and uh, he is already married for the second time and i think he's had children this part I don't know, but uh, yeah. I'm not sure, but I might maybe. I remember. He's very well accomplished in more than one field. I remember when he married for the first time. He was like 18 and a half or something, or 19, and I was like, I read there was a chess-based article about him getting married, and uh, I thought to myself, such a talent, and he just uh, goes ahead and 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 rushes everything in life because I was thinking. There is a famous saying that when you bring a child to the world, you automatically lose 50 rating points. Yeah, and, uh, but it's not necessarily very accurate. Well, showing. and Giri. Oh yeah, oh, Giri already has a child. This oh. is crazy. Yeah. yeah, Giri is so <laughs> young. Giri is four Giri's, years. Giri's my, he's my age. No, he's one year, he's uh, one year older than you, I think. Yes, and uh, for those who don't know, Daniel is 22 years old, almost 21, 21 sorry, 21. Giri is 22. Uh, yeah. yeah, so he born on 95. Turned what? Turned 21. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just turned. Like two weeks ago? Yeah, two weeks ago. Yeah, I remembered. Chess juice. <laughs> You're also. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> well, there was an inside joke here that I hope some of you will get. And uh, yeah, uh, Sergey is 26 years old. You're born on 95, and you're you just turned yeah. 21. And Giri is a, born on 94, and he's about 22 years old, and he's already has a child. Wow, that's insane. So yeah, he's not just married; he has a child. Yeah, it's crazy. And now B3. Over the board. This is amazing. They are still repeating the moves from the Nakamura. Yeah, I, had briefly, I had briefly an idea in theater to play Queen takes D6, but it doesn't work. Uh, my idea was to play Bishop C7, but when has this move F4? Yeah. So. Uh, it's very I was unclear. calculating it, but, but it doesn't seem to work. I mean, so. Yeah, these positions, usually white is just fine because. Uh, all these moves are backed up by the computer, so there's no point to try and mate him. You just have to find strong moves. Exactly. Yeah, you have to accept that he's prepared and just... Yeah. Yeah, and he, he won't win. I don't think uh, Carlsen has any chances to win at this point. And uh, here's Carlsen's deviation, probably the novelty of the game. C takes B3 over the board. So, let okay, me... playing it, yeah. Let me quickly check. B3, so C3 is actually indeed a novelty. It has been checked 578 times in the past. So it's not such a new move for um, most of the people. And uh, now bishop takes b3, of course, on the board. Yeah, and, uh, queen and queen takes d6 uh, on the board. And this position was checked 681 times by different people who were using chess base at that moment probably more than than this uh -huh. amount but those who were connected to the internet and uh, turned on their live book while checking it uh, we have almost 700 of them now rook a6 seems like the the most popular choice of played. of move yeah. and it was played no uh, rook a6 played in the game. no 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 i, I thought i heard you say so in this position, white to move, uh, rook a6 uh, is the, the move that most people checked and it's very likely to be the best move. 
because I assume that people who checked, if all the people check the same movie, it's not because they all think alike, it's mainly because the computer pointed out that this is the move. So I assume Rook A6. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure Karyakin, yeah, I'm sure Karyakin is aware of Queen Takes D6, I'm positive. Yes, and now Rook A6 is our prediction. And uh, let's yeah. just follow up with the most popular moves according to the people who checked this uh, position. Queen D7, 64 times was visited. Then Rook G1, 50 times. Then G6, 22 times. And now Rook G4, and probably around here we can stop and say that the position is more or less equal. But from my experience with analysis, probably computer gave 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 and people stopped checking. Yeah. And just got tired of the position. <laughs> Carlson, Carlson probably analyzed like another 50 moves and too dry. Well, uh, I think he will just find some good moves. I don't think he remembers all of them by heart. But C takes B3 must be the improvement of the game. Otherwise, yeah, uh, so. yeah I, I can hardly imagine white being just better. But it's an interesting choice of opening because white has a weak king. Of course he's a pawn up, but uh, if he makes one in accuracy, he has some potential to be at least practically worse, even if the computer gives uh, quality, yeah? Yeah, maybe it's not... he won't get mated, of course. Rook, even rook g1 in this position looks reasonable. Yes. By the way, uh, for the viewers who don't know Daniel here, uh, is uh, one of the most promising talents in the United States of America. And I believe your rating is around 26.50 now, yeah? It's yeah, like 46. 26.46, very close to the top 100. And uh, yeah, for your age, it's not uh, too bad, yeah? You, uh, you still have some, some room for improvement, as uh, Sergei showed us. Yeah, I have, I have some juice in me. <laughs> some chess juice. Chess juice. For those who don't know, we have a Twitch channel called Chess Juice. And uh, Daniel is uh, one of the co-founders. And uh, yeah, so he, Thank you for the, uh, yeah, and uh, well, not only that you have you're in this spot in on the chess rating list, you also dare to study in one of the most uh, prestigious universities in the world. And uh, yeah, I would have to mention, as a chess juice member, I would have to say also one of the most expensive ones. Yeah, um, that's very true. Yeah, as far as I know, I mean, I haven't heard about uh, oh, yes. universities oh, yes. in Japan or in Norway, but probably this in the US uh, the prices just skyrocket compared to other countries. I think it, it, universities in Norway are free. That's oh, yeah, I, okay, I didn't know it. So, anyway, uh, combining both of these things and still having time for to stream with us is far from obvious. And every now and then you even find some time to play and stream uh, on the Twitch channel. So, yeah, yeah quite a busy man. Rook A6 on the board. I, I happen to witness also that you're kind of uh, gifted when it comes to the bullet territory, yeah? And, uh, yeah, unfortunately that is the case. <laughs> yes, and... Uh, even Daniel even streamed some times where he played himself um, when he played the bullet himself uh, on, on the chess juice account on leeches and actually probably s broke every record possible for this account. Yeah, I was on a roll, yeah. Yeah, almost crossing the 3000 mark. So, focusing back to the Still game, Still yeah, back to the game, uh, rook a6 has been played. And now Carlson is thinking we can expect Queen D7 to be played. No, I see something nice actually. Rook A8, which looks very cool. Sorry. If, uh, no, no, here. If after Rook A6, Rook A8, uh, I see a funny tactic. Bishop F7, seven. nice. Yeah, Queen B3. Yeah. <laughs> Carlson probably so won't. Otherwise, Carlson probably sees it, yeah, in, like, in his dreams, in like his deep subconscious. Yes. Probably he predicted that this tactic will happen, uh, like before the game even started. So that, yeah. That's how good he probably is in tactics. But before the game, he, he's like debriefed about all the tactics that yeah. occur. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> debriefed by himself. Obama, Obama, de Obama debriefs him about. 
Yes. <laughs> so we can expect the move queen d7, but uh, Carlson is thinking. And. Um, or he's well, pretending to think. Yes. And in this position, we have uh, nothing serious to say, just that uh, probably white has a threat. I don't know what it is, but uh, I think maybe d5 is an idea for white, I don't know. It's so difficult to play these positions without knowing them. Yeah. There's so many details that are crucial. Yeah, that's. But queen d7, queen d7 looks very logical. I mean, you are getting rid of the pin, maybe queen h3 is an idea. Mm -hmm. So let's have a look at the sample line. Uh, that, of course, queen d7 is a move we saw was analyzed, so we assume it's a computer move. Let's try a random uh, logical human move. Rook from f8. To one of the open files. Okay, how about rook f uh, c8 or d8? I don't know. Okay, let's just put it on c8 and and see what we can come up with. So, first things that comes to mind is f4. For me, at least, yeah, attacking the knight. Too, but, but I'm not, also for me, but I was not a big fan of just knight of six maybe. And what about knight takes f4? Ninety six. Yeah. Can I take though? Are you got another woods? Well, I can take with the pawn. Yeah. Oops. Uh, four. Ah, uh, queen f eight. Uh, actually, I didn't see any of it, but yeah, queen f eight. <laughs> By the way, if queen e six, what's the big problem? My my main idea was d five. And now rook g one. Ah, so. But I, I don't think you're out of the woods here. I mean, after Fe, Bishop F4, beginning, so wait, wait, uh, one moment, playing. one moment. Yeah, queen yeah. E6, D5, Queen D6, and Queen F6. Wow. Okay. So, um, but wait, but I don't have to play Bishop F4. I can play Rook B1. Yeah, this might be an issue, but uh, I'll try. To ask you one more question? No, but I can't. Uh, there is yeah, no. You can ask me, buddy. <laughs> yeah, in this position, there, there are not. There's nothing left to be asked. Uh, probably just <laughs> lost. So here, before, Queen F8. And my idea was to play Queen E4. So double attacking the rook and the pawn. Okay. Um, seems like I also don't have any square for the rook, so I have to go something. I mean, you have to play bishop c seven, but but still, I mean, I, then I take. I can torture you forever. Yeah, pawn up. You know, you don't even have to take like this. You can go queen e six, and then bishop e five probably. So, um, f4, you suggested knight f6. Yeah. Yeah, now something along the lines of rook g1. Okay, um, let's see what I can find. Yeah, honestly, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of white's position. I, it just looks nasty. I mean, white also has the Queen two d bishops in addition to a pawn up. Maybe Queen d7. So what do you want? Queen b7. So, yeah. so I'll go queen f3. Yeah, and I, I was just gonna take on d4. I'm not sure if you have anything. Um, oh, the bishop is hanging. Hmm. Let's try something out. Bishop a4. Uh, queen d8 seems like the move. Yeah, it looks forced. Now, if I go rook d1, it's 
looks kind of uh, dangerous for black. Maybe, maybe that is kind of dangerous. Yeah, but rook b4. I mean, it's not so easy to, to exploit the pin. <laughs> queen b7, sacrificing the queen in order to win the bishop. Hmm. Yeah. One of the many ideas. Uh, <laughs> and are not available to win this position. Queen somewhere. Well, I don't see anything too direct, but... Um, Instead of queen f3, maybe instead of queen f3 here, what if I just go mm, d5? Okay, um, let's say I take and play rook c3. And rook c6, rook b3 is my idea. Mm hmm. Well, what if I give queen d4? Check. Queen f6. Oh, this is check. I got made it. Yeah. Wow. For those who didn't follow, this is mate. Um, I mean, I can also take on g2. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, instead... Mm, this is the position on the board. Yeah, rook MD it might be, an, uh, or rook MC8 might be an interesting way to go. Semi way to go. Yeah. Also, D8 is an is an interesting square. Yeah, also deserves attention. Yeah. And E8, like. Yeah, it's not. It's it's easy to take for granted that white has some pressure, but it's not easy to actually create threats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, analyzing this position without knowing it feels like a, a really big challenge. I mean, I wouldn't yeah, dare to do it for one minute. What? Yeah, but um, what for I mean... some reason I have to share something. Sure. I'm seeing, calculating this line. I'm at six queen f five. Okay, probably this is all wrong. But g six, um, queen e five takes takes bishop e three, and now if f e then rook b three. But white has bishop f seven, uh, intermediate rook, and rook f six. <laughs> nice. So yeah. That's probably so gonna. Very likely that it will be in the game. Yeah, totally obviously. It'll obviously be in the game. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm being sarcastic again. Well, it kind of ruins the point if you're telling uh, when you are and when you're not sarcastic. <laughs> Might as well not be. I mean, I'm all up for it, but uh, let the viewers guess. We, we are in, all in for confusing them. And... Um, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. People keep asking about the points, so it's four and a half, three and a half in favor of Sergey Karyakin. Yes. One game eight. I think they just want to force us to to say it again and again, <laughs> to 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 make make ourselves hear the sound of our own voice admitting it. Four and a half, three and a half, four and a half, three and a half. <laughs> yeah, and then just feel annoyed because uh, we, I mean, at least I root for Kalsen. Actually about you, I'm not sure because you speak Russian. So among your many qualities, you also know three languages, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Not counting chess. Uh, not counting chess. Well, I don't really know chess anyway. <laughs> so... Um. I like Ryakin, I think he's 
an interesting person, an interesting player. I'm not a huge fan of his political um, statements, but you know that has nothing to do with the chess part. So I, okay, here's what I'll say. I, I'm rooting for Carlson, but I wouldn't mind uh, seeing an upset and kind of a sensation. Mm. So I guess I'm like you. I and see. It's true, Karyakin has. Whether you're a fan of him or not, he has works extremely hard. Yes. Uh, he's. I've also played basketball with him, so I think I have this personal connection. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, one day I'll play football with Carlson, and I can say I'll say the same. Uh, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't have the chance just yet. Uh, also, yeah. something that comes to mind is that uh, something that Emil Sutovsky the president of the ACP and one of Israel's best GMs uh, in history uh, uh, said on Facebook uh, something along these lines and uh, it's translation from Russian so maybe Google Translate uh, changed it a bit but uh, whether or not you you l I mean Sergei's play is difficult to love but impossible not to respect yeah. and many fans Chess fans who are watching this uh, ma match between uh, Carlsen and Karyakin are uh, uh, criticizing Sergei for how he plays and for his strategy for the match of making draws with White and, and waiting for Carlsen to, to show his moves and uh, take risks. But um, it's impossible not to respect anyone who plays better chess than Magnus Carlsen in a World Championship match against him. And, uh, well... I agree, and uh, I also like his attitude, where he's uh, not boasting about it. Uh, and uh, for example, in the yeah, press, yes, exactly. In the press conference, someone asked him about money. He said that his job is to play chess, and this is something the organizers should talk about. Someone else asked him uh, about his chances in the match, and he says, "My job is to play chess. I'm going to just come and play chess." And uh, we can talk about it after yeah, the last I round. Like the moment it, yeah, exactly. I like that moment in the press conference. There was this fan who asked him, uh, uh, a reporter, like, you answered this question before, but you never say how it feels. Like, you're winning, you're beating Magnus Carlsen at four games away. Oh, yeah, I remember. He said, yeah. he said, how many times do I have to say it? We'll talk about it after the match. Yeah. No, but when they asked, someone else again asked him, how do you feel? And then he said... I'm very happy. What else is left to say? Yeah, what else can I say? Yeah, exactly. As if for a chess player, there are two possible feelings. Happy and defending. <laughs> yeah, that's sad. <laughs> so no moves played. Uh, remind me, actually. Where are we in the game? Uh, okay, same, played and here, same position, here, I believe. Here, here is. <laughs> yes, Perhaps. after rook a6. And it, it's funny, like... Uh, let, let's just uh, like th there is something a little bit less emotional about this uh, top professional chess players and I, I want to, to see how you would respond let's let's play uh, a game you can pretend that you just beat Magnus Carlsen and you're in the press conference and you just won imagine how you feel you're leading the championship four rounds to go and I'm asking you Daniel how do you feel about beating the world champion like with all the cameras on you, what what would you say in English? Uh, I, no, no, no Russian accent, right? I should. No, I just uh, use your Russian own. Accent. Pretend that you are you, and you just okay. beat Carlson. How do you describe I, your emotions? It, of course, it feels great to be the greatest player in the world, and I'm ecstatic at winning the game. But uh, there's four games left, and everything could change. So. Um, I'm going to enjoy the rest day and maybe I'm going to climb up the Empire State Building and scream in ecstasy. <laughs> but as, as soon as the next game starts, uh, it's as if we are at game one again. So wow. I will enjoy myself while I can, but and then you hit a reset button as soon as the next game starts. Yeah. I, it feels like... Uh... You combined like uh, three different uh, answers that I heard, like by Sergei Karyakin, by Fabiano Caruana in the Sinkfield Cup, and probably by uh, I I don't have a good example, but I'll just say any 
random uh, reality show winner who, who would go to the Empire State and just start screaming. Maybe, or maybe certain president, president elects. Yeah, I feel like if, if someone would ask me this in this moment, I'll be like, I'll, 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 I'll start dancing on the floor and, 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 and singing as a response. Yeah, just, obviously, well, but, but I can't imagine it. It's too unfathomable. I will not be Magnus Carlsen. No, if come I on. Carlson, come on. I will, my life will be over as I know it. I mean, I will be too... The amount of happiness I'll be experiencing is beyond anything I've ever experienced before. I, I'm thinking about po- poetic ways to describe it. Like... Uh, but uh, l- l- let's come up with an interesting way to, to, to express happiness in a poetic uh, form. So, uh, what interesting metaphor could it be? Um, beating Magnus Carlsen? Yes, in the World Championship in round 8. Like someone I, asking I me how good do you feel? I'll probably respond something like, do you know this feeling that you haven't eaten for a week and you think you're gonna die and uh, your like your parents were taken away from you and you haven't seen anyone and then suddenly someone comes to you and, and gives you like some millionaire, some random millionaire donates a, a million dollar to you personally and uh, you get adopted by Brangelina and uh, well, you and your parents join you in the same way well, it's much better than this. Something like this. Or maybe... You know, while yeah, while dancing and singing the, the entire thing, yeah? <laughs> well, <laughs> you, you know the feeling after you climb Mount Everest? Um, and you're standing at the top and planting your flag? Well, maybe that's kind of like... <laughs> no, you know what would be really nice? Like, I... This can actually make chess popular. I wish I had more room for uh, maneuvering here in the room. It's a very small room, but basically, you know, like when a, when a football player, uh, soccer for the Americans, yeah, is uh, scoring a goal, many of them is like running and takes off his shirt. So imagine like Karyakin, instead of walking seriously to the press conference, just running happily and <laughs> taking off his shirt and going like, woo! And then like... He shake, uh, Carlson shakes his hand. Yes. Carlson Yes. And then you know how soccer players, they, they go on their knees after they, they like slide onto their knees? Yes. <laughs> exactly. And then he slides on his knees with his hands raised and car comes and runs over to him. And he punches him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, did you see Carlson's reaction? Not to open this can of worms again, but did you, what do you think of Carlson's reaction? Well, I think the rea- the re- video of the reaction was out of context. He, he wasn't that dramatic. He was just uh, signaling for his manager to leave. And by the way, I heard some rumors. I'm not sure if it's true, but I heard that in the contract, uh, he's, he was like ob- obligated to, to uh, join ev- every single press conference. Yeah. Regardless of the result. And that by leaving this press conference, he will be fined by sixty thousand dollars. I'm sure it's the, I'm sure it's the truth because even in, when I played in the U.S. Championship, which is not even comparable, we had to attend every press conference regardless of how we were playing. Period. Mm-hmm. Um, and but, this is the World Championship. So. Yeah, but like you didn't attend all of them. Just when you're asked, yeah. No, no, I did. You have to go downstairs and then say, "Do you need me?" Or you could say, hey, um, "Like, do you do you want to talk to me?" And they sometimes would say, "No, it's fine." Uh, but you had to go downstairs if you didn't actually announce. Oh right, person, yeah, because them. different players finished on different times, so they almost talked to yeah. to almost all the the strong players who finished. Yeah, so it was very tough. You know, when you it's so tough to go to the press conference when you lose. So I am very sympathetic to Magnus and people who are criticizing him. I, I don't. I'm not condoning his behavior. I think he should have gone to the press conference, and he, he is the role model. And there's no excuse. But still, it's so hard to live those few moments after you lose, especially with with White. Yeah, and uh, well, I I think 
what I heard at least was that he will pay sixty thousand dollars if I mean out of the prize that he receives if he wins the match and if he loses the match he will pay forty thousand dollars something like this so it's not very good alternatives it's like sacrificing a queen or sacrificing a rook yeah but still it's uh like so much I mean if he only knew if he only remembered it during the but I I will I personally think they should uh, they should uh, like uh, cut him some slack, yeah. Especially if he loses yeah, the maybe championship. Maybe they will. Maybe they will. Yeah. Yes. It's it's gonna be very funny. So how long is that? Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, I wanted to say that it will be very funny if uh, like they decide to actually uh, give him the forty thousand dollars. But they, for one reason or another, they don't have the budget, so they sue me, and then I end up paying this money to to Carlson personally, just because I'm streaming the World Championship. But I'm, of course, not doing it in an illegal form. I'm just inputting the moves uh, manually. Yeah. So. They could be any moves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I trust most uh, sources that uh, say random moves. Sometimes uh, it backfires, you know. It's not the actual game, it's just yeah. hacker. By the way, it looks a little bit darker than before. So... On my side, yeah? Yeah. Okay, I'll open the shutters a little. How's this? I think better. Uh, I'm not sure. But... Uh, the important part is that Carlsen is thinking and uh, probably doesn't know the position so whether or not he'll play the best move it doesn't matter as long as uh, it will make sense I don't think Sergei can can match the computer from here until the end of the of the game it's just a matter of uh, let's call it uh, practical chances yeah? yeah so from this particular position would you suggest that, uh, let's say, two humans who are unprepared and 2700 plus level play against each other? How likely it is that Black will win? I'm not talking about Karyakin and Carlsen, just... Likely. What? Yeah, I don't think Black has too many chances here, honestly, in a human game. Wow. Even if he loses the d4 pawn, he can hold it. <laughs> well, in most cases, that's an interesting statement. I was hoping he'll say something else because uh, I don't know myself, and I'm kind of wishing that uh, Black will have uh, in decent winning chances. No, By the no, way, of course, it, anything can change. I just think. By the way, do you have a guess how many how many viewers are watching us as we speak? My guess would be about 200. How many? 480. Wow, that's really nice. Yeah, that's not so bad. Not so bad. Do you know what was the pick in yeah. the entire in the entire streams so far? Uh, I think it was something like uh, 1,040 at the same time. Yes. In this stream? Yes. And, uh, uh -huh. So let's see. And, uh, well, I'm excited every time I see more than one person watching. <laughs> and it's quite a lot. Uh, so I feel obligated to, to show some decent variations, but I'm, I can't look at the computer, so I'm, I don't know how to do it. Just, let's just... Uh, yeah, how did they do it for so many years, I mean... Yeah. And people survived without the computer, hmm. somehow. Yeah. I wonder how people survived before the cellular phones. How how did people meet when they had no cellular phones? Yeah, how 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 did people meet like in the nineteen sixties? Like you want to meet your friend for coffee. Yeah. Um, and you you are your friend is in the area and you want to meet him for coffee. How do you coordinate a meeting? 
Maybe he sends you. Maybe he sends you a letter, like a month in advance that arrives after a week. On November twenty uh, fifth, I'll be in your area spontaneously. Uh, so I'll, I'll knock on your door. Please let me know if uh, you might be up for a spontaneous one, only one month in advance meeting. I mean, people, you know, with cell phones, people have gotten a lot more twitchy about people's other people's locations, and you know, people live for hundreds of years without worrying about. Uh, Texting or, or, or replying immediately to everything. Yeah. Um, and somehow, you know, civilization thrived. So you know, now we 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 send someone a text, and if they don't reply in like five seconds. Yeah, and also like there is this thing on WhatsApp where you can see that they see the message, and then if they yeah, see it, it you see that they see it, but they don't it respond. Wow, especially especially in cases where like. Uh, one person uh, thinks that the other one should be there for him and then like they they know he saw it and yeah it, it can it can create like serious conflicts between people yeah 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 i mean it's amazing and you know you you know somebody's seen it or you can also there's an email tracker you can send an email by and track it and see when somebody opens it, it it's such a paradox <laughs> that, that the easiest it is to communicate the more difficult it becomes to, to do it in a healthy way. Expectations, expectations are raised. Yes. Whatever expectations are raised about anything, you have a problem. Yes, there's one interesting concept that uh, is uh, like that even if one day someone will discover that electricity is completely bad for us and with I mean, if we continue to use electricity, we will be vanished in 10 years. You can't really uninvent electricity, yeah, or any other technological improvement. Yeah. So, I yeah. think this is part of the nature of the human race, just to come up with new things all the time. And uh, even if it's not good for us, there is no way to reverse the invention after we come up with something. And, uh, well... This is kind of like Karyakin's games. We need, we must have hope that the position is defendable, yeah? Karyakin symbolizes yeah. the hope of the human race. <laughs> Carlson has been thinking for a long time here. Yes. I think he played, actually. Rook FD8. He played Rook FD8? Yes. So we, 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 we were considering, actually, his move. We actually wrote it down, yeah. But uh, Rook yeah, FC8. Congratulations, our stream is over. We predicted one move. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't uh, theoretical. Actually, let's check if anyone checked it before. Uh, Rook A6. The move Rook FD8 has been checked. Probably. What if Bishop takes F7 here? Oh, but now it's no, ruined. It I can't see how many times it was checked because too many people looked at it already. Probably around 40 times before uh, before uh, so 800 still, people. It's, it's a move, yeah, it exists. Yeah. So, let me see. Um, what, is, what can we offer here for white? Yeah, it's not easy to, to come up with something. Yeah, it's like we're actually they in there. Yeah. So, Rook FD8. How about D5? What if D5? Yeah, my computer is a little okay. bit stuck, but it's fine, I hope. I hope it's still working. D5. Hmm. By the way, on the same topic of, of uninventing things, before the phones, I mean, the phones probably existed, but when I was like six years old or eight years old, I didn't have my own phone. And I remember like after school in my own neighborhood, I wanted to, to meet someone. So I just came to their apartment like three minutes by foot and I knocked on their door. And then usually their parents will pick up and then I'll say hello. 
is uh, Daniel here? And they'll say yes. And then I'll say, uh, and then, then probably they will call him, just scream, Daniel! And then he will come. And then I'm like, you want to play football? Yes, cool. And I will probably have the, the, foot, the, the soccer ball with me. And uh, we'll just go somewhere and, and start playing football. And then I'll meet a bunch of other kids in the, in the court and ask them if they want to be my friends. And they'll usually say yes. Yeah, everyone were my friends yeah, back at the time. How we, we need to schedule, we need to schedule everything and we're so afraid to just knock on people's doors, you know. And there's a, this need to... Wow, the last time I knocked on someone's door without, uh, without letting them know, that was like probably with, with this... <laughs> in the story that I just mentioned. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, D5 looks interesting. I don't see what black can do. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Oh. It's, it's like a crack. My crutch has been taken taken away without the edge. <laughs> yeah, crazy. yeah. Exactly. So... Maybe so... Well, someone, someone was asking in the chat, why are we talking about cell phones and not looking at the game? Well, probably because it's very difficult to analyze such a position, but uh, let's try it actually. Yeah, but I also think chess discussions can lead to other places and it's not necessarily that bad if we, you know, share some thoughts on other topics as well, because it's a long game and, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's part of the process. Yeah. So we, we're going to have enough time to look at chess variations. So please forgive us if we say some interesting things in every now and then. So uh, interesting things off topic. Of course, chess is interesting for both of us. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. So uh, d5 is a move trying to exploit the pin along the sixth yeah. rank. And now what do you think? Knight f4 is a move you suggested? Well, my candidate moves are 9-4 and queen b4. It's so hard uh, to understand what's I going on. Sure I, I really can't uh, even uh, process what, what, I, what I see in front of me. Rook g1. Do you Rook want g1. Um, if I move to g3, you want bishop takes e3? Yeah. Take this two. Maybe rook g2. Yeah, rook g2. And maybe now I can just go back. But then rook g4 is yeah, going the wrong way. Maybe now queen b4 is incredibly complicated position. Hmm. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it's very funny. Actually, there is there is a line that I was considering, but it's very it's it's as stupid as a line can get. It's it's not working, but I just wait, want. Wait, wait, wait. Let me guess. No, no, no. Rook g7, rook g7, queen d4. Yeah. <laughs> queen. Unfortunately, there is a rook. Ah, uh, taken rook f6 in that position, but uh, you, okay. So many but different refutations. I was also considering queen d4 here, which is even more stupid. Uh, this is probably the... takes on d4 and rook Takes and rook d5 probably even, no, but this this one, rook b3 is just winning for black. Queen e1 mate. Okay, so... Queen e1 mate. <laughs> so, instead, probably here, white should play more tactically. Um, what can I say? Rook a4 maybe. Rook a4 maybe, sorry. Yeah. Rook a4. So now the queen moves. Uh, yeah. I have something 
something even stupider than your stupid idea. Yes, please. Share. Wow. <laughs> Rook G7. Yeah, even this. Yeah, Rook B4, yeah. Yeah, Rook B4 is simple. Yeah, so this is more. So I have to go, I think, uh, uh, I have to go Rook A4, Queen, somewhere, Queen D6, I guess. <laughs> 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 uh, typical. <laughs> Typical wait for the game to to end. That's exactly how the game will end. Yeah. So in this position, so if if instead of oh oh my god, <laughs> I wanted to suggest bishop takes f7 check and queen b3 check. Yeah. So Rook G1, Knight H3. Hey, this is actually kind of interesting. So D5 looks like one my of. Prediction, my prediction is D5 will be played. Why not Rook G1 straight away? It's uh, actually even more logical. Yeah, but putting the rook on the open file, I mean, I'm a very big uh, aficionado of developing the pieces, and the rook is the only piece that doesn't work right now on f1, so putting it on the open file shouldn't harm. Yes. Yeah. I'm a big fan of developing the pieces and the basics. Okay, so... Okay, rook g5 maybe? I don't know, just yeah. putting the rook somewhere. Yeah, rook g5 is interesting. Yeah, wh wh why is almost that? Maybe queen f6. Uh, do do you see rook g5? Nothing, basically. Hmm. Yeah, I do. Because for a moment it was uh, the rook moved back. Hmm. Let me ask you just a quick question. Yeah, I'm do you see the arrow that I'm making? I, I do, I do. Okay. So, just wanted to make sure. Rook G1 was played, they um, say. So... Rook G1, congratulations. Oh, yeah. yeah, baby. We are on fire. Nice. The Rook. Yeah, we predicted. Look at my Rook, okay, my Rook is amazing. Is it's on fire. I think... Yeah, honestly, I, what do you think of the position? I, I think black is already slightly worse. Mm-hmm. Yes. Hmm, rook g1. The rook. The rook. The rook is on fire. I'm not sure what black is gonna play, but your move g6 seems logical to me. Maybe also queen c6. I have a stupid suggestion, as usual, uh, yeah. but it, I'm sure it doesn't work, so I'll suggest it anyway. Let me see. What is the suggestion? No, nah, just go d5. Queen b5, yeah, I was thinking about it. Now I take. Take. Here. Somewhere. Bish and some things are hanging, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I shouldn't have a problem defending anything. Queen of six. Yes, maybe I should.
So you want some background stuff, but I've got G6. Yeah, and the game goes on. Yeah, it's very difficult to evaluate all these positions, yeah? Yeah, I mean, this looks drawish to me. Mm, maybe. So, so the position in the game is this one, yeah? Carson is thinking. So, uh, what other suggestion do you have for white after g6? I'll bring an apple while you think. Yeah, I'll have to use the bathroom in a second, but I'll let you bring your apple. By the way, I forgot. To, I want to mention it at least once in each stream, so nobody will say later that he didn't know that on round eleven we'll have Boris Gelfand with us, none other than uh, my own personal chess hero, and uh, yeah, one of the most impressive personalities in the chess world. Who, by the way, wrote the following book which I highly recommend as you can see among many other move, uh, moves books yeah, he's written two yeah but the first one won the book of the year award and we'll see about this one the year hasn't finished yet so round 11 on Saturday assuming that uh, Karyakin will survive that match <laughs> Actually, even if he loses the next two games, uh, round 11 will be played. Wait a minute, wait a minute, does the, does the game, is the match continue if, if, uh, if it's decided? Of course, uh, no it doesn't. It does not, yeah, that's what I thought. No, but I'm saying that Karyakin, even if he loses two games in a row, he will make it to game number 11. But the question, but the question is what if Carlson loses and then draws? <laughs> no, but... If, even if he's on minus two, game number 11 will be played. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. I remember... What if Carlsen loses this one and the next one? Then the match is over. Just like uh, Carlsen versus Anand. After game nine where he won with black, he drew on game 10 with white. Yeah. And then the match was over because it was plus three for Carlsen. The good yeah. old days. I feel like every now and then when they start delving into yeah, came up with d5 came up with d5 for white okay that's good queen b4 
Do you know how to play chess or is just wanna take my queen? <laughs> And this is how the My game will end. Rook a2, queen c3, rook c2. Okay, we have a move. Saved by the bell. Rook g4. What is the move? What? Ah, sorry, sorry. Wait, wait, sorry. Queen d7, rook g4. On the board. Yeah. But now maybe Karyakin is, is back to his preparation because Queen D7 was the main move, if you remember. After which Rook G1 was, was the right idea. And now as I told you earlier, G6 Rook G4 is the computer line, I assume. I didn't see myself, but judging by the fact that everyone checked it, this must be the computer line. So Rook FD8, Rook G4, G6 must somehow transpose to Karyakin's preparation. And, um, yeah. And now in this position on chess base, people in the live book checked knight f6, rook h4, and then queen b5. Let's show the viewers. Rook g4. So here. Position from the game. Knight f6, rook h4. Now. Queen b5 and rook a1. This is the most checked, visited position here. Now bishop c7, rook b1, and I assume that uh, it's more or less equal, yeah? Maybe yeah, looks about equal. slightly more convenient for white. Bishop c2, rook takes b1, bishop takes b1. Well, it's very unlikely that white will lose it. The rook on h4 is cool, yeah? Yeah. Back to the game, rook on g4. Let, let's show the viewers position we have in the game in our old-fashioned board. Yeah, rook g4 as you can see. So, back to our beautiful board on leeches. So, rook g4. Maybe queen b5 immediately. But I guess rook a1 doesn't improve. Well, my idea was... No, it's not. Maybe for black. Yeah, I think bishop f7 maybe. There's a line here. Um... <coughs> wait, 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 wait. Maybe I can start with bishop f6. But why? Rook d7 is just winning. Oh. Ah! Rook G7. Of course. Yeah, exactly. But I can play Rook B7. I mean, it's not yeah. forced. Mm hmm. So here, Rook B7. That's nice. Well, probably close to winning. Yeah. <laughs> All of white's pieces are protected. Mm-hmm. Looks good. 
Yes, by the way, we said a bunch of facts about Karyakin. Maybe we should mention something about Carlsen as well. He's the second youngest GM in history. <laughs> Are you sure? I think so. So, as I mentioned, this is the position on the board. And while I'm checking, you can think of Black's move or White's move after Queen b5. While I'm checking who is the youngest. So, the youngest one <laughs> It's funny, in the 1950s the youngest one was David Bronstein who achieved it at 26 years old yeah. In the 1952 Tigran Petrosian was the youngest on 23 years old Then Boris Pasky at 18 1955 and since that day it only became more and more ridiculous so Karyakin as we mentioned 12 years and 7 months at 2002 and actually 3 years before Karyakin achieved it there is another person who achieved it earlier uh, like for 3 years Bukshi and Zhi yeah, 13 years and 10 months but why don't I see Carlsen on this list? Yeah. Maybe it's not the updated one? Ah, okay, now I see the updated version. Okay. So Sergei Karyakin is the youngest. The second one is Negi Parimaryan, who surpassed Carlsen by five days. Thir 13 years, 4 months, and 22 days. And Carlsen did it at 13 years, 4 months, and 27 days. Wow, but Negi since then is also studying in Stanford, right? Yeah, I see him often. And wrote an excellent series about openings uh, 1e4 for white uh, for quality chess. This was one of the best opening books I've ever seen. I mean, each one of them separately is one of the best. And, uh, Absolutely, yeah. Yes, and uh, the third one is Magnus Carlsen. So Magnus Carlsen is only the third, but since he was 19 years old, which is around seven years ago, he was the top seed in the chess world, the highest rated chess player in the world and even in history. Gary Kasparov's uh, uh, record of 2851 or two, what, what was it? One, one. 2851 was Kasparov's record for many years, uh, maybe something around nine to be exact. And uh, then Carlsen uh, surpassed him and even made uh, climbed all the way up to 2882 or something, yeah? Yeah, but now he's back down, obviously. Yeah, he's, but I, I have a feeling he'll go back up. I really wish, no matter what happens in this match, that Carlsen will not be discouraged, that he will continue to, he will use this as motivation to work harder rather than to, to be yeah. annoyed. Okay, so we have a move, knight f6, and Carlsen okay, immediately responds, instead of queen b5, Kassin, uh, Karyakin immediately responded with rook h4 Which is what I mentioned to you earlier, remember this position has been checked quite a few times before And yeah, now... so Karyakin is still in his prep? Maybe in some form of preparation, yeah And Carlson's on his own, how much time do they have? How much time do they have? So, as far as I can see no, I don't see the time. I can't have the clocks. Uh, usually I ask the viewers to share the time on the clock and they tell us and we take their word for it. Would be great, yeah. It's so Curious. tempting for many of the viewers, by the way, to say, to give away wrong information to confuse us, but we will know, I will pick the names that I recognize. Okay, so we have 1 hour and 14 minutes versus 55 minutes. For Magnus. Yes, for Magnus. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a lot. 
Yeah, we have a lot of time ahead and you have a lot of homework to catch up, yeah? Yeah, well, always the case. Aren't you on vacation? I am, but I still have even more homework than had I not been on vacation. Mm -hmm. It's funny that it is. Ha half of the people who are streaming with me have to go away in the middle of the stream because they wake up early in the morning for the Israeli army and you are going to university and you're in vacation and during your vacation in, from university you are much busier than these guys who go to the army That's true. you have so much homework more than you can bear and uh, uh, I would say more than I can bear but the almost more than I can bear yes more than a bear can solve and uh, yeah probably more than I would be able to bear and uh, yeah and uh, you, st you stick with me to the end with us with all 676 of us wow okay that's nice so rook h4 on the board and uh, let's try to guess a move for black so bishop takes d4 is logical <clears throat> why, why not Exactly. I was testing both of our concentration. <laughs> okay, what's concentration? I'll I test you more in the future. Five. What? Queen b5. I think queen b5 is the most logical. <laughs> By far. <laughs> Probably queen, because it's the engine move. Yeah. Queen b5. Rook a1. Okay, we mentioned this line. Bishop c7. Now, uh, rook b1. Queen f5, bishop c2, bishop, rook b1, bishop b1, and I assume the valuation will be something around 0 0.1 for white, but yeah. It, it's, it's definitely not better for black, that's for sure. It looks like, it looks like a draw, yeah. Yeah, and where white will be from the, the stronger side of the draw. Yeah. So, other than queen b5, let's try to guess some human move. Mm -hmm. Wow, we have so many grandmasters below 15 years, more than like 30 of them. Yeah. Wow. Some of them I, I, I didn't even know. Like they, I don't even consider them strong players nowadays and, and, uh, and they are like grandmasters at 14. Wow, that's insane. Well, of course, not to dismiss uh, their achievement. I'm just saying that their rating, oh, say, yeah. their, their rating right now is not as high as the, the bunch of the other GMs at 14. So we have uh, a player named Aryan Chopra from India. I guess he is, he is still very young, yeah? Yeah, I played him. Yeah, I played him last year. He's very strong. And what's his rating? He's like 2,500. Yes. So we have... Uh, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce it from Romania. Uh, Daniel D H. Oh, Daniel Kotan D H. Yeah, he just became a GM. Yes. And um, well, a bunch of other names that are well. You see, mo almost everyone are above 2,700 uh, amongst them. And uh, yeah. These two are uh, the main differences, as far as I can see. I mean, the, the, probably they are the two fresh ones, because I saw the list in the past. And... Uh, yeah. <laughs> youngest women who achieved Grandmasters. For men. We have a move. Is that a question? Queen b5 on the board. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I didn't I didn't phrase it as a question, but I don't want you to guess the names, uh, but maybe try to guess their their uh, age when they I mean, let's say in the nine the first woman who became a grandmaster was in 1978. How old was she? Once again, uh, I, I mean, speak about grandmaster for men. Uh, I think it was Caprita Shvili, so she, she was to be. In 
32, I think. She was 37. In 1978. Okay, so yes. Then the second youngest, according to what I see here, is Maya Chibordanidze, 23 years old, and then of course it it becomes younger and younger. But yeah. uh, well, I see Susan Polgar at 21 years, at 91, and not so long after Judith Polgar at 15 years. Was she, was Judith the youngest in history back when she made it? I think she. I think, so, yeah. I think she was. Yeah. Well, she doesn't need this particular title to impress anyone. Yeah. She needs no introduction. Judith Polgar is another chess personality that uh, I think everyone should uh, admire. And uh, if they don't, then uh, I would love to hear the reason. They're probably have, gonna have some bad reasoning for it, yeah? And, uh, yeah. and the, two, the only two who, who surpassed this record is, of course, Hui Fan, the current world champion. and. Uh, uh, world number one for women and another one that I, I didn't I wasn't aware of Conor Ruhampi achieved it at 15 years and one month oh I didn't know that I'm sure I, it's grandmaster for men wow I know I know who she is of course she's, she's like 2600 but yeah I'm guessing uh, yeah she has uh, other uh, topics uh, of interest if since achieving it at 15 uh, she I mean I, I don't know her personally of course but uh, well I assume that uh, she she conquered some other topics other than uh, the chess arena yeah. and even if not being 2600 is incredibly impressive so let's see hmm Queen b5 on the board, we can expect rook a1, as we saw that's the most visited uh, move in this position. Yeah, it looks to be the only move. Yes. Wow, but I wouldn't have guessed before today that Conor Ruhampi broke Judith Polgar's record. I mean, she was the record holder for like 7 years or, or something before Hoi Fan broke it. Yeah, I didn't know that either. For six or seven years, yeah. Hmm. So, other than Rook A1, are there any other candidates for white? I mean, I considered Rook A3, but there's Bishop C5 and Rook A2 that <laughs> just takes D4. Rook A3, Bishop C5, that's hilarious. But if now Rook A1? <laughs> so you're claiming an edge. Yes, exactly. No, I think I can... <laughs> no, but Bishop C5 is hilarious. Maybe just something else. Yeah, I mean, Queen B4, but it's not. I mean, Rook A3 doesn't achieve anything. I have a funny, a funny idea. Not in this particular position, but just in general. This move G5. Of course. Yeah, I had it as well. I considered it, but I thought maybe Queen G1. No, no. Of course, it doesn't work, but just. As, as an idea that he takes almost all the all the squares away from the rook and yeah and if, if rook h6 there might be an idea like this yeah where rook h6 yeah, you can take you can take and queen f1 mate this was the point yeah exactly this is quite funny but queen g1 yeah it's cool it's cool yeah. exactly and uh <laughs> so Rook a3 doesn't make any sense, even if even if black passes the move. This rook is so ridiculous. So I would yeah, I would one. guess for rook a1 to be played regardless of how much time he thinks, and it has been played. Nice, good guess, and good timing nice. for the guess. I probably said it after it was played. <laughs> Guessing the move after it's played is a bit suspicious. <laughs> oh no, I thought you were checking my concentration, but it's actually good. <laughs> it's actually an interesting move. Bishop a4, bishop a1, bishop a2, 
Yeah, so bishop f7, king, rook, queen. Probably okay, but uh, white is safe. Yeah, white is pushing, but I don't. I doubt that white has serious movement against this. Yes, it's gonna be funny if he just wants to secure the draw and gets mated. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's my prediction. So. I think this might happen. <laughs> I I seriously thought you were testing my concentration for a moment. Yeah, I actually <laughs> was here. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's actually a, a move, a valid move in the position. And um, yeah, so what can I say? I need, to, I need to use the restroom, so I'll be sure. Back sure. In, in so once. this is the position on the board. Even yes, and uh, here, uh, rook a1 was played, and we are checking bishop takes d4, but I highly doubt Carlsen will play it because. It feels, even if it's the best move, it feels like uh, it uh, simplifies the position a little bit and uh, gives white uh, less chances to go wrong. But, uh, I mean, with this rook on h4, it might be logical to just try some, some waiting move, but I can't come up with anything too serious at the moment. So, I'm hoping for something like, well... So I'm waiting move with the rook, but it's really difficult. Rook d7, there's bishop a4. Rook d6, there's bishop f4. Sometimes. Maybe not exactly in this position, actually, because of this. But, yeah. Just so many different forks and ideas in the air with the two bishops in an open position. So rook d6 is a possibility, but I wouldn't be too fond of it with, white, with black. Um, so... What else? What else can uh, can black play? It's really hard to to say. Hmm. So I I have absolutely no no clue. But I'm here to work out my brain. That was my initial idea when uh, actually signing up for this advantage advent <laughs> adventure advantage is what. I'll achieve against my opponents after continuing with this path. So, yeah. So what can I say? I'm trying to see if there's anything interesting on the chat, but maybe I should just focus on guessing a move. Okay. Hmm. Well, people in the chat are still talking about the regular things. And uh, I'll actually wait for Daniel before continuing with the, the variations. So, let's see. So as I mentioned, Carlsen is the third youngest GM in history. At 19 years old, uh, he became the top seed in the world. And actually at that time, I remember that uh, there was a news, news flash like all over the world about Carlsen becoming uh, the top seed in the... Uh, in the chess world and the youngest to achieve it at 19 and uh, I remember seeing it from Israel and then I, I went to another country uh, in some tournament or something and then I saw it from there also in the news so all over the, the world in the regular news you could see uh, one article about uh, about one report about Carlsen uh, becoming the youngest uh, top seed in chess in history and um, I'll also mention that he has an interesting documentary about him nowadays and uh, yeah. maybe Daniel before we guess the moves well, maybe we can discuss a little bit uh, the previous tournaments in this year that Karyakin had so how did he reach the the world championship today the candidates was quite uh, uh, a dramatic event, yeah? Yeah, and so was the, the World Cup. <laughs> exactly, that's Same what player. I meant. Exactly. The World Cup is when it all started, so I think there may be some justice if he wins this because he won, he pulled it off, he pulled off a miracle in the World Cup. And in the candidates, uh, actually. He, yeah, I mean, he, but especially in the World Cup, I mean, he was, he, 
he he uh, I, he was down like three one against Vidal and he was losing the the last game. But do you realize that he would qualify even without winning against Vidler? Really? Yeah, the, it was the finals and the top two uh, qualified for the candidates. Or... Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. I thought only the top finish. Top finish, for sure. Well, Zwidler was in the candidates, so... I see. But I'm... And they granted the, the wild card to Aronian, right? Okay, G6 on the board. G6 yeah. on the board, yeah. Rook A1, G6, okay. There are so many promising talents in the candidates tournament. So G6 on the board. And um, well, well, more on this topic later. So let's try to understand the yeah. idea. So G6 is probably just stabilizing the position. Uh, maybe you want... It feels like it weaken, it's weakening the dark squares a little bit. But... Uh, I'm assuming that he, he has a follow-up. Maybe he wants to, to just wait, as I mentioned, while you were gone, make a good waiting move. And it's not so easy for white to make a good waiting move. Maybe rook b1. Yeah, rook b1 is exactly what I was thinking. And then something like uh, queen f5. I don't know. Just moving it away. Okay, but queen f5, rook f4, winning is winning. Oh, that's true. Nasty. Yeah, I missed it. So queen a5, let's say. Just waiting somehow. But it, of course it's it's not very yeah. easy to play uh, here with black. And I assume that Carlsen wouldn't mind equalizing in this position. Because he's a pawn down. I, I, it's not how the game will end. Yeah, rook a1. Yes. <laughs> it's quite likely actually. Yeah, it might happen. Yes. And um, let's have a look. So we were talking while waiting for Karakin to make his move because obviously there isn't uh, anything dramatic going on in this position as far as we can see. Rook b1 is very logical. <coughs> and what I predict at least and the move that Daniel suggested. Do you also think it will be played? I think Rook b1 will definitely be played. Yeah. And um, so... Back about uh, Karyakin's ear. So in the World Cup, he managed to defend actually some pretty tough situations even before the finals and uh, pull some miraculous escapes. And especially in the finals when he was down um, 0 to 2, when they had four rapid games. Zero to two, yeah. Yes, he lost the first two games in a, in a row. And then he was playing the third game and he was lost. Yeah? yeah. And he managed to win that game, win the next one. And then it was still very dramatic with, in the blitz. And they almost uh, reached the Armageddon. And uh, somehow Karyakin was uh, very tough mentally and managed to beat Zwidler. And win the World Cup, which is very impressive. It's probably the second most prestigious title after the World Champion. Yeah? Yeah. It's even, some say it's, it might be even more difficult to achieve it because it's quite, uh, it's quite uh, likely. It's that, so hard. Yeah, that statistically, that statistically someone uh, will not make it just because the system is 124 players just uh, playing a match of two games against someone else, and then if you don't win the, in this match, you get you go to the rapid and to the blitz, and it's so random, and all the players are very strong, so you need to win like I think something like uh, six games. To, to become the champion. Six different matches in a row of two games. And uh, yeah, Karyakin uh, made it. And uh, later on, so thanks to uh, being in the top two in the, in the World Cup, he managed to, to get to the candidates tournament, qualify, which is far from obvious because with his rating, even though it's very high, he wouldn't qualify. And he didn't play that amazingly in the Grand Prix series. As far as I remember, and uh, yeah, so he, his only chance was the World Cup, and he did it, and he qualified, and uh, then he he played the candidates, and the candidates in itself was an extremely dramatic event. So many changes in every round. The winner 
uh, not the winner, the leader would lose and others will catch him up and ev or he will draw. And the tie breaks rules were so complicated and like so many players had to calculate in advance well, what will happen. And there was a situation with three leaders and one of them was forced to play for a win because he didn't have any chance to, to qualify uh, yeah. if it's based on tie breaks. And there was a situation where Anand was only half a point behind but he still had no theoretical chances. But he could only affect the, the winner. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it was so complicated with three different leaders. And Karyakin, once again, managed to defend a lot of tough positions, at least uh, two or three, as I recall. Very difficult positions. And every small chance that he got, just like in this match, he, he seized very convincingly and converted. And uh, yeah, he won the candidates. And uh, if he wins this match, it will probably be the most fantastic year and a half that anyone has ever had winning so many titles yeah so that's quite incredible and we have a move uh queen d3 was played ah sorry rook b1 what? sorry sorry I, I missed i missed another uh move i was too busy uh talking about karakin's achievements rook b1 was played as you predicted but carson doesn't want to draw so we went queen d7 Queen d7, and now yeah. in this position, queen d3 was played. They play quite fast. They make they make yeah, the yeah. moves quite rapidly. It's uh, it seems like Karyakin has has uh, listened to my advice that he was thinking a bit too much in the early rounds, even though he was playing well. So anyone in the chat, please share the clock situation with us. Uh, what do you think about the about this the position right now? Carson wants to win. That's what I can say. But what's the objective evaluation? It's probably close. Uh, I, like, I, like, I like White's position. Rook yeah. One is the yeah. It's probably close to equal, but favoring White. That's my guess. Karakin, Karakin is very strong in his position. He now sort of put pressure. Yes, he's and he knows how not to lose he's any of them. In the process of putting pressure, 41 minutes for Carlsen versus an, an hour and eight minutes for Karyakin. Thank you. Is beginning to be Thank you, TP, for for saying the clock situation. If you uh, think, if you think for like 20 minutes on the smoke, he will be in trouble. Yes. So. Hmm. It's very hard to find a move for Black. Let's mention another topic about uh, Karyakin's interesting life. Uh, he converted, I'm not sure if this is the right word, but his, uh, his uh, nationality. I'm not sure if it's only his Fide or his entire nationality. From, I think it's his entire nationality. From Ukrainian to Russian. This wasn't such an issue probably 25 years ago or, or 30 years ago in the Soviet Union, yeah? Everyone were just Soviet. Yeah. But uh, now, yeah, exactly. but now we have different countries uh, of the former Soviet Union, and yeah, Ukraine is its own country, and Russia is its own country, and also like um, each one of 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 this, uh, of their citizens, at least in Israel, let's say, are proud of their own country. So if if someone who's Ukrainian in Israel will speak Russian and I will ask him if he's Russian, he will almost get uh, offended a little bit by me confusing, yeah? Yeah, of course. As if I'm supposed to know their accent. So, uh, I'm sure you can tell the difference, by the way. Uh, usually sometimes, but it's not mm. necessarily so defined. Yes, so... Um, or at least they will be surprised by, uh, by the fact that I'm confusing because uh, it's not the same. And uh, I have actually many friends from Chess who are, some of them are Russian originally, at least from their parents, and some of them are Ukrainian. And I, it's hard to tell the difference because they all speak the same language. And uh, Yeah, all Ukrainians do speak Ukrainian, but not 
Of course, yeah, yeah. I, I meant like they all speak Russian in Israel, and uh, Ukrainians have their own yeah, language. Yeah, Ukraine. Even in Ukraine, they speak Russian. So. Yeah, usually, yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't think Karyakin speaks Ukrainian. Hmm, that's interesting. I don't think he does. Well, I don't think he, knows. he must if he was raised there, no? No, uh, uh, no, 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 no. It's not necessarily the truth. I mean, some Ukrainians who were raised in Ukraine just speak Russian because it's the lingua franca. Mm -hmm. I see. That's interesting, actually. So, he, he converted his nationality to Russian, and while we don't know all the details about it, I should have read about it and investigated a little bit more, uh, so I can enrich the viewers, but uh, for now I can only assume that uh, it has something to do with the economical... Uh, support for uh, becoming a world champion he, he, he always dreamt about it and i heard that when he changed his uh, nationality other than having uh, interesting tournaments like the russia super final and so on and playing uh, representing russia in different tournaments he was also um receiving some trainers he had like three or four trainers and some psychologists yeah. and and like a lot of support from the Russian government uh, for his chess career, and uh, yeah. yeah, it's paid off. Yeah. Other than other than economical reasons, do you think there was anything else? Political, I'm sure there was some political things between Russia and Ukraine, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't, I don't know what the details are. It's all very messy, as it usually is in the chess world. Yeah. Well, I didn't. Um, but I think honestly, the more I'm looking at this position yeah the more i'm realizing it black, black is in trouble here i think black is in serious serious trouble yeah serious i think it's very very serious trouble because i am threatening rook g1 and then i'm actually threatening rook g6 and if you ever play knight d5 i'm gonna have okay but rook g1 on the board by the way knight d5 is on the board yes Um. Oh, you want rook g6 check if I move the knight? Yeah, I, I just fail to see how black is keeping position under any kind of control here. Yeah, rook g5 is another annoying idea. So here's here's what I'm calculating. First of all, I have bishop g5 here, but in rook h5 and rook takes g6, I mean, everything is collapsing. Let me ask what you. Do I do? Uh huh. It's made. Yeah. Rook g8, free move. Hmm. Yeah. If king f8, rook g8, and queen h7, and mate. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, it looks very dangerous, and rook g1 is probably going to be played sooner or later. I mean, maybe rook bc8 is the chance here for black, but. Yeah. It's very interesting. I, I Yeah. I think this might be the turning point of the match. Well, we've already had a turning point, but <laughs> this might be the, the second. The second turning point. Yeah. The turning. The turning turning point. So yeah, I, I believe that Black is in serious trouble. Yeah, it makes sense. By the way, do you remember where uh, the time where uh, like the Soviet Union control dominant? I mean, not of course we were born, uh, not born yet, but hearing about this time where Soviet Union completely dominated the chess world, and uh, yeah, yeah, and then it was broken by uh, by Fisher, who was an American, just yeah. like you, and um, yeah. Do you feel like proud of Fisher as an American? Yeah, I feel proud that he broke uh, hegemony, but it's it happened so long ago. It was a completely different time. So. But does it feel like? Obviously, there's the environment. 
But the fact that you were born in America and Fisher no, was in America. I don't feel that patriotic about Fisher particularly. Of course, I love America, but I don't think Fisher. It's great that you want and he's American, but I, I don't. I fail to see why it's incredible, so incredibly significant. Mm -hmm. And he was not patriotic himself, so it's not like he. Yeah. But he, like, he was just. I mean, he was cool and crazy, of course, toward the end of his life, but. He was an amazing chess player, and there's no denying that, but yeah. I'm not that attached to him as an you know, American. And he, you know, he showed America how good America is, you know, I don't think of it that way necessarily. Yeah. So that's interesting. What do you think uh, Karyakin will play here? Rook G1 is your guess? I'm, I'm positive he will play Rook G1. Yeah. It looks I'm extremely, extremely dangerous. Yeah. It looks just like I mean I think Carlson just went wrong somewhere. Right? The rook queen d seven or knight d five. I don't know. Yeah. I will be very surprised if he doesn't play rook g one. Yeah. And um, what? Uh, there is another thing I wanted to mention that uh, Fisher took the title away from the Soviets. And of course, it was brought back immediately afterwards to Karpov when Fischer refused to to arrive to the match. And uh, then later on, it was taken away from Kramnik. Yeah. Yeah. And we had like a lot of years without a Russian world champion compared to previous uh, to previous uh, times. Yeah. So when did Kramnik lose his title? Okay, so first of all, Topalov won the St. Louis uh, tournament in 2005, yeah? Yeah, St. Louis 2005. And then uh, Kramnik uh, t w bet beat him in Elista, was it? Yeah, with the whole 2006, the whole like. Yeah, with the bathroom action. incidents. And then. Yeah. And then uh, Kramnik lost to Anand in 2008. I'm probably wrong. Yeah. And yeah, and since 2008. Oh, no, he lost in. He lost what? I think he lost in. in the, yeah, it's not me. Let me Google it. Yes. Ah. Ah, yes. So good to Google stuff. 2008, yeah. So since 2008, for eight years, we didn't have a Russian war champion. Not that it, not that uh, it matters so much. Just historical fact. But uh, I imagined it will be many, many years uh, before it will happen again. Yeah, because we have so many strong players uh, in the top yeah, ten. And, well, unless Karyakin. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah, and Karyakin uh, has a good chance of of uh, winning. Yeah, winning this one, uh, very very likely chance. Yeah. Uh, and uh, well, what I meant is that in a way, Anand kind of did what Fisher did. Yeah, there wasn't the Cold War in the background and so on, but but Anand did manage to 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 grab the title and he he kept it and lost it only. Rook G1, Rook G1 played. Rook G1 played. Great, Rook G1 I on the board. Yeah. Can you can you verify it all? The yes. Played? Yes, it was Not played. I don't... Okay, so I have no Stradamus there. Okay, this is very exciting because Black is in serious trouble. According to our opinion, uh, we have to mention. Me. It's or, it's not. To me, yeah. Yeah. And me. And I'm usually wrong, so probably he's not. Well, <laughs> uh, you're usually right, unless. <laughs> Mm, unless you're playing I'm bullet, I'm wrong. <laughs> no, no. Unless you're yeah. play, yeah, yeah. I would say just that you're usually right. That that's my from from what I know about yeah. you. And um, <laughs> unless when you're unless you're sarcastic, that's the point. When you're yeah, sarcastic, okay. you're basically wrong. So, rook g1 on the board. Let's show the viewers. We have it over here in our old-fashioned board. And um, yes, so it's very interesting. The position, this is the most interesting position we had so far in this game. 
and we are very curious to see what Carson will come up with. Um, so let's just yeah, mention that we hope uh, for the sake of the interest, we want the game to go on and last longer. So first of all, the main threats are Rook G5 and Rook H5. And if the Knight moves, there is Rook yeah. takes G6 check exploiting the pin on the, yeah, on the diagonal. Yeah, so, okay, so let, let's just try to understand. If I play a move like, uh, so let, let's say just that it's white has an extra move, okay? It goes rook h5. Yeah. I want to go, let's say, queen c6. Okay. What do you do? Uh, queen e4. Queen e4, and you increase the pressure. And then if I move the knight... What, bishop f7? Yeah, you move the knight bishop f7. Oh, that's nice. So let's just show it. So let's say, for example, I, I'm passing the move. Just just to, to ask what does maybe, white want. Yeah. So we're trying this to understand. Really maybe a good move. Yeah. Actually, here there's queen b5. I would yeah. then bishop c4. No, here there's c4. So let's say just queen c6. Okay, so the line we were checking is queen e4, and now if the knight moves, for example, to b4, there's bishop f7 check. But now, but now, but now b3 is hanging. What? Ah, b3 is hanging, sorry. So, I was just trying to make a point to pass the move, but it's not easy. Yeah, it's not easy. I think bishop d5 here, though, is winning. After queen c6, bishop d5, rook d5. Maybe, maybe, maybe not, yeah. I thought queen e4, but I don't think so. Rook bd8. What about rook d6? Yeah, rook d6, d5, maybe. I mean, it's trouble anyway. Yeah. Also, bishop it's f4. Clear trouble. Yeah, but rook d4 here. Oh, no, queen c6. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. Forgot about that. What was the solution here for black? Rook bd8. Rook b, rook b, d8. So, but let's just mention bishop a7. And let's just say, for example, that bishop goes to c4, or to a2, I don't know, it's hard to, to come up with a move, bishop somewhere, and then... Because we're trying to come up with it. Yeah, let's just say that black goes back, just to understand what's going on. So we are trying to calculate this line, and we already have a move yeah, by, by the time I'm trying to understand. So Carlsen did pass the move, bishop c7, which looks very, much more logical than to a7. He's also taking away this... Uh, square so that after rook h5 maybe there's queen e6. I'm not, I'm not too sure. Uh, queen e6. Ooh. And what if I move like this? Um, can I move the knight and uh, hope for a mate somehow? No. Let's say I go here. Uh -huh. Now I can play bailout. Are you sure? Oh, on f7? Well, probably you can. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, but I wanted to find something better. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like this. Like there good. must be something here for black. Okay. I want to do this and that. Yeah, five, five is interesting. <coughs> And uh, knight f4 yeah, doesn't move. Maybe. Well, I want to find rook takes b3 related ideas can't work. But this one seems convincing. Uh huh. f5. Yeah, I guess you're right. They're both of the rooks. This is a very funny yeah. situation with the rooks here on, on the white side. So Karyakin is thinking for a good reason. It's not so clear how to proceed. I still believe that that is in trouble, but... Yeah, but I mean, at least this this idea of queen e6 is very logical. I mean, yeah, I, you queen can... Queen c4. Queen where? Queen c4 maybe? Here? But not here, not here. Why didn't you like queen c4? 
in here? Groot before. Ah, uh, here C4. Uh, I just stupid, I think. <laughs> Groot before. Uh huh. And then I have to go somewhere. Yeah, like back. And this is how the game will end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, exactly. Rook, so in this position, we think that Rook H5 Can is. I go Rook G? Rook, Can I go Rook G5? What's the diff? The diff is that I am not committed to my Rook being hanging. <laughs> well. <laughs> is that difference enough for you? Yes. <laughs> Yes, thank you, sir. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, I almost suggested King G two, which would have been very bad. <laughs> yeah, Rook takes B three. Even I can see it. Or to B six. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait. Let's show the the actual finale of this tactic. Yeah. It's a draw, probably. <laughs> well. Is it? It's probably winning. <laughs> so yeah, Carlson can play chess. Carlson can play some chess. He can he can play chess like a man. Chess. Like a woman, like a man, and like a computer at the same time. Combining all the three at once. By the way, it's really dark on your end for some reason. It's very dark. How's this? Do you have some light? Yeah. I turned yeah. on all the lights. Now it's better. Nice. So let's see. So the position is fairly interesting. I said very and fairly at the same uh, word. Very fairly interesting. Fairly. You know the word verily can actually be used here. Is there a word verily? Verily. Ah, ah, verily, but not verily. <laughs> wow, verily interesting. A nice choice of the verbosity. <laughs> Another yeah. word that you taught me. Verbosity, yeah. Yes. So... Here, rook g5, queen e6 is what we expect, also queen c6 is possible. Possible. Yeah. Okay, if Carlson, if Karakin wants to draw, he can take twice on d5. Hmm. Probably. But, uh, maybe black is no longer in deep trouble. <laughs> But you don't. Okay, I can find some. okay, you play white, I play black. Okay. I'm gonna crash you. Yes. Okay, let's start with the move. Um, and you should be very play very well because 850 people are witnessing. Oh, okay. I'm trying to put some uh, psychological pressure on you. Yeah. Okay, rookie eight. And now, if I move the knight, try, try, challenge accepted, and I'm losing again. That this Did is. Ah well uh, no, I think you have a lot more work to do. So, let's see. Do I even maybe rook here? Hello. Yeah. Maybe one day I'll find a good move. You'll see. <laughs> I don't think this will ever happen. Oh. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it. It's not a really good line, but I just wanted to show off that I that I have I can I can find some one move traps, yeah? And suddenly I'll I'll beat you before you know it. Oh, it's... This, we're just playing some bl some random blitz. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> <That's impressive>. <laughs> <laughs> a, a blunder following by 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 a uh, how do you call it a desperate 
uh, rescuing move. Yeah, honestly, this is still bad in UT form. Yeah, probably. So, if I do the same thing oh. like this, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say. and then queen f5. So, yeah, I have to be more disciplined. Wow, rook b5 is ridiculous. Actually, now that I think about it, I also yeah, have. Oh no, queen b5, you take and bishop a4. Yeah, and, and you don't have it. Wow, rook b5. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure this is what they're calculating as we speak. Wow, we're spotting an interesting move by accident. Yeah, you spotted it. I didn't spot anything. Well, you, you encouraged me. <laughs> yes. Wait a minute. Uh, yeah, I can't find anything here. My brain is melting without all of the Yes, exactly. Also rook dc8, just to prevent queen c4. Ah, but then queen comes... no. No, but you'll, you'll get mate here, queen e4. But b3... I have an idea. But isn't b3 hanging? I don't care. <laughs> okay, king f8. <laughs> you just want to lose, huh? Menacing. Yeah. No, no, but let's be serious for a moment. Here, if I take on b3... Oh, yeah, b3 <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, first, of all, first of all, first of all, for the record, for the record, you were the one who blundered up on b3 first, so... Uh, it was not okay, like but, but we're not comparing wi which one is worse. <laughs> there is no question I'm the worst... Oh, wait, what if... <laughs> I'm the worst chess dudes member here. Can I play this of 6? Um, so... What if I take it? Rook g6. And do I get mated? Probably you win, but. I mean, no, just wondering. This position. And b3, you want. Ah, no. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's just mate almost. <laughs> you, just, you just let it slip. Yes, you exactly. Slip. <laughs> but uh, it was worth it. It was worth it. The, the scenario was worth it. it was Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, a mating one is worthy of of of, uh, of letting it's it slip. Un unless like unless you're Mormon, yeah. If if you if I was Mormon, uh, then probably I would. I w it wasn't. It wouldn't be worth it. With full yeah, due respect. Yes. I mean, I believe. I, I had to mention it because it, it's one of the only communities I haven't offended so far. So yeah, basically in, so on my right, channel. Are you completing the circle? So then yes. <laughs> are you familiar with this terminology that like someone saying as a joke? I'm not a racist. I I discriminate everyone equally. Yeah, exactly. Something like it. Yeah, I'm offending everyone. No one will manage to escape. My generous offensiveness. So, Bishop G5, I think, is the move. Yes, and I vote for Rook D C8. And Rook B3. Exactly. <laughs> this, is the, this is the game for <laughs> Yes. Yes! What do now? Karyakin thinking. Oh, I see a beautiful idea. Yes. So, wait, what is the real line? Um, rook g1, bishop c7, right? Yes. Bishop g5. Uh, rook bc8, bishop a2. Precisely. Oh, this was a combination. I combined two different characters. Oh, it's owned. You just got owned. I'm talking to a random, nice. a random white player who blundered it. Yeah. Now this is what I like to call some chess juice. So yeah, this is actually. So rook d c eight. Hmm. Bishop a two, I think, is seriously a good move. I'll fall for it. Bishop c four. What do you play now? This is serious. Jennifer 
You don't have to explain uh, who am I. Rook B4. The rook to B4. Intriguing. Indeed, indeed. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> indeed, indeed, a good move. A, a good move by you, Mr. Daniel. Um, okay, I'll fall. I'll fall for it. I'll fall for it again. Oh. So here's what's happening now, yeah, rook b4 and rook b2 trying to repeat the position and make it down, yeah, just, that's a very, <laughs> an obvious move that uh, just seems so easy when, when seeing it from the stronger master side of the town, yeah. Alright, take it away, take it away, Maurice. So the engines I, I wish... are showing. Yeah, so the engines, the engines, bishop a2, are saying that white is on the verge of being ludicrous amongst the position although black has some counter chances with the incredible maneuver bishop a5 i don't think i don't believe carlsen will find it well i still have to to improve all three of them but uh that's a start that's a start yeah there's a lot of room for improvement so Let's see. Where was I? Rook g1, bishop c7 on Rook the board. And uh, what can we say? Um, yeah, Rook, G Rook g5 we already considered, yeah? Yes. Rook g5, queen c6, yeah. But so. The clock situation, according to all Dani, is 32 minutes versus 48 minutes in favor of Karyakin. So, so we're, we're beginning to approach time pressure. <clears throat> hmm, not so bad. Mm -hmm. Your Jewish thought. Yes. <laughs> so. So. Uh, Carl, the first pressure. Mm -hmm. By the way, what do you think about the the method, like the the system that they use to determine the world champion? I had a lot of discussions about it with uh, Nico after the quick draw on round round six, I believe. So, what do you think about it? I think it's very it's very hard to find a uh, just system. Mm -hmm. In general. Yeah, I agree. It's and very difficult. I don't know. I think somehow, but somehow, if you don't win like one game, you can basically forfeit the right to play the world championship four years which is kind of drastic is it um, only once in four years not two years or uh oh yeah no it's once in two years that's true yeah. but but wait a minute but don't you have revenge i i have no idea how don't that doesn't the challenger get to take revenge in in two years i don't think it's valid Exactly. No, I don't think there is revenge anymore in the past uh, few years. But, uh, well, I, all I know is that the world champion or the, the challenger, the loser from this match, or the one who loses, uh, is, uh, has the automatically uh, qualifying from the next candidates next year. Yeah, yeah. Or two years later, that's, I don't remember. 
So the World Championship cycle is one thing that, that's interesting to discuss, but the actual World Championship match. Uh, so unfortunately, there are pluses and minuses for every possible system, because if you include more than two players, then uh, there's going to be a problem, because by including more than two players, then you, you include some randomness, and then the World Champion will be determined by how badly the third party is playing, you know? I think I think it makes sense that to have like the one against one is the most just system, but like finding some balance because I don't know right now it seems like uh, it's very uh, rewarding for both players to play extremely solidly without uh, risking too much and like encouraging people to take risks is something that might be interesting. But I don't think there is any, any way to form such encouragement because if you encourage them to do it with black, then suddenly it becomes a good idea to 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 play for a draw with white. So yeah, there, I I am not aware of a way to encourage players to take risks because winning is always equivalent. Yeah, no matter how you define it, winning will always be the opposite of losing. So it will be more rewarding not to lose than to risk it. Yeah. Never Yeah, but they don't fit. I mean, even even if you apply them, it won't matter in a one versus one, because if you win and lose, it's equivalent to no matter how, what numbers you use, winning and losing will always be the opposites. Well, you could have some really complicated system where a draw is not fifty-fifty, or it's not a half a point for both. Yeah. But it depends on who was like applying the pressure. By the way, did you turn off the light at some point? Did I turn off the light? I didn't know. Uh -huh. Okay, it's no. No, it just, the light seems to change uh, every now and then. So... Um, I guess I'm here, yeah. Okay, so... Um, Sergei played something. Bishop g5, rook c8. What's played? Someone okay. is saying. Rook e8, sorry. On the board. Rook e8, okay. E. Yes. Oh, wow, so now your line with rook b5 might be actually played. Wow. I'm a beast! <laughs> because queen c4, queen, queen c4, ah! Because queen c4, does, it, does black have any other moves? Well, maybe bishop d8. Ah, whoops, it's not hanging. <laughs> you, you broke your, your streak of good moves. <laughs> yes, in one moment, in one hefty moment. So, so Rook B5, I think, is forced. Wow, Magnus. Not so Wait bad. A I think something's been played. Check again. Check again. No, I don't see a move. Hmm, interesting stuff. So, what can we say about the position? Rook e8 on, on the board. What did uh, we talk about before as putting the move we on? We discussed also bishop, bishop f6, but... No, but we were uh, talking about another topic. Ah, the system. Oh, yeah, so, so I was... How the games went? Uh, wow! Yeah, so like if somebody was more wow! This is interesting. You can have judges. Yeah. Wow. You would have a panel of partial judges, just like you judge gymnastics contests. And okay, wow, so this is interesting. But then, then chess will not be a so sport. It really will become. It will become art. <laughs> Maybe this is the way to 
Capcom combat computer related chess. Wow, but but I, I, the problem with it is, is, I mean, we already have too many people that we pay, like arbiters. There are like the tournament organizers. So many people who need to, you know, the appealing committee, and all all of them. So what about? So if you add the panel. Maybe only in the world championship. What? Well, only, but you can also program a, 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 some kind of program that is that judges that has a bunch of criteria, and it, it judges the game based on certain criteria that you programmed. I see. Hmm. So the players. Well, yeah, but but. Wow, this is ridiculous. But then if they just make 12 draws and one of them can win by some silly criterion? Okay, that's part of but but exactly, they make 12 draws, but the point total is not the same. Yeah, but let's say one of them made the losing move and therefore is winning the tournament because uh, according to the criteria uh, play changing the evaluation and defending a losing position gives you more points yeah it could be flawed but okay it's maybe it has some promise well the problem with i mean beauty is not necessarily the same as effectiveness yeah and if someone's play is extremely effective like caruana's in sinkfield cup let's say when he got seven out of seven at the beginning I mean, you can't say that these games were the most beautiful games in history, yeah? Of course not. And yeah. the panel will probably... Okay, didn't make any draws, but... I mean, in these seven rounds. But you see the point that... I mean, every system has a flaw. And uh, yeah, it's, a it's always a question of, of, of uh, the balance between chess as a profession and chess as a show. To attract uh, mass audiences and uh, well so far they chose the profession professional approach which I like uh, yeah. Yeah. if chess will become a show then uh, it, it goes downhill very quickly from there on at least for yeah. us uh, professionals so hmm Yeah. Yeah, I Indeed. I, my work is beginning to come back in, but I, I want to see what happens. Wow, but this rook b5, I can't believe I found it so quickly. Like this idea of rook b5 and queen f5. Yeah. Okay, I didn't find it, I found each of the moves separately. Before, yeah. <laughs> Blundering followed by. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What if rook f4? Sorry. Okay. If I grab it with the with what? With the what? And then I attack your queen with tempo. Oh. Oh, wow. I missed this. And then bishop g5. Yeah, missed. this doesn't work. Yeah. Wow, well, no, it all suddenly works out for black. <laughs> yeah. Every line. Is this like better for black already? Rook b4 is coming. I mean. No, I mean after bishop a4, of course, not the... Maybe Karyakin missed it and counted on queen c4? Oh, we have a move! Queen c4 on the board! Wow, we can expect the line! Well, if, if it will actually take place, we are like the best... Predict... Like, the best prophets. Okay, okay, okay. Let's tone, tone, let's tone down the self-congratulations. No, come on! Let's, let's start applying for a job as a prophets. I know in the in the in the Bible we could make some really good business. In the days times of the Bible. Yeah, exactly. Predicting stuff. Rook B five is my guess. Yeah, we predict we predict Rook B five. Wow. But what does White do? I don't know. Okay, let's look at this position because it looks extremely, extremely interesting. Uh, 
if this will be on the board let's try to predict in advance what can y do i mean it's looking so perfect because you want queen f3 and there is not even a single piece that can defend it other than king maybe yeah i mean queen d3 queen c3 queen b3 it's all taken away <laughs> king g2 yeah go like this. okay i gave you the idea okay but this <laughs> What? What do you say? Ah, you, you have a follow-up actually. You you dare to have a follow-up after yeah, King G2. Okay, knight f4 check. This is this is beyond ridiculous. Um Okay here. Ah, but then I have another rook behind it. I almost let another word slip. So yeah, let's see. <laughs> okay, queen d2. Queen d5. Yeah, you didn't fall for my trap. <laughs> I had only one idea. No, I'm not gonna fall for this part. <laughs> no, but okay, here there must be something. Oh, okay, instead of taking the bishop, if I just go rook before, you probably resign, yeah? Well, actually, just just to be just to be principled for a moment here. Ah, here you continue. Okay. Yeah. Rook g four. And, wow. and rook b two. Okay. Okay, this should be lost. Ow. Okay, let's say here. Oh, King g2 is funny though. Rook b5 though. played, apparently. Yes! But apparently rook b5 was played. Okay, but I think he won't play bishop e4, but let's just say they reach this position. Maybe Sergei will find an amazing defensive resource that we miss. So I really want us to concentrate, because this is the critical line by far. I can't believe we predicted it. Wait, is rook b5 actually... Rook b5 actually played? Yeah. Well, we, we actually... I, I think if we would if we were to turn on an engine yeah. we would never predict such a line. Because not, yeah. Bishop A4, Queen F5. F5 is... Okay, but let's focus on this line because I, I really want to find a move here. There must be something. I mean at least uh, a move. Because so far everything we looked at just lo losing for white. It doesn't make sense that white is already losing here after Bishop A4 yeah, Queen. And for those who are confused, for those who are confused, this is the position on the board. Bishop on b3, rook b5 was played, as you can see here. And now we are analyzing the position after bishop a4, queen f5. Seems like the only move for black, but a very strong one. With the idea of queen f3 check followed by rook e1 mate after rook g2. So, um, we want to look at uh, a defensive resource for, for white. Well, I, I have a move, I have a move. Uh, but I, I'm a little bit afraid to suggest it. Queen f1. Wanna go queen g2 and I still have the pin going. Oh, wow. This is an amazing move, yeah. Okay, uh, let me think. Let me try and kind of prove my word hmm. here. But now it's your, your turn. Yeah, let me, I'm just thinking. I would gladly have my okay. own turn, but uh, I can't see a move. Rook b1. I have several then... ideas for now. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Rook b1, rook b1. Queen c2 was played, ruining the fun. Ah, uh, queen c2. Wow, but this position is amazing. I, I wish they would enter it and, and just force us to analyze it. Come on, I, I want to just keep analyzing it for 10 minutes, ignoring the game. Just finding something there. After queen f1, you mean? After queen c2. With bishop a4? Hey, what the hell does white do? Uh, for start, maybe knight b4. Knight b4. Yeah. Ah, you still have this queen g6 idea. Are you sure? Yeah. Queen g6. Queen g6. Yeah, I said it. I said it. Queen g6. And rook h5 doesn't work. There's yeah, yeah. a pin. That's, yeah, rook h5. Yeah. That's lovely. 
Queen g6 works. Amazing. It never stops working. So this is the first trap. Mm -hmm. Do they have another move? Hmm. Interesting uh, stuff. Rook b4 maybe, but I have it. So we have already 940 people. Maybe Our inspired analysis wow. triggered awesome. more people to look at us. So, queen on c2. Now, rook b4 uh, looks I like... I think it just lost rook b4. Bishop d2. Uh-huh. Um... Well, I'm not sure. I still have to <laughs> come up with some more ridiculous moves. Uh, <laughs> but this this is just becoming crazier uh, with every move. Uh, I'm very okay. I'm very proud of Karyakin who, who induced this uh, variation somehow, despite the tournament situation. This, this complication. See, he. But he's the one yeah, but you know, he's got some balls, as they say. Yeah, he definitely has. Uh, the funny thing is, bishop takes d5 doesn't work. Do you see that queen d5? Queen yeah, d5, yeah, of d5. course, queen f3. I oh, when when yeah, suggesting like uh, when suggesting rook e2, I actually blundered it, but but then of course I realized yeah, it was there. Like, can somebody tell me how much time does Magnus have? Yes, uh, they will tell you in a moment. So bishop d2, rook e2, you already give up? This is too much? I give up. Yeah, this is too much. I don't see anything. You give up? <laughs> Resign. All, Resign. All of my pieces are hanging. Okay, but if rook e4, rook takes d2. Yeah. Uh, once you don't have your queen g6 anymore, you're you're worthless. <laughs> I'm just joking, oh, of course. Have, I don't have any. 26 minutes, I see now. By the way, minutes. is there bishop f6? Ah, probably not. Uh, here. Uh, I, th I thought about rook b3, though. Yeah, then it's over. Queen b3, knight f6, finished. So, um... Yeah, well, very close to it. Rook e2 is probably good for black. That's amazing. And uh, so, what can white play? We change our evaluation with each each second. Kassen twenty five minutes. Karyak in thirty seven minutes. Yeah, because it's so complicated. Yes. Ka Sorry. Karyak in thirty seven minus twenty seven. Yes. So after queen c2, what what can we suggest? Uh, so. Once again, I'll mention that the position on the board is this one with the rook on b5, as you can see. And uh, we said we predict the move rook b4 to prevent rook bishop a4 from uh, pinning, making a family pin. And now, um, probably, I don't know what what can white play here. We don't one moment we think white is winning, then we don't see a move for white. And the position hasn't changed, it's only us. No, I mean... You can play rook e4. Yeah. Ridiculous. You can play rook e4. Yeah. Wow, this position is extremely interesting. Rook e4 Fe Queen h3 Queen h3 I can't make a move for some reason, but Queen h3 yeah, there we go. You can't make a move? Now you can, okay Bishop d5, Queen h2 make no, This is a good idea yeah. <laughs> Nice If Rook g2, Rook b3 Yeah Or Bishop h2 actually, yeah? Yeah with queen f1 mate. Yep. Okay, so... So rook b4 is the the move we predict. Let's promote it. Yeah, now bishop d2, rook e2, we think uh, black is, uh, is better, probably. So... 
and another move we just looked at is rook e4 and then there is this line so probably the rook has to stay on h4 okay the rooks on the agent g files are okay what does black want if he has another move actually we didn't check if he even has a threat we have to be more educated yeah but i mean white is still a pawn up with the pair of bishops so if i just like wait one move yeah well there must be some idea bishop d2 rook e2 is amazing i can't get over that otherwise it's winning yeah So, someone is asking, can you look at rook e4, bc4? Well, I guess maybe bishop c4, but it doesn't seem too logical. So, if black is to move now, maybe he wants rook e b8, yeah? Yeah, rook e b8, or just uh, rook, yeah. And then rook b2, perhaps, and take on f2. Yeah, so so let's say, okay, I want to play bishop to c4. Um, can I put bishop on a2, actually? How do they think about it? Yes. Queen b5. And now? Rook e4. Queen, rook b2 is your idea, and now what can I do? Rook e4, rook e4. Yes, and now threatening bishop takes d5 already. Yeah. And you don't have queen h3 like you had before. Maybe rook yeah. e b8. Maybe white Rook e b8, yeah. Queen where? E4? And now... Queen E4. Still with your Queen G6 ideas. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Second rook to B5. <laughs> if I take it, you want to mate me? Rook G6. Yeah. Well... So you're threatening some rook g No, right now I don't see... Ah, rook h7 might be a threat. But then knight f6. Yeah, and then okay. queen g6. Then rook g6. Yeah, so... Queen g6. You have some threats. You have some threats. I'll give you that. So if I move some piece like this... But then you can even take... Also queen if... oh no, it's not check. Actually, I have, knight, I have knight f6, perhaps. I mean, that's ridiculous. This is not over. What? Rook g6? Yeah, just resigned. Yeah. No, bishop f6 is very strong. So, I have to be careful. 
That's my conclusion. But Bishop A2 looks nice, actually, yeah? Yeah, it's a, it's a, Zen, it's a Zen move. A Zen move. Yes. Zen move. Bishop A2. Trying, just trying to make Dvoretsky proud. Hmm. Oh, so uh, Karyakin is now thinking for a long time. Yes. What's the clock situation, guys? By the way, 1,085 viewers. Uh, it's the uh, the wow. cha the channel's record uh, so far. Can we take a? That's great. Just take keeps increasing. Take a small snack break, but yes, it keeps increasing, and I'll just mention that uh, I checked earlier. And, uh, like uh, two hours ago, uh, how Chess Twenty Four were doing, and uh, they had like nineteen thousand people watching live. So, not comparing or anything. So we have about one nineteen. Yes, which is much more than I expected. So, okay, with you maybe not, but uh, with when I am commentating by myself, I'm expecting like ten people to watch. Yeah. So here, uh, bishop on a2, what can we suggest for black? Oh, se so, 17 yeah, minutes uh, versus 37. I assume that Carlsen has 17, yeah? Wait, so, 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 so he's still thinking about this move, right? Yes. As far as I can tell. Maybe he doesn't like something after rook before, but... Maybe. What do you say to the possibility of me taking a 10 minute break for a quick snack? Uh, very possible, but you, you can also do it in, in front of us, whatever you prefer. Uh, I mean, I would highly encourage you to okay. to be on top form at any moment I'll that you... Ask. ask? Yeah, while he's thinking, I might quickly grab a few bites and come back right back. You Be Unless my guest. Are there any serious objections? I mean it literally, okay. be okay. my guest. Yes. Okay, I'll be back very soon. Okay, sure. So, it's only you and I, dear viewer. As they say, just the two of us. So, as I promised earlier, because I see a lot of political uh, comments in the chat, uh, in previous rounds, if Carson is ever to win one round, once he wins, I will do a Trump imitation. But uh, if he doesn't, then... Probably not. I won't risk it. So, what can I say? Let, let's try to actually look at the position. Something I didn't do in a while. Queen on c2. Now, rook has to to move. Otherwise, there is bishop a4. So I go rook b4. Bishop a2, as Daniel mentioned, is a zen move. Trying to just uh, avoid the, the bishop getting hit. Preparing some potential queen moves. I don't know even where. And um, also preparing mentally for rook e b8, so that after rook b8, we can go queen e4. Their bishop is no longer hanging. And as Daniel pointed out, after rook a to b5, which I tried, there is this amazing idea, bishop f6, with the, with the threat rook takes h7. And um, just for example, if rook b2, rook takes h7, knight f6, now there is this pin, so I can take queen g6 already and win with rook f7 next. So, and if you don't uh, take, no, if you take here, then suddenly there is rook g6, and uh, there is no defense for black, because hg seems to be getting mated, rook hg8. Is something I don't see how to prevent. Mm. No, no way to prevent as far as I can tell. I mean, only postpone, but uh, not by a lot. So, rook g6 probably black has to move his king, but then this rook takes f6 with rook f7, and uh, white is two pawns up, and many threats are, are on the way. So, Bishop f6 is a nice idea in these positions. And here after bishop a2, black has to find a good move. Rook e b8 is probably not the great move because of bishop f6. But uh, yeah, black has to find something. White is not threatening anything 
in particular that I can think of. So maybe just moving the bishop back, like bishop b6. Is there bishop f6 now? So let's say, can I, can I even take on d4? I think I can. Bishop takes d4. Now if rook takes h7, just bishop f6. Ah, there is not, there is no other rook that can come. The queen is not on e4, so it can just take the rook if I want. But I can also take the bishop like this. The only thing to be aware of is not to take with the knight because then there's queen g6. So bishop e6 seems like a logical move. And uh, yeah, now I'm thinking what to play with uh, the white pieces. And I can't come up with uh, something too powerful. People say rook a8 was played. Okay, instead of rook b4, rook a8. So I'm assuming that it's just la much like before. Ah, but now the queen is protecting from queen f5. So first question on the line. What does black want after bishop a4? Pinning the rook and queen. So if I could move the queen while threatening on f3, it would be fantastic. But uh, I don't see such a, a way to achieve it. So I assume that knight moves but if the knight moves anywhere i can take on b5 intermediate move and we don't see a problem so what does carson want after bishop a4 I, I really don't know maybe daniel will help me after he gets his snack but uh, for now i can't really come up with anything let's see what the viewers are saying hmm. So, please don't share anything that's uh, involving uh, your uh, knowledge of the position. If anyone in the chat ever checked with an engine or anything, don't say the evaluation, don't say the correct moves. We don't want to know. It's not welcome here. So, we want to find it on our own. I want the viewers and the future viewers who think on their own. I want myself to analyze properly. And uh, yeah, I'm not too sure what's going on here. Bishop a4 looks like a really good move. And uh, what can I say? I'm trying to see if there is anything interesting while skipping all the messages that I don't want to see not easy not an easy task so if bishop a4 someone is saying that there is queen f5 but the problem with queen f5 is that the queen is on c2 so it can take on f5 and then go bishop takes b5 and of course black is losing so i'm not sure what happens after bishop a4 but there is something i don't think carlsen would allow it so easily without having anything in mind maybe rook takes a4 and then queen f5 but this will be quite quite deep to say the least i'm not too sure Hmm. It's very difficult to understand. So, Karyakin 35 minutes, Magnus 13 is very long time. Oh, that starts to look uh, quite suspicious. So, I can hear some sounds from Skype, but maybe it will take a moment for Daniel to, to join us. So, I... I suspect that Carlsen wants rook a4 and queen f5 and um, someone is asking check rook b2 please in this position well rook b2 I think I am forced to take here but I don't see a follow up for black because I just won an exchange and now f3 is not such a big problem I think a better way to, to sacrifice the exchange 
is to take on a4 and then go queen f5, threatening queen f3. So if queen b5, queen f3, and there we go with a perpetual check. It's a draw. So Karyakin has already has a draw in his hand, but uh, maybe he will do something uh, else. So uh, if I were Karyakin, not that I would ever had such a chance to lead against the world champion who is the best player in history, but according to many people, and uh, lead by the ninth round. But if I were in his shoes right now, regardless of the tournament situation, uh, I would like to find the best move in the position, not to just go home with a draw. Because it feels like white should be better. So, if, if I can't find a win, or at least a, a way to, to try to play for an edge after queen f5, um, maybe queen a3, Mm. Rook a5. This is funny. You have to go to b3. Then I would f search for something else. But uh, yeah, so here I don't see a follow up for black, but there must be something. I know Carlsen would think of something. How about rook b5? This looks quite lovely. If you go back, then it's a draw once again. If you take uh, the same queen f3 draw, so queen d1 and then knight c3. And once again, your queen cannot protect the f3 square. And if even if it protects the b1 square, I still have the knight supporting it, so rook b1 check will win the queen. So this is an interesting line actually. So maybe Carlsen saw it in advance, rook a5 and rook b5, and white doesn't have any way that I can see to protect the f3 square without repeating the moves. So, yeah, that's interesting. And if king g2, there is queen g5 over here. And it should be much better for black. Because in this version, even though I don't have to play queen g5 immediately, probably, not only that I'm threatening queen h2, queen takes b5 will fall for knight e3 or knight f4. So I'm thinking that uh, rook a4 is safely uh, s sailing into draw territory. But what else can white play? It's not easy to say. Is black even threatening anything? Well, he's very active. White still has a pawn up and the two bishops, but the rooks, if they're not attacking, then they're a little bit away from the critical part of the board and we have a move bishop c4 yes so that's the move i actually wanted to suggest and didn't dare but uh yeah i'm very proud of karyakin and i i will continue the tradition that i started some time ago you know back in the fifth round the respectful clap to sergey Whenever he avoids a draw and makes a move that keeps the game going, I have to give it to him. He's got balls. And, uh, well, that's what we want to see, a, a struggle. We didn't come here to see two people trying to, to avoid playing and snitching the title away. Karakin wants to win. He can smell that he's better and he wants to challenge Magnus and he has 20 minutes edge. He knows this must be his last this might be his last chance to increase the lead. Even if he is leading now, by making a draw it does not guarantee his chances to to win the, the tournament. Of course they are high, but uh, in this three in three games afterwards anything can happen, especially with the pressure and especially if psychology from psychological point of view he will be sufficient uh, with a draw even in positions like this. So it's not a good psychological position to be in to try to make draws when you have three games to go even with one game it's very risky so playing for a win very nicely done by sergey bishop c4 i'm not sure if it's uh, better for white but it's definitely uh, a, a good move from practical point of view keeping the game going and now rook ba5 on the board and uh, i feel like um, Sergey should try something uh, 
something that's not forcing, that will not make Magnus' life too easy. He has 20 minutes less or even more, and uh, it's already quite a serious time pressure. Only six moves left, but it's still a lot uh, with such a complicated position. So, actually, I'm starting to wonder what happens after bishop d2, because I'm attacking the rook, and if it goes forward... Ah, actually, I, n never mind. I thought bishop d5 and queen c7, but... But there is always this queen f3 idea that we saw earlier with rook a1. Although... Hmm, okay, even if it doesn't work, there is a draw. The normal. The usual draw. So, anyway, bishop d2, let's say rook a3. And now some move for white. Maybe queen e4. Okay, it's very difficult to play with white, but not impossible, because now if the knight moves, rook g6 looks uh, interesting, with potential to be crushing. So, queen e4, I'm not too sure how black should respond. If rook d8, I already have bishop g5 all over again, and we've been to this movie, as they say sometimes. I'm not sure if it's a phrase in English, but in, in Hebrew. So, my coach used to tell me all the time, we've already seen this movie, so... Um, over here, rook a8 on the board, bishop c4, rook b a5 on the board. I hope bishop d2 is a good move. Uh, looks like it, maybe rook a4. Trying to avoid this queen e4 idea, but maybe rook h5 also. It's not easy. It's not easy to understand anything in this position. Do we have a move? Koryakin is thinking. He, he better f think uh, seriously now and find a good move if he can. He better do his very best to think on a good move. After rook a4, I can't really... Sorry, after rook a5. If he doesn't find the best move in this position, then uh, this might be the most critical moment of, of the game, where if he finds the best uh, continuation, it will put pressure on Carlsen, who's already in time pressure, so putting pressure on the position, and there is a good chance he will collapse under this uh, heavy psychological and uh, objective <laughs> pressure, let's say. So it feels like uh, bishop d2 just feels right to attack the rook, but I don't know what else. Here, maybe bishop b3. But now the bishop is hanging, I don't have queen e4. Hmm. I don't know, I don't know. It's hard to say. I really want to find a good move for black to keep the game going. But uh, as long as Karyakin didn't take the fourth draw, then. Uh, then I'm happy. So. So. What can I say? Nothing special. Kayakin has made a move. Bishop d2. Wow. This is. I, I think if there was a game called Guess the Move. Where there are prizes given to the one who guesses the 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 all the moves the the great the biggest amount of moves probably i would win this particular round and be the last place in all the others because i mean but in this round i mean daniel and i found everything in this game we kind of predicted even this rook b5 ridiculous idea i can't believe we found it actually the way we found it was funny i, I blundered and then found resources which is not a healthy way to to calculate but uh, bishop d2, rook a4 is what I can predict. And then it's very important to keep an eye on this bishop so the queen will not find it too easy to come to e4. And as I said, rook h5. And now I, I don't know what black can do because rook g6 is very powerful if the knight moves. Maybe knight e7. The position is extremely complicated. Now bishop f7 is also suddenly looking risky for black. 
very risky probably lost already so where should the rook move and he played rook a4 yes <laughs> okay i think i should they should invent such a prize right now just for for the sake of this stream bishop takes uh no sorry bishop takes d5 doesn't work as i mentioned because of queen f3 and uh, at least a draw probably also maximum for uh black and uh, but at this point black would be very happy with the draw he has 20 minutes less or even more and uh five more moves to go but uh two minutes or two and a half minutes per move are not a lot in this position and Karakin can afford to think for a long time so rook h5 is the move i was i was calculating that looks very challenging for black and now black black's knight is is attacked and if he moves it anywhere there's rook takes g6 if he moves it here as mentioned there is rook takes uh, sorry bishop takes f7 so tough luck what can i say after rook h5 there must be a defense there must be i'm not gonna look at the chat anymore <laughs> or should i just for a moment Yofi. very good very very good no one says any engine evaluations or moves queen d3 on the board i'm very proud of my viewers in the chat who don't say any anything uh too revealing queen d3 on the board uh i'll hope you'll excuse me for a moment i'll try to understand what happens after rook h5 because i really can't it feels like rook h5 is very powerful i don't know i really don't know but i'm sure both of them s uh, seen something maybe maybe queen c6 actually ah uh, there's a pin and then I, uh, if i take with the rook there's rook c4 okay queen c6 is a move i missed and probably both of them have seen so queen d3 trying to avoid the pin and probably preparing rook h5 so we, we spotted the idea but now it's it's uh, it becomes a real threat probably so what will magnus play now anyone can guess without looking at the engine i have no idea i'm thinking rook a3 is very logical but what can i say hmm so clock situation anyone so i don't see the clock situation i don't know this position rook a3 looks like a logical move to me but then queen e4 and the bishop is no longer hanging and then it's a problem because if i move the knight once again there's rook g6 so yeah black must find a good move here i don't know what i don't know which i have to find a good move it doesn't look pretty for carlsen i have to admit it doesn't look pretty there is a big a huge threat as someone once said huge rook h5 attacking the knight on d5 and uh it's it's game over it's curtains after rook h5 so maybe rook a1 just trying to to avoid rook h5 so that there won't be any any pin anymore but it doesn't feel right it doesn't feel right probably bishop c1 just renewing the threat i don't know it looks incredibly risky for black so, um, yes, Daniel. So, welcome back, Daniel. After the break, by the way, we could hear you saying a few words in Russian. So, I will ask the viewers to translate so I can know exactly what you said. Maybe you were gossiping about us. So uh, we have. Uh, so I'll just mention that we have another peak of fourteen hundred viewers in this position. And uh, so what? Wait a minute. Let me let me just see. 
no, 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 come on, look at your phone. We have like many viewers, you don't want them to, to see everything all over again. You, you can look at the phone. This is the position, we want to analyze it. Queen d3, and it looks incredibly dangerous for black. And, uh, well, I, I feel like uh, rook h5 is, uh, is, a, is a huge threat, yeah? yeah. And what, what can black do? The only move I can come up with that doesn't lose is, is rook a1. And rook a3? What? what about rook a3? Rook where? Yeah, I analyzed it. Queen e4. A3. Uh -huh. Queen e4, and now uh, uh -huh. there's no serious way to move the knight because knight e7, bishop f7. Yeah, yeah, rook d8. Yeah, rook d8, like bishop d8. Exactly. Exactly. Precisely. So, in this position, after queen d3. Rook a1 seems like the the only move that doesn't uh, allow rook h5, but maybe even bishop c1, I was suggesting, and renewing the threat, and... Ah, but now rook can go back to a5 if he, if he wishes. Uh, what's, what's the time situation? Awesome. Let's ask the viewers for the time situation. Rook a1 played. So, we, 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 we predicted every single move in this game so far. It's, it's amazing. Or at least mentioned before it was played. So rook takes a1, rook takes a1. I, I wouldn't have predicted this, but uh, Karyakin uh, definitely. Yeah, and king g2, of course. Well. Okay, let's promote the line. Yes. But the, the viewers don't yeah. see the notation anyway, so just so you know. Ah, okay, okay. So uh, rook takes a1, king g2, and um, yeah, I. It feels like uh, Karyakin is achieving what he wants, like securing his position in a way, uh, while avoiding, uh, like, he simplifies the position but preserves some form of advantage rather than forcing the draw. And I gotta give it to him, he's really brave for not taking a forced draw when having one in his hands. And... Uh, I, I, I wouldn't have guessed that he will be so uh, confident in his skills judging by the first uh, six rounds of the event. And uh, yes, he's, he, 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 I mean, I, I don't know if, if his moves are correct, but I'm very impressed by, by, by the fact that he wishes to continue the game and the fact that he chooses these moves that preserve long-term pressure in the position. Carlsen still has... Uh, do, we have, do we have an update on the time situation? Uh, I don't see an update, but uh, maybe someone will mention it. Uh, Carlsen has six minutes left, someone is saying. So he's in severe oh, time pressure. Okay, he has two moves, but it's incredibly complicated to find the best moves in such positions where so much... Yes, it's so unbalanced right now. Like, white is a pawn up and has the pair of bishops. He has to be precise to find some active ideas. If white consolidates, rook he will be worse. Maybe, maybe rook a8. I mean, maybe rook, rook a7. Rook a7. Okay, let's say... Now yeah, white... I'm just trying to get the back right. Yeah, white doesn't have any huge threats. But maybe I'll, I'll bring the rook back to the game now. Rook e4. And... Um, or bishop. Bishop g5, what's the idea? Prepare queen e4? Ah, oh, with the same yeah, queen g6. You you have the same dream. <laughs> I I can smell your I can smell your ideas from a mile away. Queen g6. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> I got some chest juice flowing in my veins. <laughs> okay. Enough mocking to my awesome friend here. Uh so Rook a7, bishop g5, <laughs> preparing queen e4. Well, well, keep, laugh, keep laughing, keep laughing, but I think black is lost. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna cry probably if he loses this bishop one as well. Bishop, bishop d, bishop d8. Yeah, bishop d8. Um, well, now you. This puts an end to your bishop f6 dreams. 
<laughs> well, this is already move 40 also, bishop d8. Ah, so, oh no, it's not. One more to go. But, no, but instead of bishop g5, if I consolidate okay. rook e4. Yeah. Yeah, when is definitely better. Yes, but not, not by much, but it seems like it's slowly increasing because it, it seems a little bit more... Uh, the pressure seems a little bit higher than it was when, uh, let's say, around move uh, 28, where we had this position. Seems like black had more activity going. And now black is almost completely neutralized. All these pieces are, uh, are uh, let's say, in, in, the, in his own camp, in the, these four lines. And uh, white slowly improves his pieces. Now queen, queen b3 is an idea maybe later. Bishop g5 now. h4, h5 is, a, is a, one of the typical ideas in this structure. After When there is a pawn on g6. And it's, it's especially strong with the two bishops. If we can either open up the position or go h6 later. So I feel like after after Carson makes his move. And he's still thinking. Wow, he has less than three minutes I think. Wow. It's so dramatic. Is there is there increment? Wow. An increment? Um thirty seconds I think. Is there? Yeah. Thirty seconds, oh, okay, so there is increment. But I don't think Carlson will win. Rook where? A seven. By the way, why not rook A eight? Because of Queen E four? And you want to have knight to f6. Yes. What? I'm not, I mean, rook a7, you want to have knight f6. Or or any knight move for that matter. Oh, uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So the rook is hanging. So you predict rook a7. I also predicted 27 minutes versus 1. 1 minute and 10 seconds. Wow. Yeah, back, uh, wow. And we have a move, 97 on the board. Okay, 97 on the board. 97? Yes. So. What? Oh, this looks that off. What do you think? Yeah, I guess he's trying to play knight of, knight of five. This is the idea. So. Wow, that's that's fairly interesting. <laughs> wow, what a position! What a position! Whew. so hot. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, one minute and play? fifty seconds for Carlsen for the last move. Wow, Bishop of seven. And Not now. But it, it must work because otherwise uh, you're forcing black to play easy moves. Okay, so if, if I, after king g7 you want bishop h6 and queen f7? Look at this, yeah? yeah exactly. Looks winning, yeah. So I have to be careful. If knight d5 there's rook h7. So, oh my goodness. This, queen d5. What? Queen, queen d5. Oh, queen d5, queen c7. Exactly. Yeah, it, I can probably start with rook h7. I, I didn't even see this. Wow. Yeah, it's, no, king g8. Ah, oh, king g8. But still, I mean, queen c7, it yeah, looks, play, it looks play, amazing. Yeah, it's still winning, it's still winning. Yeah, but I mean, but, 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 bishop yeah, f7, seven. wow, Daniel, you're so uh, sharp. <laughs> what can black do now? I, I Chips and hummus. Oh, I envy you. The food. Chips and hummus. Rook h7. Rook h7. Uh, this is just over. This is just over. I mean, queen f7. Wow. Bishop f7. And you. It took you like two seconds to spot this idea with queen c4 check. I mean, Karyakin has 27 minutes. Yes, let me ask you uh, a human question. What happens if I go queen b3? 
Okay, of course bishop f7 is a human move, but let's call it an amateur question. I have bishop f7. I have bishop f7. Have bishop. Yeah, bishop h6, yeah? Rook h7, knight g... Yeah, this is amazing, but... Um, Everything is just is working to Karyakin. What are you doing now? But, oh my god. But I can play... King... Knight of... King g7. Oh, man. King g7, bishop e6. But you're in a hurry. Even... No, no, no. I ah, knight h4 is checked. Sorry, sorry. Uh, but what can I do? But, but I can rook h3. I mean, rook h3. Oh. What's the problem here? It's no problem. <laughs> wow, rook h3. Queen f7. <laughs> yes, that's lovely. Queen f7, but queen f7, rook h7, and knight e4, bishop c3. Uh, remember, I'm two pawns up here, so it's completely winning. Oh my there, god. There aren't even any threats. Bishop b6 is kind of... Oh my god, three. queen b3 or bishop f7? I mean, which yeah, one? This is we are witnessing. I think, but queen b3, knight c6, I think bishop f7 is stronger. And if I take, I mean, isn't it just lost? Take where? What well, seven? Ah, uh, here. No, but but my we have seven and then takes and play when I takes d four and grovel. Are you sure? Where do you go with the king? Uh, I see your point. Bishop c three is coming. Yeah, exactly. King e six. Okay. Um. Let's say I go rook c seven. And now and now I have rook g seven. And if king f6, then bishop c3. Wow. Yeah, very nice stuff. Um, king f5, though. Still, I think, bishop c3. Oh, no, it's still bishop c3. And I have... Yeah, I have... Uh, rook a4 and pr probably rook f7 so check, followed by rook f4. Wow. Oh, wow, yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just lost. So, oh. this is lost. Uh, if I can't defend the pawn, then I'm completely lost. But well, I so, he even has a choice. Oh my god, bishop f7 or queen b3. Yeah. Kar poor Karyakin, he has to decide which one is stronger. Well, okay, I predict, I predict bishop f7 and you, I guess you predict queen b3. Well, I, I like queen b3 and I would have missed bishop f7. I mean, queen b3 is a very easy move to spot, while he, he might miss bishop f7. Okay, let, let's analyze this a bit more. Oh my god, I see. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, there's, some, there's something amazing. Wait, wait a second. Yes? Here, my idea was to play uh, king g7, bishop h6, king f6. Uh huh. And now there's no more rook h7. Okay, but it's still probably completely winning. But yeah, but you gave up easy. a piece. I mean, you don't want to risk the championship like this. I mean, if you see queen b3... Okay, you're not the no, but I mean, if you see queen b3... But I saw something nice. Ah, for later, you mean. After king f6. Yeah. Okay, what is it? No, no. Not, not after king f6, but rook h7 here. Uh-huh. Oh, it, and what? what's the follow-up? Rook bishop g5? Here? Suddenly, My idea was bishop, a, bishop h6, but it's, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So queen f7 check, king h8, yeah, king bishop g5, and there's, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Rook e6. Rook e6. Bishop e7. <laughs> okay, of course it doesn't. But uh, no, no, queen f. Queen f I calculated it. Yeah, and if, if bishop h6, what what's happened? Queen d4. Queen, ah, queen d4. Okay, so so probably queen b3 is safer. Queen b3 looks safer to me. Yeah. Wow. I, will, I still hope he goes to bishop f7 because I saw it. But... Okay, don't get attached to your own moves. This is uh, AOA. Uh, common, common sin. Yeah, the ABC of of, of common sense in chess. As if you're a chess juice member, you have to know it. What? Like, I know. how they but say? In the moment. They say like, when you want to say something is basic, you say 101. Like chess players 101? Yeah, yeah, 101. One. So. Yeah. Sorry for. Connecting my phone to. 
battery. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, we we are only interested in the position. I don't think anyone looked at our cameras for yeah, for like for like half an hour or so. Yeah, but the position is too. Yeah. Yes. Well, wow, bishop takes f7. Bishop takes f7 might be stronger if it's like mating or something, but queen b3 is so easy. Bishop. No, 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 but, but it's so pure. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Queen f5. Queen f5, and if I take. All the same. Where? But you're not winning anything. I'm not winning anything. Are you sure? Yeah, you're sure. King e6. Queen f7. Yeah, no, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. So, queen f5, you're right, you're right. Let's see. Is there anything here that we can come up with? Um, yeah, there must be. Yeah, there must be something. Um, rook e4? Yeah, but I don't know. Okay, but what do you do? I'm thinking of... Yeah, I'm thinking. It's not easy to I make was, a move. I was, I saw because I'm, if knight moves, then I have bishop f7, and rook e8, and bishop h6. And, uh, yeah, but I don't go. I go, um, I go bishop d6. Yeah, that's probably more logical. And uh, if I go bishop b4, or queen b6, which one? No, bishop b4 allows some checks. Queen b6, queen b6. what do you do? Queen. Wow, that's very interesting. Wow. It's insane how dominating white's position is. And usually black has the initiative. I mean, queen f6 looks like the only the only attempt, but I even have like bishop h6, yeah? Yeah. Rook f4, queen d8, so many threats. Wait a minute. Rook f4, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yes, there's no bishop f4 because of queen f6. So, ah, you say knight f5. But knight f5, yeah. Ah, I got over it's fine. I mean, anything's winning. Here? Oh, I see. Bishop f7 there. And, and why is it winning? Not here, but this position may be bishop f7. Oh, followed by rook here. f4. Wow! <laughs> ah, no, but no, 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 no but. No, no, no. Ah, queen b3, sorry, sorry. Rook f4, bishop f4, the queen is protected. But queen b3, the, it's it's even more impressive. Now, king e8 is only move. And queen g8, wow. This is, so many interesting tactics are taking place. So, we start from, this is the position in the game. Um, with white to move. Carlsen just played knight to e7, which probably is a mistake. Uh, and uh, the lesson here, yeah, by the way, is do not move not backwards. It's definitely a mistake. Yeah, I mean, if if uh, probably even uh, moving, as Daniel said, if you move backwards, at least leave the active knight in on d5. Don't open up the bishop. Rook a7, just like Daniel offered, looks much yeah, more logical. And also protecting the bishop yeah, from all all this. So protecting the bishop indirectly from all these uh, tricks involving rook h7. So you see in these variations, rook h7 does not take the bishop. So back to the game. In the game we played knight e7. Now we are analyzing queen b3, which looks very tempting, threatening bishop f7. If knight moves to any square, I can take on f7 simply. And uh, at the end, rook h7, rook c7. So n we are analyzing queen f5, but then rook e4. And uh, seems like Black is very close to lost. It do we don't even see a move for him. Yeah. It's uh, just yep. very, very powerful play by Karyakin so far. I don't know. And it's Kassen... incredible. I mean, if he wins, if he goes ahead to zero, then that'll be insane. No, it's just game over for Magnus. I mean, almost. Three yeah, games it's to over. go. It's not, not, not even like it's not even like it's one or two. Like, it's, it's white is a pawn off and he's got a Russian attack. Yeah, but after rook e4, let's so focus on finding a defense. Literally... We have to search for a defense somehow. Queen h5, okay. Queen, queen h5 maybe. Yes, queen h5. And now, after queen h5, bishop f7. You want to mate me on h2. King where? Yeah, but I won't do it. It fades. King, sorry, king f8. Uh, uh, rook e4, no. Rook e4, queen h5. King f8. 
I don't know why, but the position is going crazy. Rook e4, you said queen h5, bishop f7, king f8. Let me do the moves. Yeah. Uh, so now... Yeah. Uh, I don't know. What can I offer for... Uh, bishop f4 also, yeah? Rook e5. Ah, but then queen g5 at the end. Or rook e no, rook no, rook, I think rook e5 is just completely dominating. Ah, this is lovely, with bishop h6 mate. Hmm. Yeah, but let's not get too fancy. Maybe bishop bishop yeah, before seems easy. seems good enough, yeah. By the way, by the way, if I just go, I just go h4. What do you even do? Yeah, you had only one threat in the position. What? Yeah, one threat and it's gone. Yeah. It's over. yeah, exactly. You know, you don't need to be fancy. Yeah, the, the first thing we should ask yourself if you're disciplined in any position is what is the threat by the opponent. And uh, of course, if we can just prevent it yeah. simply, it's much easier than to attack. Uh, so, um, so here we, we can't seem to find a single idea for, for black. And Karakin is in deep thought. Black and is. Wow. We have almost 1700 viewers, it's amazing. Yes, it's dominating. Yes. Wow, that's awesome. I'm so happy to hear that. Yes. I hope we're giving you, uh, <laughs> you know, your time's worth. Hopefully, and yours. Not your money's worth, because... Yeah, obviously. Yeah, no, I'm... So, what can I say, even? Uh, historic moment, potentially, in chess, so... Well, I, I don't even know what to suggest it's for, for Sergei. Maybe, like, how, how can he even uh, continue the game after queen b3? And maybe after bishop f7 it's also winning, I mean, I'm not even sure. Hmm. I mean, he, I'm sure he's calculating bishop f7. Wow. I'm sure he's calculating bishop f7, but... Yes. By the way, I want to play a little game but, uh, with the viewers. Uh, just mention one thing. Uh, Anyone who thinks is the highest rated viewer out of the 1700, please mention your rating. I just want to see if, if there is anyone oh, with a very high rating. And anyone who... No, that, that's, let's start with this one. Anyone who thinks he is the highest rated. It's funny because it might be some 2400 guy, but he will not even think so, yeah? Or 2200. So, we'll see. So, back to the game. Yeah. Queen b3. Bishop f7 check is the threat. Maybe knight f5. Also, time update would be great. Time update would be great on how much time Kraken has. Well, he had 27 minutes, so you, you can probably take his time now. He, has, he, yeah, probably he needs to find only two more moves, and it's quite forcing. He's probably yeah. deciding between queen b3 and bishop f7. So, and now king g7, maybe. Just trying to keep the game going. Yeah. Okay. What can you do? Uh, We actually rook analyzed H3. it before, yeah, rook h3. I said bishop e6, blundering knight h4 check. So rook h3. And now? Yeah, we analyzed it before. It's winning. We it came to the conclusion that this is winning. By the way, this is the position in the game after knight e7, as you can see. And we are analyzing it. And rook h3, we came to the conclusion that it's winning, right? Yeah. So, yes. I don't see anyone mentioning their... Uh, Rating, uh, rating above 2200. Mm. Uh, I'm trying to call up the comments on my phone, but I'm not having no success. Some well, some people are saying uh, numbers, but they won't reveal their names. So I, I don't believe the, the one who says he's above 9000. <laughs> Without a name, we won't buy it. Yeah. Why, 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 why won't you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's just. I mean, uh, I'm a, I yeah, find it hard to trust other other people. Yeah. Thousands. I need to know someone before I trust them. Wow, but this this is just ridiculous. Wow. So what can Black even do in this position? I want to take on d4, but there's Bishop h6. Yeah, nothing, nothing. Also Bishop c3. Bishop c3. Yes. 
Hmm. Well, but what is white threatening? Okay, what is white threatening if it's his move? Really funny line. Just one moment. What is white threatening? Really line. It's d5. Bishop, bishop c3 or bishop e6. In which position? In this position. d5, but it's black to move. Yeah, but you're asking what's white threatening. Ah, white is threatening d5, you say. With bishop c3. Wow. Yeah, he is. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I, I'll i buy it. Or bishop e6, or bishop Okay, here's my idea. Um, okay, d5, and as a response, I would like to play maybe bishop e5, and then what do you do? Bishop e6. Okay, bishop, yeah, you can resign there, because I'm two pawns, I'm two pawns up in addition to having a crashing attack. Yeah, I want to find... Okay, how about I go with my queen somewhere, threatening knight h4 check. Maybe to d8. Queen knight h4 check is my idea. Yeah, got it, got it. Okay, so... Give me a moment to think. Wow, this is interesting. And this actually started from queen b3, not from the bishop f7 risky line, so... Maybe both lines are yeah. risky. What can I say? Okay, so let's think here. Yeah, thinking is a uh, is a nice uh, policy. Can't, can't go wrong with thinking. Maybe c three. Let's play queen c three. Okay, but don't I have knight h four anyway? Take. And I have queen h one at the end. Ah, but you take on c seven. You take on c seven if queen h four. Yeah, ah. Nice idea. So, instead of knight h4, hmm, what do I have even? I don't even see a move. Okay, if I move this guy. Yeah. So you want to go d5 check next, maybe. d5. Yeah, and made, made you. Okay. Yeah. So let's say I put my queen on e7 and put the rook somewhere. So I have bishop e5 as a response. Oh, actually I have rook a3 maybe in this version. Okay, so so queen e7, not queen d8, queen e7. Yeah, queen e7, yeah. Okay, okay. now it's different though. Because now I can go bishop, I don't know, knight h4. Wow, th this is quite complicated suddenly. I mean, of course white should be winning somehow, but I don't see... Yes. Anything direct, and th this is a defense you'll expect from Karyakin with black, yeah? So... Or Magnus, when he's on better days. Yeah. Can I still go d5? Um, what's the idea if I go knight h4? Ah, uh, bishop e5, let's say I go bishop e5. Takes. But through... Uh-huh. Ah, bishop. Yeah, queen g5, and suddenly black is winning. Black is winning, yeah. Or very close to okay, it. Okay, so in that case, yeah, so maybe it's not so clear. So queen b3 is not as easy as bishop f7, perhaps. Oh, by the way, um, uh, but, oh, but now we didn't see a follow-up. We, we didn't yeah, find it. we a... didn't think properly about it. Yeah, but... Yeah, we found some resources for black against queen b3, but here we also found this defensive idea, and uh, I mean Daniel found it, and, yeah. and I'm not sure how to how to proceed here with white. Maybe think, maybe d5. I think it should be easily winning. Yeah, maybe d5. Actually, I could probably I go d5 here with bishop c3 in mind. Yeah, to keep your up. Oh, after bishop e5, you can still go bishop c3. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, this is very nice. So d5, what do you even it's do? Very, very, very nice. Yes, it's knight d5. Ah, but bishop c3, sorry. Bishop c3 pre-move, as uh, your bullet skills might suggest. It's just over. Wow. It's just crushing. So your move seems, okay, seems more three. convincing. Your move is more convincing right now. D5 yeah, and bishop c3. Wow. Trump is winning the until my question, yeah. 
By the way, the amount of viewers we have is 1666. So that means that Kar having this amount of viewers means that Karyakin must win. There's a word. We're yeah. obviously the best annotator team. There's, it's not even a question. Yeah, but I mean, what what is going on? I mean, what is is he going to play Bishop F7? What what is he even going to do? He's gonna play Bishop F7. It's my prediction. He, but I mean, even when he was 12 years old, Ponomaryov called him the coach of tactics. He probably spotted it he, like he sees it. He probably he spotted it immediately. I, I, I like I'm imagining Karyakin like uh, when when like he was born like he couldn't formulate words but he already anticipated this combination here of bishop takes f7 that's how good he is in tactics yeah yeah and he thought like queen c4 and he saw the d5 bishop c3 idea he probably saw it so so much in advance and he, he just can't believe his eyes and he's just verifying again and again and again Someone is saying that the Karyakin something. I'm not sure if it's his amount of minutes or the evaluation, so I, I don't want to address that message. But uh, you know, if you are not sure between the amount of minutes and the evaluation, it means something went wrong for Magnus. Um, something went wrong, yeah. So. so can somebody say how many minutes Karyakin has? Wow. I, I mean, of course I can check. I can check on my computer without looking at the answer, but but I'm afraid of. I don't want to call off any. No, no, no. Because, and I don't want to to ask I to. to, to I mind. mean, in case uh, we might get in trouble, which is very unlikely. I don't want you to be liable for having the amount of the time on the clock. I want yes. to to trust our dear viewers. I don't want to check ourselves, even if it's legal, just to be safe. Yeah, of course. So. Um, Carlsen minute and 50 seconds They say Karyakin 2 minutes Oh he's already thinking for ten, for more than 20 minutes Okay Yeah we discussed so many lines Wow 25 oh, minutes gonna, already He's gonna play Bishop F7 He must Yes he must, he must find it I mean, there's no other way. Wow if he finds Queen B3 And Carlsen instantly play Knight F5 And King G7 Well Unfortunately for Carlsen, then Karyakin will make it to move number 40 and have time to think and maybe spot rook h3 and so on, but still it's very complicated after queen e7, even with 50 minutes. We'll they, it, will take on by, by the way, for those who don't know the time control, they have. it doesn't matter how much time they had, let's talk about the present. Right now 2 minutes each with 30 seconds increment per move, and uh, until the end of the game I think, and... Uh, in two moves, when when uh, Karyakin will play move number 40, he will have 50, 5 more uh, minutes to his clock. So he will have 52 minutes. And then uh, Carlsen will make his move and then he will get another 50 minutes. So right now this is the most critical moment of the game. Karyakin must make a move. One minute left. He has to decide between Queen B3 and Bishop F7. Please make a move. He's about, He's about to, to make, make a move. Like any second now. Don't. Any and he made a move. And he made a move. Which move is it? Bishop takes f7 Bishop on the board. Wow. I wish I had known the Russian uh, anthem by now. I would have sang the Russian anthem. You probably know it, but I wouldn't risk you. Your yes. help. I wouldn't, uh, no, how do you say it in English? I wouldn't jeopardize your, your, uh, your, uh, yes, let's call it your safety. We played it, but we, we saw it. We, 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 for the record, we saw it immediately. And Queen C4 check on the board. And Carlsen is thinking. And after King oh G7, D5, and it's over, according to our understanding. Wow. He's Wow. And uh, now that uh, Karyakin has got more time and we have 1830 viewers and probably after the time control it's going to decrease, I'll mention that 
subscribing to the channel doesn't cost any money and you can even abort the notifications but i would recommend not aborting it and uh, and seeing when we have another uh another spontaneous stream so if you like what we're doing here we don't ask for anything in return but subscribing will support us and encourage us to 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 create more videos and by us i mean myself and also daniel as part of our chess juice team on the twitch channel and the link is uh, posted below as far as i remember down very down below so actually in the description Yes, actually I didn't update the, des the description and it mentions that your name is Evgeny Zanan But uh, at least uh, un un under your camera we can see your name so we don't have to work so hard So I'm actually updating it now just uh, to be safe And that's absolutely fantastic play by Karyakin I I cl he made me clap for him twice in the game and I'm rooting for Carlsen and I, it makes me excited about him finding moves which which bring defeat to the world champion okay let, let's just let's not celebrate just yet of course what, is he, what did he do? what did Carlsen what did Carlsen do? Mm -hmm. I don't know I don't know but uh, he's going up like he said yes So let's see. Let's not celebrate just yet. Do you know that there is a, there is a saying about not yeah. celebrating until until it's over? But I I don't know how to say it in English. I don't I only know it in Hebrew. Do you have any idea how to yeah, say it? What? Nah. In Hebrew, it's so much more uh, artistic the way they say it. But uh, okay, I'm I'm going to Google it. I'm going to. I mean, I'm so satisfied for the game that I'm going to Google it. Wait, wait. But Carlson, Carlson must have played by now. Oh yeah, sorry. He played King G7, D5 on the board. He didn't even use the 50 minutes. He played it instantly. Wow. Wow. Karyakin is so confident, he's amazing. This, I mean, after this game, I mean, if there was any doubt, I had some doubts, but if there was any doubt he deserves the, the championship after this game. No, but still, still, I just mentioned that if there was any doubt after the previous game, I'll, I'll quote once again what Sutovsky said on Facebook. It's... Uh, it's difficult to love Sergei's play sometimes, but impossible not to respect. And actually, in this particular game, it's not difficult to love what he's doing. Uh, this game and how Sergei plays is one of the very reasons I fell in love with chess in the in the beginning, in the first place. So, Bishop C3 check. What do you do? And um, yeah, it looks it looks really bad. If I just grab... Yeah, probably should, but I take and take. Okay. Queen h4. Sorry, take d5. Queen d5. Okay, queen d5. And now... Okay, if I go queen h6, you go king e8. Queen f6 you have here. Yeah. Wow, but this... Okay, let, let's be precise. Let's be precise. Knight f5. Okay, time to think again. Uh, we were sinning by celebrating a little bit ahead of time. Yeah? And uh, we have almost 2,000 yeah. viewers. It's amazing. And uh, okay. so we, after knight f5, now in this position, uh, what can I say? White should find a move to somehow end it. But... Yeah, there is no follow-up unless I take the rook somehow. Okay, bishop c3 makes perfect sense. King f8 and now I should find some critical move. Or you should find. Um, yeah. 
Okay, so I can't really give a check. I, I have to enter this line, but now there must be something. There must be. What can it be? Okay, queen at queen f6, there is queen f7, unfortunately. Yeah. I really don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I'm trying to find a move. Oh man, this is this is the tense moment. I'm sure Sergei calculated all the way, but uh, what did he see? I'm sure he did. It made a five. I is it the someone uh, said the sentence in the chat? It's not over until the fat lady sings. Yeah, this is the one, right? There is one that that is like that. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's a very good idea to be humble even when you th we think we are winning or having a winning position and just try to focus as hard as we can. And we both kind of got overexcited and failed to calculate properly even though we had 25 minutes to do so. So now that we spotted knight f5 that Carlsen will probably play, let's try to anticipate Karyakin's, Karyakin's response. Okay. Is there any candidate moves? Bishop c3 looks... Yeah, I have one idea. Well, I also have an idea. Yeah, exactly. I was just... I spotted it in the same instant with queen d4, yeah? Yeah, but it's not that impressive. Even after queen d4, queen takes a1, I can play another 5. Yeah, yeah. No, but bishop c3 feels so right. I just want to... Yeah, it does. To play this move um okay if i go let's be precise all right can i just move my rook um move your rooks no, it doesn't sound logical mm. okay i want to find something here there must be Okay, if I go check and just take. There's not that many. Queen g5 is perpetual. Uh huh. Okay. There must be something. There must be. It doesn't make sense that there isn't anything here. Yeah, what do you think? I'm sure he. I'm sure he will play it first of all. Yeah. If he hasn't done already. Oh, I have an idea, but it doesn't work. Wow. Okay. We must find something here for White. Uh, let's just mention for the viewers the idea that we saw earlier: Bishop H6 check, and now Queen D4 or something like this. And then he just moves the king and moves knight yeah. f5 and it's not so obvious how to win. Even yeah, though white might be... White is probably better. White is probably better, but it's, it's also risky. He can lose if he's not uh, precise. So it's definitely not as convincing. L let's go for this again. What if I move my bishop? Let's say bishop c3. So yeah. I clearly have an idea of queen f6. King g8, queen f6. Yeah. Yeah. Aha, uh -huh. maybe this is it. Queen F7. Okay, but... Uh, hmm. Okay, Queen uh, D4. Actually, you know what? Queen B4 check. And now I start giving checks. Queen e4, you have queen e7. It's not so easy to attack. It's not so convincing. Yeah, but here there must be some idea. 
Okay, let, let's look at it again. You said here queen f7. And now, yeah. by the way, for the viewers who are wondering, this is the position on the board after d5. We're analyzing knight f5. So, bishop b4 check. King g, g8. Can go, to, can go to g8. It doesn't look convincing. I don't see anything. Yeah, maybe. Although, I doubt it. Sure. Yeah, I doubt it also. Bishop a1, knight h4, queen h4. Well, <laughs> I suddenly think maybe queen b3 was stronger. Yeah. Maybe he should have given a check first and then played d5 like we thought originally. Where? I mean, ah, I mean check and d5. d5. Yeah, maybe. Wow, but playing playing bishop h6 committing to this variation then, with one minute on the clock. But 9 and 5. But yeah. 9 and 5 and maybe yeah. Maybe white is, is, is worse. Maybe he's losing. So anyway, yeah, so anyway, uh, yeah. Here, this is the critical line. It's probably gonna be played in the game. We have to find something. Remember, it's not about the viewers. As I probably mentioned many times before, for the new ones who are visiting us, uh, we are here to improve our own chess first and foremost. And uh, maybe it's interesting for some people to watch. We really want to find the best line for our own sake to improve our thinking process and our skills. So, Bishop A1. Knight h4, if we could find something here that puts pressure on black, then it might be very good for white. I mean, imagine yourself playing playing over the board. And you are it's not like you have to, a choice. This is the position you have like 30 minutes to think on this one move. How do you put maximum pressure? Don't You don't have to answer immediately. I just want to... To get prepare you to the mindset of how to how to approach it, I it feels like white should have something, have an idea. a move, and we we have a move in the game, uh, and the position actually arose. So this is actually this particular position is on the board. So let's just show the viewers. This position is on the board. Knight f5 and Karyakin played. All of these moves. And this is the position on the board. Wow. So let's see what he's got. <laughs> yeah. It's really hard to say. It's really, really hard to say. Wow. I mean, either he sees something or he doesn't. So. Yes. Wow, this is insane. This is insane. I don't know what to suggest even. Um, okay, let's give a check. According to my rule, you know, yes, Patser, in Hebrew he says it, I'm not sure if it, ex uh, if it exists in English. Patser, Patser sees... Patser gives a check, yeah. Patser does. gives a check, this is how they say it? Yeah? Uh, Patser sees a check, Patser gives a check. Exactly. Patser sees a check, Patser gives a check. Now queen h8. What are you doing? King e7. King e7. I was expecting queen g8 actually. Queen g8. I wanted queen c3. Just king e7. okay. King e7. And let's say just now a quiet yeah, move, like bishop somewhere. Let's say c3. Just wanna yeah, give you nice. some checks. Your king is in the center. I don't know how to improve my position but I mean there must be a way okay let's say I give another check and uh, now just some random move h4 and let's say I'm slowly wanting to somehow create a passed pawn 
I mean, I, I, of course it's better, but it's not. Yeah, black is black is relatively solid it's compared to <laughs> to earlier. Maybe bishop bishop takes f7 might not have been the most precise, but uh, still. Yeah. Yeah. It was too tempting. But... Yes. Wow, this this position is very exciting. Well, we we literally wow. predicted every single move in the game except maybe rook takes a1 which we didn't even uh, dare to guess we did i didn't have you with me so probably that's the reason so yeah no, no, but I, I have to go soon unfortunately so you'll, you'll, you'll probably the end of the end of the game you'll, you'll have to carry on on your own the end of the game come on we have like two hours uh, of torture to witness you you're gonna have to disappoint 2100 we all, like if you combine the amount of viewers that we have here and that we're gonna have soon it's gonna be probably a grandmaster amount yeah. i i think by now i i actually I have to go when I go. yeah yeah that's true that's true and every second that you're here is uh very highly re appreciated let's say Respected, like Karyakin's play. So, um, by the way, move a little bit to the left. Yes. So, um, this position, this is on the board. So, Queen F6 check looks like an option. Um, I think he missed it. I think he just missed Queen H7, Queen G5. Yeah, this is kind of uh, annoying for White. <laughs> Seems like he chose the like the best move according to our analysis, and then we failed him. It's like it's like every move we suggested, Karyakin just followed us blindly, and we had to do a better job in order for him to have a more convincing advantage. So let's just go back one moment because they're gonna think for a long time now. Uh, not too long, but just stop and think uh, about how to proceed here. So this was the critical moment after knight e7. Queen b3 is the line we are not sure about because of knight f5 king and uh, bishop f7, king g7. And now after rook h3, queen e7, and we couldn't, uh, we couldn't decide whether or not... Uh, what? Yeah, we didn't know what to recommend for white. Yeah, yeah, we can decide whether or not... Whether or not white is winning. Yeah. Okay, but this is very complicated already. The fact that black can complicate matters is uh, very risky for Sergei. And, uh, I mean, there is a chance of losing here with white, yeah? Definitely. So, probably he chose the, most, the more practical... Uh, uh, move, but I mean, now what else can can you play? Do you have any idea? In this position? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't played, so. Yeah, but I mean. Okay, I have an idea. I have a move. Um, how about this one? I want to go here, and if knight h4, I take, and queen f7. And maybe something like bishop. Uh, but your threatening mate. Um, can I maybe take on c7? Is it. Uh, it looks good, yeah? Maybe I think g8. It should be more promising, I think, than the game. Queen c4. Sorry, queen c4. And then d5 next. Ah, oh, sorry. Yeah, this is good. Not, not immediately. Yeah, where do you go with the king? Yeah, it looks like a big advantage. Oh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's winning. Yeah, very likely. And, um, I mean, probably it's more or less forced, yeah? Queen c7 and here finding some move for white. But yeah. even without any specific move, just a random bishop f4 is just crashing, yeah? And d5 will, yeah, d5. The, move, the pawn will move forward. And there's nothing probably black can do against the king. So maybe bishop g8 is actually kind of okay. 
Can, if you go h5, probably this was a better choice. But this rook is funny. I don't know. What can white do? Yeah. Bishop b4. Queen e6. Yeah, queen e6 is just uh, safe. But I mean, takes a knight d4. Ah, knight, bishop c3. Yeah. Okay, queen e6 is a good move. So probably this was even more winning. Bishop g8 or probably there is a, a stronger move somewhere around here. So he had to go for the complications and, and trust. I mean, and, and feel. And after trust feeling. Yourself. Yeah, feel that there is something more. And then trust his intuition that after the time control on move 40, you will find something after queen e7. Yeah, bishop f7 was a little bit too dry of a chance. Even though we uh, preferred it a moment ago, but uh, part of being uh, mature is uh, accepting our mistakes and thinking that we can change our mind. Unfortunately, Karyakin cannot take back his move. If Carlsen survives this game, yeah, it will be very interesting for the match and also for uh, the stream, that the special stream that we'll have on round 11 on Saturday with Boris Gelfand as our guest. So, um, yeah, who needs no introduction, of course. By the way, Daniel, you, you had uh, the fortune to meet Boris in uh, the Politiken Cup, right? Yeah, I, I met him in Politiken and I played Blitz with him and he crushed me. Wow, He's but, really but, but you are a monster. You're a monster in Blitz. So how, how did he crush you? Like, is he... So he is He's like a god. You're a monster and he's a god. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yes. This is nice. Um, yeah, so he is a really interesting character. Yes, and are the rumors and true? Be amazing to have him. Are the rumors true that he is uh, very humble and uh, genuine? He's extremely humble. He's the most humble person I've ever met in my entire life. Wow. And I don't know how um, I am. <laughs> but I'm, he is even more humble. I'm so excited to... like, does not ever... Yeah. I, I'm not He's sure just, if... He's yeah. just an interesting person to speak to. You, you don't feel intimidated. Yeah. Move a little bit to the right. Uh, so... Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that for people from, from outside of Israel, maybe it sounds, I mean, uh, exciting, but, you know, not out of the ordinary. But uh, for Israelis, I'm sure it's extremely exciting uh, to know that Boris will, Gelfand will be here on the, on the, on the stream. And um, for me personally, it's the first time I'm probably going to meet him. Uh, I mean, actually converse with him. Yeah. And... Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm very excited uh, towards it. And I feel like, uh, it, I mean that people are used to seeing Svidler and uh, other strong players, probably Nipomnishi on other uh, streams. But remember that this is a very small channel of a very small chess player who just wants to, to have fun and, and spread the love for chess. So yeah, it's such an amazing, uh, amazing uh, honor that he agreed i i didn't i i didn't even yeah. dare asking him to 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 come on my own because i i thought it was too rude to ask and uh, my i mean our, our club uh, rishon let's see on chess club asked on my behalf and they, for for some reason this uh, person this uh, chess god agreed so back to the the position after queen takes d5 yeah, so i think uh... Mm -hmm. Yes, so we have uh, we have eighteen hundred viewers right now. Do you have any words that you want to say to them before you start your departure? Well, yeah, first of all, thank you for being, being here. But it's it's I think it, I'm glad that I joined for this game for selfish reasons. It was well, it, it's still going on, but uh, it's been an amazing game. I think so. I'm looking forward to actually. Checking with the engine at some point after mm -hmm. having completely analyzed it on my own, I think it's forgivable to verify the analysis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I I would stay forever, but I have 
too much work, so I need to, unfortunately, I need to take care of my own business as well. Yes. Uh, and I'm giving a chess lesson soon, so. You're giving a chess lesson? <laughs> wow. You, you probably can, can, can find a thousand students right now if you just offer, but you, <laughs> you can't, you, you probably can't, uh, Find the time for this one student. You probably sacrifice your grades for it. I'm not for sale. Yeah, I'm not. You're not yeah, for sale. So, some point in the future. Yes, you know that I, I, I want I want to to share a joke with you that I heard uh, today, uh, that was told by Louis C.K. and like uh, on one of the he was hosted in one of those shows, night shows, and. Uh, yeah, someone asked him something about Jews, or he said that he's a racist, a racist, and he said there's nothing to say about Jews other than that they're Jewy, and that uh, they uh, people say they love money. But I have I have a Jewish friend, and one time I, I told him here's a dollar, take a dollar, and he's like, Rah! and he didn't want to take the dollar, so. Ah! <laughs> Yes, so uh, the way he was telling it was much much better. But yeah, the yeah I can guess. So Daniel, what I meant to say by this joke is that Daniel is not for sale, uh, but many of our other members on Chess Juice are. I'll just mention them quickly: International Master Asaf Givon, Ori Kobo, Alon Minlin, and probably some others that I didn't had the chance to ask. And. Uh, I'm for sale only for people above 2,500, <laughs> but uh, that's probably not something that I'm too proud of. And um, yeah, by the way, I didn't discover any, who was the highest rated. Uh, probably 2,200 was the highest uh, number that I believed among our viewers. And I'll just mention once again that subscribing to the channel is not necessary, but appreciated. And I'll ask you to bear with me for one uh, more moment. I'm searching for a replacement um, while we are here. So this way it will be smooth, you know? Your leaving us will be very smooth, although I, I would hate to force you to stay. So either way, you're, you're free to do as you wish. Um, yeah, Yeah. So I'll have to watch Chess it lesson. watch your stream while I yes. do my homework and give my lesson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> while you're doing homework and, and giving a lesson. Wow. By the way, uh, one more thing I'll mention uh, about Daniel. I probably mentioned it every time his name coming, is coming up, but he wrote his first chess book when he was 14. You already published it. And that's probably the most amazing fact about you, yeah? Other the fact than, than you're speaking Russian and Jewish that yeah. probably not many people know. But... Uh, yeah, it's kind of an odd stuff. Well, for, you wrote the book when you were 14 and um, yeah. you published it then, but when did you start writing it? You started writing the book when you were 12 yeah, and the bit. second book at when you were 17 about end games yeah 17 wow that's... yeah end games when i was about 17. wow that's that's uh, lovely and if anyone happens to come across it, your books you. uh feel free to buy it it's not uh for free but it's definitely yeah. it's, it's, it's awesome. but i will be i'll be very indebted so yes Yes. So one moment. Oh, oops. I actually pressed something on the screen. So I forgot I, I can't write people on Skype because then uh, they will see it. So uh, without further ado, I will focus on the position and I will thank you very, very much for joining me and for being a founding member of basically everything I'm doing uh, publicly and uh, taking a uh, Ah, uh, come on! Just, just graduate Stanford so you can sponsor our channels and uh, have us uh, keep us yeah, going. Exactly. Yeah, 
you're already a year and a half almost uh, into the school. Two and, a half year, two and a half years left and you can teach all our viewers, yeah? So thanks a lot once again. It's amazing to have you and uh, you found yeah, basically all the moves. Mm -hmm. So I hope to do it again, and to everyone watching, it's been great, and hopefully uh, you can join me on some stream, with or without Tal. Yes. Who really needs Tal? I mean, he's just some guy. I don't know, I don't know who listens to you, but hopefully I will see you on the stream soon enough. <laughs> yes, and... Uh... Okay, I'm bidding goodbye to everyone, and farewell. Farewell. Bye. Bye. So... As you can see, uh, this is the, the Skype page. It's not very... Uh, <laughs> it's not looking as good as Daniel uh, when he's with the camera. But I think I, I have a replacement. Just uh, taking a while to, for the people to, to respond. It's very late in Israel, so their mind is thinking quite slowly. At this point it's 1.30 a.m. But, uh, yeah, let, let's look at the position for a moment. I'm guessing that one of my friends from the Chess Juice team will take place. Uh, I'll mention the moves in the meantime. Queen takes d5 has been played. Uh, sorry, Queen f6 check has just been played in this position. And, um, yes. And now, after Queen 2 f6 Carlsen immediately played queen f7 and queen d4 on the board and uh, well I was thinking that maybe queen h8 check is more precise to lure the king to e7 because queen g8 queen c3 looks nice for white and uh, king e7 uh, yes and uh, king e7 is kind of annoying for black to have the king in the center and now bishop c3 and uh, trying to slowly push the king away, as you saw, to out and cut him off and then slowly try to create a passed pawn somehow by, by some maneuvers, maybe trading the bishops at some point and with the king cut off, it might make sense to have a, a passed pawn and try to win. I really hope Karyakin will try his best to win this game because uh, he really deserves it after playing so incredibly well. So let's see. Um, so I'm arranging the replacement for Daniel on our team right now. King e8 on the board, on the board, and uh, well, the position is much less exciting, I have to admit, than it was a few moments ago. But end games for for the more serious among us who really want to improve are a very crucial part of chess. And uh, such an end game is uh, not not too obvious. Of course, white is better. He has a pawn up, but it's a double pawn. And in order to to convert, he must keep the queens on the board. Trading the bishops or not is a question. Probably for now it's better to, to keep the bishops on the board because black's king is more exposed. But he, his only plan involves somehow creating a passed pawn, trying to exchange this pawn for the g6 pawn or sacrificing the h pawn in order to, to push the f1 as quickly as possible. So... Um, let's see. Um, um, in this position, after king e8, I don't have a specific move, but uh, it's a good idea to just move the bishop forward to, to have it on a more active square. And then, uh, I don't know, give some checks, lure the king, as I said, to the c-file or farther. Mm. And um, it should be better for for white. Queen e4 has been played. Queen e7. I really, really hope Karyakin will maintain his ambitions and not uh, give up on uh, on his uh, 
advantage because it might be his last chance to be better in the match and uh, even though he's leading by one point playing three games against Carlsen while leading with all the psychological pressure is far from easy so and let's see uh, he pro for sure exchanging the queens is something that uh, Carlsen wouldn't like to do and um, what can I say I think I found my replacement and I'll just mention before he calls that I'll introduce the, another founding member of Chess Juice, our Twitch channel and uh, a chess coach himself uh, for levels between 1400 to 2400 so most of you will probably fit if you want to improve your chess and uh, I'm waiting for him to to call me I think he's calling as we speak so let's see okay so uh, Hey Asaf, so people can see you, uh, I need to change the name actually below the camera, but I can't hear anything for some reason, so let's see, mm. so Asaf has joined me the, the analysis on the leeches board so he can make moves, and right now for some reason his microphone is still not working, but uh, we are in the process of fixing it. And we are getting ready. Hello. Yes, you hear me? Yes, very well. So first of all, I uh, introduced you as an international master, founding member of Chess Juice and a chess coach between That's 1400 right. and 2400. Uh, is it correct? Yes. I just want to make sure. And uh, also, he just opened a YouTube channel of his own. And if you want to support show your support, feel free to subscribe. He, he actually uh, added some videos recently and don't be threatened by the fact that some of them are in Hebrew. It's just uh, for now, he's gonna upload some English related videos uh, that help people improve. And now back to the game. You see the leeches board? Uh, yes, I do, but I'm completely out. Like, I, I don't even know what is the current position, just so... So, you see the queen on e7? Yes, I do. So this is the position from the game, but this is our analysis board and you can make moves and the viewers will see the moves that you make. Just like as if I'm making them and you can make arrows by using the right click uh, on leeches. So mm -hmm. that's more or less, that's everything you need to know. You have a good mic. We just recently uh, uh, got you a mic. So yes, yes. yes, so the same one that I'm using and yeah, now let's focus on the position. So you can see that Carlsen is playing black. He was very close to losing earlier, but uh, that's all in the past. Now we want to find uh, good moves for Karyakin with white. And, and uh, before, since you didn't listen probably to everything I, I said about the plan, I want you to, to formulate your own thoughts. If you are white here, how would you try to improve your position and play for a win what would be your plan and take time to think don't you don't have to answer instantly yeah, that's that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a definitely a tough question mm -hmm. uh, by the way we are on move number 47 right yeah so this is after the time control yes and what is the time situation um the time situation is um right now something around 40 minutes to someone 50 minutes to someone else uh, i don't see the clock but i'm just guessing because they just reached the time control mm -hmm. let's have a quick look about uh, what we the viewers are usually providing me with the clock situation and there is a small delay so they'll tell us in a moment but they both have quite plenty of time so we have we have enough to to just uh, do our best, you know, Alekine yes. style, you know, 
But I remember the old days where Alekine was like analyzing his own games and he's like, I, I just want to give the example. Uh, so I, I'll go back a few moves. So I remember reading one of his annotations in an end game where he won and he's like writing down somewhere. So let's just for, for comparison, let's say this position. And he's like writing in this position. I already realized I'll have an end game of a queen and bishop versus queen and bishop with three against two. And I already formulated that I want to drag the king to the C file in order to create a pass pawn on the F file and bring my king to the center slowly while protecting from checks with the dark squared bishop. And then he describes like all everything that happened in the game until mate already in move number 20. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it's so obvious that, that he knew what happened in the game. He's just writing the annotations in retrospect. And he's, he's like, he was like hilarious to read. And he might have probably thought about most of these ideas, but back in the day, they would like love to brag. They would brag about seeing everything in advance. And like, I planned the two weaknesses and uh, all the tricks and forks. So you see the point. Uh, yes. Yeah, and by the way, it's funny. yeah, if Carlson wins, I'm gonna do a Trump imitation. That's for sure. If Carlson wins, yeah, and by this game, yes, um, if Carlson wins any game, at the end I will any do. It. Yes. Okay, but I think we've already heard your uh, Trump imitation. Well, most of the viewers didn't have the the luxury, the luxury but uh, yes. yeah, but Karyakin is thinking. Uh, so he's back to his natural state of mind. Uh, in this game, he wasn't thinking much and it worked very well in his favor. Where he was extremely confident. And now, obviously, it's not so simple anymore. Uh, and it's, it's very hard to, to even suggest a move. I can say, I can suggest a, a general plan, but yes. I mean, I, I just want to show you what I, what I, yes. what I said earlier. So around... Around here it was Y to move, so I suggested a simple line with, together with Daniel. Queen f6 check, then queen h8, king e7, bishop c3, and then the king was uh, somehow hiding from the checks, and then I start playing on the king side and uh, maybe slowly trade the bishops and try to, to do something. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that this position that they achieved is going to be much more difficult for Y to do so, because black can keep his king on the king side. Uh, close to the pawns, so yeah, even if yeah, definitely not easy. But um, you know, I think in such positions, um, it's kind of important to play on your opponent's nerves. Kind of um, try to keep the tension, and, um, try to annoy him as much as possible until he cracks up. Yes, because I I I'm not so sure if by general plan. There is a, like a, a very clear way for why to win here. Yes, I mean you, you, should, you need to kind of maneuver around yeah. um, for a while. Yeah. I don't know. I think I think I would have played a move like um, queen d5 here. No, or what do you think? Something along these lines. Just okay because um, the move bishop f6 is forcing the exchange of queens, but. Do you think white can win this uh, this uh, this bishop ending with so much reduced material? Um, probably not. The bishop's ending is a dead draw in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, the problem is the reduced quantity of pawns. Oh, they made a move. They made a move. Queen d5. Queen d5. Yeah. So my first prediction is right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good start. Um, let's see. So now it's just um... <laughs> someone in the chat is writing Daniel question mark. I forgot to update the chat. <laughs> no, not the chat. The the name like below the camera. Yeah, they think that like Daniel uh, suddenly grew up some brown hair during yes. the stream. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so let's see. I I'll change the. The text right now as we speak. Let's see if the viewers can spot it and move it even like this so it will look more artistic. This is cool. Okay, so let's see. Queen d5 on the board, and um, 
By the way, uh, I we have to share a small circle for our, both of our cameras because I didn't prepare properly uh, for two people streaming together. So you have to see it exactly in the center, otherwise we will see uh, the beautiful pictures behind you. <laughs> I have an Iron Maiden poster. Yeah, exactly. Do you want to see it? Yeah, I, I was afraid to say it out loud. I'm not sure if this if I wanted to uh, disclose this fact that you're an Iron Maiden fan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people uh, might have liked you until now. Yeah, I'm not afraid to say it. <laughs> you're not afraid, but I mean, I care about you, so I didn't want... <laughs> Everyone to to know yeah, that you're not afraid. It's not, not a secret, not a secret. Anymore, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. Iron Maiden. Uh, I, oh, yeah, I'm actually sitting right in front of the camera, so... I yeah, no, this is them. good. Now it's good. But, okay. you know, like, the only reason... Okay, I, I, I'm not afraid to admit something bad about myself, but all the Iron Maiden uh, fans will hate me afterwards. It's not like I don't like their music or anything, uh, but... Uh, I just the, didn't hear about them for many, many years. And the only reason I know of their existence is because of this song, Teenage Dirtbag, when they say, I listen to Iron Maiden, baby. You know this song? Uh -huh, yes, actually I do. It's, um, it's one of these songs from uh, American teen movies. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. just a teenage dirtbag, baby. So, yes, that one. I listen to Iron Maiden, baby, like you. Yeah, so... Thanks for this uh, amazing performance. You're welcome. I mean, uh, in this position, at least one, someone has to perform. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like... Uh, probably I, I, I must have heard some of their music through you uh, by accident, but I uh, never fell in love yet. So, yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, you forgive. Uh, yes, I kind of like it that we have our small community. differences. Yes, <laughs> I'm I'm more like a Vivaldi type of person. Yeah. Yes, I. Know. <laughs> I could say yes. I. It's hard to to even come up with a type of music that I like. I mean, just I like to. I'm like all these annoying uh, people who say I like good music when it sounds good. Yeah, that's when I like it. Yeah. Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> so, yeah. So this is, you, you came right in the, in the right moment where we start talking about series and movies and like asking about the Lonely Island and so on. But you already faced the question. So. Well, oh, oh, uh, what question? If you were to choose one of the top 10 players for a Lonely Island. Yeah. Yet. Okay, so please. Please, 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 please. Someone must send. I, I just want to make sure I'm understanding the question. Okay, top, I'll phrase it. I'll rephrase it. Yes. If you were to go to a, I mean, to be on a deserted island and you could, yes. you could take only one player from the top 10 with you to be your company and maximize your survival chances. And let's also assume that you have a chessboard with you. <laughs> Just yes. for, uh, so, who would it be of the top ten? Yeah, I think I have an answer, but I, I need to. I, I'm not so sure if he is currently in the top ten. Okay, just yeah. just say it above twenty seven fifty or any number. Yes. So I would choose uh, Peter Swindler. Nice, uh, nice. So a couple of reasons. So first of all, is like in general, uh, seems like a fun guy to be with. Uh, yes. He, He's also playing the Grunfeld. <laughs> That's very important in a lonely island, yeah. Yeah, so he could teach me all of the Grunfeld lines. Uh, well, and, what, but you'll give him some of your food as, as an exchange? Um, yes, of course, for a Grunfeld conversation, it's a, it's a worthy uh, yes. material for the food, yes. Yes, <laughs> for those who don't know, Asaf and every other person who was ever born in Israel plays the Gunfeld. <laughs> no, not everybody. But uh, okay, but they, they, if if someone isn't, he will at some point. And by the way, we we developed a theory. Actually, Asaf developed a theory, and I just agree 
that uh, it's probably the one of the main reasons. Actually, let you uh, say it. What do you, what do you want to About the Grunfeld being in fashion, in uh, trendy. Uh, you mean uh, the Mark Zaitlin thing? Theory. The Zaitlin theory. Yeah. Okay, so uh, in the city of uh, Be'er Sheva in Israel, there was, uh, is still is there a very famous player and a coach, Mark Zaitlin. Yes. Uh, which he was one of the founding, let's say, fathers of the Grunfeld defense. He was one of the first started to play it uh, on the high level and probably the only uh, one who, who didn't play anything else for his entire life yes he's uh, like In a those guru years. of this opening yes and he just um, he just um, kind of passed through this opening to all of his students in the Beersheba club and at the times almost all of the grandmasters in Israel I think were on the Beersheba club yeah by the way 73 years old for those yes. who don't know Yes. Um, so I think, in a larger sense, uh, since, uh, since the current uh, popularity of this opening is uh, many thanks to the Abruch books and Boris Gelfand, who was, was playing this on the World Championship match game. So it, you could say that uh, the origins of the popularity of this opening is from him. Yes. Uh, Everyone in Beersheva, and by the way, Beersheva used to have. Uh, a record number of grandmasters per capita uh, yes. back at the 90s where uh, we had a lot of Russian uh, immigrants is this how we call it the, the yes, yes the, the large immigrants from Russia like a million Russians came in a period of like 15 years and to Israel Jewish Russians from the ex-Soviet Union and uh, yes. many of them chess not many but relatively to what we have in Israel, many chess players uh, and strong grandmasters join us, uh, led by Boris Gelfand and uh, other strong players. I'll not mention everyone, of course, but uh, yes. we, since then we have a very, very strong uh, chess nation and uh, tra tradition of playing chess. And since uh, the 90s, um, almost all of them came to Beersheva, which is a relatively small city, so it was the city with the most grandmaster per capita and uh, in the entire world right? in the entire world exactly and uh, yes. and uh, then probably it was this the record was broken by uh, some city in iceland uh, i assume reykjavik i don't know it's possible and uh, yeah it's also, interesting whether they counted bobby fisher as one of their grandmasters yeah <laughs> i don't know but uh, either way um, in Beersheva, so uh, there are many grandmasters who came and also uh, like who came to Beersheva in the 90s, many grandmasters who grew up there also, and uh, all of them, in, in one form or another, were under the tutoring of Mark Zeitlin, Zeitlin who, yes. who taught them from very early age or uh, very early moment in their, in their career uh, the Grunfeld defense and how to play it and uh, inserted and infected them with the passion and love for it and even I uh, who was relatively young and uh, too young to be influenced by him directly when I was uh, 14 years old and I st stopped playing the dragon against d4 <laughs> and I started uh, coming up with I asked my coach Ilya Botvinik what to play against d4 he told me to play the Grunfeld he printed out some uh, in a copy machine or in a, some Zeitlin games from the database. I didn't have chess base back at the time. And I studied his games uh, from just like in the old days, I assume. Maybe they didn't have copy machines. But anyway, I, I studied his games printed from chess base in the old 90s days. Uh, I think I already did, also did it at some point. Yeah, and I, and, I, and I just went through all of his games and it was so amazing and I, I just didn't want to, to stop uh, playing the Gunfeld since then and uh, yeah it's just it was just uh, fascinating so your choice of Peter Svidler is a very understandable choice as, as Peter won't, might say himself not regrettable yeah okay ish yeah that, the, the move Bishop D8 was played yes 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 Slightly strange move, no? 
Um, the move, yeah, slightly strange. Okay, he wants maybe to exchange queens, yeah, with the move uh, queen g5. Yeah, queen g5 is the idea. Um, so, it's not what can entirely I clear, um, like, how to proceed. Yes, and by the way, uh, if after all these stories and the great choice of Petrus Villa, you still didn't decide to subscribe to Asaf's channel, then something must be wrong with you. Uh, but unfortunately, if I up update the stream live, the, the description, people won't see it. So write his name, just like you see it here on YouTube, Asaf Givon. You'll see his channel and uh, press subscribe. Worst case, you'll unsubscribe later when he takes over YouTube. So, okay, back to the game. Yeah, thank you, Tom. <laughs> Back to the game. Here, f4 uh, seems like a decent idea, but... Yes, um, but it, okay, also slightly... It, it, it was not played, right? Or... Um, it wasn't played, but uh, seems like an idea. Because uh, I see people in the chat saying that king f1 was played. Aha, uh -huh. I don't see it, but now I do. Okay, oh, actually, another move. King f1 was played. Um, Queen f7 and now queen e4 check. Well, I'm not sure what white is trying to achieve, but uh, I guess we will see. Uh, as I said, I think he's just trying to play on the opponent's nerves. Just kind of uh, not doing anything special. It, you know, it's, it's actually a kind of position that it would be interesting to see actually Carlsen playing with white. Because the, the, the one thing that Carlsen might maybe is the best in the world Okay, he's best in the world in also in other things, but... He's the he's best in the world at being the best in the world. Yes, he's, he's very good at kind of um, <laughs> squeezing his opponents on the very small advantages. But it would be interesting to see him squeezing this position, because Karyakin... Um, I think also the match situation um, kind of uh, maybe gives Karyakin the feeling that he's, he won't try maybe too hard to win, because... Draw is also good for him. Yeah. Um, so I'm not so sure. Of course, of course, he has no risk, so he will keep trying. Yes. But how far he will go with this, I don't know. Well, as far as 4 a.m. probably. <laughs> That's. Yeah. I mean, he just wants to get us out of our game. He just wants to have to to force us to be tired. But actually, it's probably a good strategy for Karyakin if he doesn't succeed in half an hour to save his energies. For tomorrow, yes. because if he and Carlson is tired, there's more chances for mistakes tomorrow, and they don't have a rest day. And Carlson is white, so. Yes, to tomorrow is a very critical game. Yes, it's the last time, uh, last game yeah. before the last uh, rest day, right? No, no, they have uh, rest day uh, before the last round as well. Oh, yeah. No, but it's a critical game because it's the last day before Gelfand comes to. Uh, to commentate with us. By the way, um, I want, I was trying to explain to the viewers how amazing it is. I wanted to be, them to, to hear it from the perspective of another Israeli and a chess juice founder, speaking of squeezing in chess. So, uh, how incredible is it that Boris Gelfand agreed to join us in uh, one of the rounds? You know, for me, as an Israeli, uh, which is one, like kind of the our hero and leader uh, to yes. see him on, on uh, screaming on stream is very exciting yes. uh, it's also I think I've never seen him like doing any kind of um, I've seen some uh, press conferences which mm -hmm. he made that he spoke about his games but it's really very rare to see him talking about chess yeah. like um, and it's very interesting opportunity I think yes and by the way, Asaf, uh, probably yes. uh, as, as a members of the channel where Boris Gelfand will, will be, I would like you to read his book as, as, as fast as you can. If you didn't order it already, then... Uh, uh, you mean about the dynamic decision making? Yes. Uh, I still didn't order it, but uh, the thing that I could say that I recommended it to a couple of my students, so um, I, I did make a contribution for the book sailings. Yes. 
I nice. have a purchase it, I think. It's a good, uh, I, I, and, like, I, I heard a lot of good things about his books. And yes. I also read his first book on, um, like, not the entire book, but I think uh, when I was, you have, you have the book, right? Uh, the dynamic book? Yeah, no, no, the, the first one. Yeah. The, so I think maybe I saw parts of the book um, when I was uh, like in your place or something. I, I, I was really impressed. By the book? Yes. But Not okay. by me. <laughs> okay. God okay. forbid. Kaisa forbid, sorry. Kaisa forbid. Um, uh, I mean, like, with the book, there is something I wanted to mention. Many times people ask us about a recommendation for a book uh, on stream. I forgot to ask Daniel. Queen e7, bishop e5, by the way, on the board. Nothing bishop much. E5. Yeah, nothing much to add on this position. Uh, Karakin wants to avoid exchanging pieces and uh, bring his pawns. I mean, at some point he will push f4 or h4. Yes. And yes, uh, he, he must do something. Yes, yes and, and, and the longer he waits, the better it is in case Carlsen falls into time pressure later. Just having both yes, of them thinking. They, they have another time control, no? Yeah. To move number 60 or 80? Yeah, or 60. Eight? They have 15 more minutes, but I'm not sure yes. what's happening. And that's the last one. But 15 or 50? 15. 50 is 50. on move 40 and 15 is on move 50. 60. Okay, so... Um, yes, but... I mean, even if the f pawn kind of will ever march forward, how yeah. big of, of an achievement is it? Well, not that big, but it's yeah. gonna be better than nothing, I mean. No, of course, but okay, I think in this position, black have to play a move like queen e6, yeah, just to put the queen uh, on the... Mm -hmm. uh, some checking possibilities from uh, different angles, yes. which is important. Um, yes. You know, but because black just kind of need to stand in place. Eh? He doesn't need to do too much. Yes. So, by the way, um, the earlier in the position, where it, when it was the critical moment, as as usual, move thirty eight. It's always yes. just before the time control. So in this position, as you can see. White had to choose between bishop takes f7 and queen b3. Both were incredibly uh, simple looking and incredibly complicated when you try to work out the variations. Yes. So queen b3 is what we decided uh, would be better, which is obviously what wasn't played in the game. Knight f5, bishop f7, and now king, G, uh, king g7. And this is the reason I think that Karyakin probably didn't go for it, because it looks kind of complicated. And now rook h3 looks like the only move and already it's very artificial but now black has this interesting defensive resource that made us think that this entire line is maybe dangerous for white actually queen e7 threatening knight h4 and uh, preparing bishop e5 after d5 and then uh, we were not sure how to proceed uh, for uh, for uh, white but yes. but then okay at first glance we didn't find anything but then after Kayakin made this mistake, uh, we went back with Daniel and, and found uh, this move bishop g8. And uh, I think bishop g8 can be referred to as an invisible move. Um, it's not completely invisible because... Um, yeah, but, just... but the point is knight h4, take Thanks. queen f7 seven. and take on c7. Yes. And then play bishop f4 and protect everything and d5 later. Actually, with such an exposed king, um, I wouldn't be surprised if the rook on a1 falls very quickly uh, with, with, with checks. Yeah. Yeah. Later on. Yeah. yeah but this looks very good for white. Yes. Yes. And uh, what I wanted to stress, so on the same topic that uh, that uh, someone asked me once to recommend chess books. So uh, other than recommending Daniel's two chess books, which he wrote at 14 and 17 years old, about end games. And the other one, I, I don't even remember what was the title, but uh, it was a decent book, especially for a 14-year-old. So, <laughs> what book do you recommend? Uh, in, like a general book on any topic? Let's say any topic, uh, 2000 level more or less, 
people who want to improve in chess, let's say between 1600 to 2200? Um, I don't know, I, uh, I think the... Okay, maybe my answer would be um, kind of uh, very generic, like a, a lot of people would say it, uh, but the, really the, the Kasparov, uh, my greatest uh, predecessor series yeah. was, I think, very good. Yes. For any for any chess player, not only the level of the book, but you know the stories, the history of yeah. The, the I'm matches. actually I have a confession. I I didn't really read the books in detail. I just like, you know, how do you say it in English? When I just went quickly through the pages, I don't have the physical copies uh, uh, at my home. So I when I was with friends, I just looked at it, and I didn't even think about asking them to borrow it to to borrow it from them. So, yes. yeah, but for just I'm glad you mentioned it because one of my bucket list uh, things before I reach 30, okay, let's say before I reach 25, uh, is to to read Kasparov's entire series. So, and also he wrote on himself. Uh, there is a recent book also. Yes, yes, he has a lot of good books, Kasparov. Right? Yeah. But you know, at some point, uh, you know, a guy like Kasparov, like a world champion. Uh, each time that he uh, he has a, a book with a title with his name, you you are kind of wondering uh, what is the actual part of him in the writing of the book. You know, there are a lot of ghost um, writers. So how do you say this? Yeah, um, yeah it's hard to say. Queen e6 was played. They play relatively I, fast. Queen e6. They take less than a minute for each move. Queen e6. King g2. Yes. Bishop e7, queen a8. They they play like it's rapid. King f7, queen h8, h5, queen wow. g7, king e8. I mean, they don't even think anymore. Yeah, it's it was not that forced of a line. Yeah, but they just all of this line, all of this sequence took them less than three minutes to play. Combined. Maybe they just don't have too much time. I think they do. I think they do. Please mention the time, uh, people in the chat. Wow, this is incredible, but what do you think is the move h5? I mean, this is a kind of move that Black probably had to play in some point anyway, right? It's it's not, it doesn't um, strike me like a big achievement for Black, the move h5. Like, that White forced him to play h5. Maybe the whole idea was to place the Queen on g7, and here the King is kind of cut off, um, you know from his pawns, but really how to proceed. Mm -hmm. The queen on g7 doesn't have too much possibilities, yeah? Yeah. By the way, I forgot to mention earlier when I introduced you, how should anyone contact you if they want, if they ever wish? Sorry? Uh, huh? Just how to contact me? Uh, yeah. You know, by... Um, by first of all, uh, you know, uh, my, through my channel or mm -hmm. through email. Mm -hmm. uh, on, on my channel I put my email also on if there are any people here who play on leeches or chess.com I have a coach profile there so mm -hmm. it's uh, I, I think I'm kind of easy to reach mm -hmm. um, is Facebook think, an option yes Facebook it is an option but you know um, uh, if somebody will send me a, a message on Facebook uh, I, I will not necessarily see it because uh, of the filter yeah uh, yeah, there is this filter. So the best options is the on chess.com on or on liches. By the way, all our viewers, if you didn't hear about it, go to Facebook right now or at any moment that you that you can, look at your messages and then press filtered messages, and you might find some messages from people you care, which for some reason, one reason or another, got filtered and you didn't see it for maybe a year or more. I personally found like three messages that I really wanted to see, which were filtered for some reason from people inside my friend list. So feel free yes. to, to, to use this amazing trick, which uh, is extremely uh, disappointing. Uh, so it's called message requests. You can see it on the top left when you press your messages uh, bar. So mm -hmm. a small trick. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. Yes. Yes. Uh, so they of course keep playing more moves. So um, uh, let's see the clock situation. 
Nobody says the clock. Carlson, 27 minutes, Sergei, 24. So. No, uh, I just don't see even um, like a theoretical plan for White, like how to improve the position. Wow, the, they play really fast. They don't care anymore. Are you sure all of these moves are played so fast? Maybe it is just kind of updated, like once in a minute or something? Yeah, but. Uh, I mean, wow. w even if it's updated uh, late, uh, there's still a lot of moves, and usually you don't see many moves in it like at once. Um, someone is asking a question. Tal, will you be playing in London? Well, I would have loved to, and uh, there was a decent chance that I would have even uh, received some conditions there. But unfortunately for me, it's uh, colliding with the Israeli finals. The national championship. By the way, Asaf, you were in. Yes. You, you uh, qualified for the finals, right? Uh, of the Israeli championship. In uh, yes, I, I'm playing. You know. You're playing. No, I just wanted to make sure. Uh, I know that you qualified. I don't know if you're playing or not. So it's in. Uh, yes, I do. I do. It's in a week and a half. Yeah. Uh, yes. Ten yes. days, more or less. So. Yeah, it, it collides with the London Chess Classic, and I wish I could have uh, I could have played because the London Chess Classic is an amazing tournament, probably the best tournament I've been to. M my number one tournament so far is the Chess Classic, then Gibraltar, Gibraltar, Gibraltar. Yes, and uh, then probably the Bill Chess Festival. Of course, I haven't been to all the tournaments, but from the ones that I did experience, those are my top three, and very close to each other by level. Uh, of uh, fun and organization, so. Yes, okay. I've never been in the London Classics, but uh, I've heard good things uh, about this. Tournament. It's just, it's just. I don't know. It feels like you, you're playing in the whole in the Olympus. Like you, you, you like. You meet. You don't meet uh, like and talk, but you see the top ten players all the time next to the playing hall. You go after the game, sit there somewhere, and you see them. You can ask them for a picture. They will. Uh, they will gladly agree. You can uh, sometimes talk to them. You can see them. You can sit very close to where they're sitting, like when watching them in the hall where they are playing for free. I believe. Yes, yes. Yeah. You, you know. I, I, now that you mention it, I think I've never, um, never faced. Like I never seen uh, Carlson in real life. Uh, in real life. Yes. It's funny. Uh, I, I've seen some other guys also played against uh, Michael Adams, uh, the top British player. Mm -hmm. But I've ne no, they didn't see. Yeah. I've ne never seen. There's a Karyakin I did see in the European Club Cup. I think you were all also there. Yeah. Um, you know, but Carlsen is more a, a more rare figure to kind of to meet. Yeah, I got a chance to have a picture with Carlsen. I even got a picture with Caruana and uh, yeah, with Giri, like many players uh, that I saw in the recent Olympiad. And uh, yeah, they're all very nice, but for for some reason I decided not to put them anywhere on any social media. I want to keep them for myself and show them to my children uh, once I'll have some, in maybe in 50 years. <laughs> So after I, I conquer my chess, uh, my chess, let's call it ambitions. Chess ambitions, yeah, okay. So Queen C4, uh, they had more moves, but uh, people don't even update us anymore. Yes, but you, you know, I, I really kind of puzzled by like, okay, we had some very similar position like 10 moves ago, right? Yes. What did White achieve in the last 10 moves? This is my question. Well, he, he gave us some space to enrich the viewers with our stories. Yes, I, I mean, let, let, let's face it. I mean, it's um, probably pro probably there is no very good way to improve the position or, or at least not a very straightforward one. As I said, maybe the best strategy is just keep on playing and wait for some mistake. But, you know, it's also very difficult for Black to make a mistake. He's just keeping all of his pieces uh, defended. Yes. How do you make any problems for Black? Um, 
Well, I want to share a story with you to answer just this one question that you asked. Okay. It's a very funny story um, that I heard several times. I don't know if it's true or not. I wish if any one of my viewers here uh, can confirm it, uh, either now or in the comments later, uh, I would love to see a written proof of this story somewhere. Okay. I, I saw only the censored version and heard it uh, like... So you asked me how, why should the, should the put pressure? So uh, my answer is going to be that he should catch black by the balls. But wait a second. This is the story. Um, Kasparov played against um, Tigran L. Petrosian. It was L? Former world champion, yeah? The L was the middle war letter, right? Uh, no, L, L is the young P. one, is the, is the current one. P. Yeah, Tigran What's P. The young one, the one who, the current Tigran yeah. is, is L. Um, I, I'm not so, not so sure, but let, let's assume, okay. Actually, I. Tigran V Petrosian, I think. No, no, V is the original. I is the father. Vertanovich. This is the... Yeah, the father's name. So, yes. anyway, anyway, the world champion, Tigran Petrosian, played against Gary Kasparov. Yes. In the, one of their first encounters. And Kasparov had an amazing attack. You probably know this game. And then, I, I do. And then, like, he had rooks on the B and A file. Actually, you know what? I think I can show the viewers the, the position. Just hang I on. I've seen this game like a couple of days ago, you know? Yes. Uh, it's a very famous one. Uh, I'll show the position just for the sake of, of history, but in the meantime you'll do the moves on the board, so which position do we have after queen a4 or queen e6? Um, I, I don't know, I, I saw the position after queen e6. So queen e6, queen a4 check, queen c6, queen a7 check, queen c7, white to move. I just think white is just kind of hovering around with these pieces, yes, but what, yeah. what is doing? Queen d4 was also played. Queen where? After queen c7, this is the current position. Um, um, I yes, really think, queen c7, exactly. Uh, I really think Karyakin is kind of trying to confuse Carlsen just playing quick moves without any big point, just... Uh, just playing around a little bit and waiting for some small mistake but as I said it's it's really difficult to imagine black making any big mistakes here because everything is protected and defended so if white plays continue with his checks black can play queen d6 um, I it, it really don't see how to improve the position so it's it Tigran V I just checked Sorry. Uh, yeah, that's what I said, no? Yeah, as you said, yeah. Okay. So. Um, okay, so. I'm preparing the position while you can uh, mention a few other things. Uh, the only thing I can say about the position is that on the next moves probably this is what we are going to see Karyakin just maneuvering maneuvering around without any concrete plan just waiting for some mistake and also it's very possible that we will see uh, some peace agreement uh, quite soon so queen a2 queen wait. a2 was played wait queen c7 queen a2 yeah oh this is the move Yes. So perhaps he's trying to penetrate from here. From mm -hmm. F7. It's very possible. But, oh, actually, Queen F7 is a threat. Because if White exchange all of the pieces, the pawn endgame should be won, right? Um. Also, not trivial question, but like, it's uh, it's, it's, like should be winning, right? Yes. So if it's White to move Queen F7. 
is a threat, and then after he defends, let's say queen f let's say some stupid move for black. Um, so queen f7, and if queen d6, defending the pawn there is bishop g5. Yes. And now white always have the possibility to exchange all of the, his pieces. Yes. Actually, it's also just winning a pawn, yes, because after some moves he can also just take on g6. Mm -hmm. So white definitely has a threat, which is something new already. Yes. So queen f7 is a threat. How to deal with it? So of course, black can play queen d6 first. So the point is now queen f7 is actually losing after queen takes d2. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, so, what do you think here? I don't know. Bishop c3. I mean, maybe this is possible. But once again, now queen f7. It's not even a threat right now. Yeah. Um, really difficult to make progress, but I think something like this would occur, like queen the yeah. queen queen d6. You know, um, bishop c3 or bishop e3. Yeah. It's definitely. I mean, if if Karakin wins this position, I think I would uh, it, it would kind of. Um, gain his right to be the world champion mm -hmm. because if he wins this position that it means that he uh, he possesses the ability of Carlsen uh, in winning like slight advantage positions squeezing his opponent yeah so if Karakin is also able to do it so he deserves to win but I really doubt he can do anything yeah so difficult for Black to make a mistake here. It, it just stands in place. It's easy to make a mistake when you need to make some difficult choices. Uh, so but here, I'll show the viewers for one moment. The I yes. want to tell the story about Petrosian against Kasparov. So here's the board, in case anyone is wondering. So I'll try to just adjust it a little bit, as you can see, just a little bit. So you can see the board a little bit more conveniently. Yes. So here is the board. You can see it here. So it's not the board from the game here by uh, Sergei Karyakin versus Magnus Carlsen, but it's a very nice story that I want to hear someone confirming. So it goes as follows. In this position, Kasparov was attacking and probably had, was thinking that he's about to win against Black's exposed king, he's only pawned down. And then Petrosian played this amazing move that is kind of a historical clash between the two styles, which kind of shows Petrosian's great uh, tenacity. And it's probably, I, it's, it's kind of safe to say that Karyakin in many ways is Petrosian's successor in the defense department, yeah? Mm, I don't know, Karyakin is much more active defender. Yeah, uh, but I mean, in this position, do you know the move that Petrosian played? Uh, actually, I did. I, I, I do, sorry. Yeah, so what was it? No, I don't want to say it. I want to try to give the audience a chance to try to find the best move. Well, it's first a, of all, it's white to move. White played yes, queen... Yes, it, it's almost an absurd move if you think about it. Yes, yeah, so white played queen b1. Uh, okay, but if we let people time to think, then uh, they will just make more moves and more moves so I'll get back to it in a moment so queen a2 they played like much more moves queen d6 ah you have it then bishop b3 okay uh, after after queen a2 yeah queen d6 bishop a e3 yes uh, you predicted queen d6 yeah queen e6 yeah, I, I also predicted bishop c3 or bishop e3 but, uh, queen e6 and now yes, queen, queen a7 check King e8 and now bishop c5 so this is nice already we see that Karyakin is willing to exchange the bishops he thinks he has uh, chances to win without the bishop yes I think he's, he's correct to do so because after the exchange of bishops at least there are some uh, you know penetration points to the black position and now the king of white perhaps can come slightly closer to the center when the bishops get exchanged yes and with the bishops on the board it might be too dangerous 
yeah, so yeah. and Carlsen doesn't want to exchange with bishop d8 okay and now Karyakin is thinking and while he does I'll go back to the story so yes. here this position um, so Petrosian was thinking and he made this move this move that uh, historically made this game uh, much more famous than any other game between Kasparov and Petrosian and this is kind of sad I think because Kasparov is now very young yeah probably 19 playing against yes. the world champion or someone who was like the war the ex war champion I don't even remember no it's 81 so the ex war champion yes. and uh, still in a very good shape and he is still very young he, he can lose a game or two yeah and then afterwards even before becoming a world champion himself, he beat Petrosian, like he beat the crap out of him like many times with beautiful games. But still, the, because Kasparov became so great and so uh, well known, this game that he lost is the most famous one among their encounters. Yes. You see, you see the, the sad part here that is like when, when, he, when Kas Kasparov became so big that the fact that he lost to a world champion when he was young is more famous than all the the wins the impressive wins that he did afterwards but that's not the story the story is that here Petrosian played this amazing move king to c6 which simply double attacks the knight on c4 and the bishop on d6 and um there is not much white can do he should he should probably play casually and uh, take on c7 i think and then try to no but then b takes c4 and he loses a piece maybe ah no actually this is the right line bishop takes c7 i'll just i can't make the moves but just imagine it bishop takes c7 uh b takes c4 rook b7 rook takes c7 rook takes a6 check followed by queen b5 check and he can uh, get the piece back in these variations and uh, probably it will be close to a draw but kasparov wanted to win he played some other move and now he's just a piece down and maybe like as you can see a few moves later he simply resigned he didn't even wait for Petrosian's move even though the king is on c5 and the fact that Petrosian won with the king on c5 in such a style a defensive style that's active uh, first of all because it's a, a big lesson a very crucial lesson for everyone who will see this game and you can talk about it for hours probably but Let's just mention the story finally. So Spassky, Boris Spassky, came to Kasparov. He knew Petrosian very well, so he came to Kasparov and uh, he, he told him, he gave him a very good advice. He said that, I, but I don't remember the exact stories. He compared Petrosian to some, li to some lion or some animal that if you try to attack it, it will just destroy you. And then he said that you, or a bear, and like that you that you need to put pressure on him but you can't really go for the throat and you need to grab him by the balls but only one at a time that's the story and uh, I heard it more than once I'm waiting to hear if it's true or if one of my friends invented it <laughs> so either yeah, way it sounds like something which was invented yeah either way uh, confirm or uh, this prove this story and if you can confirm it please tell me uh, I, I can't confirm it but what I can say that I know uh, for like um, out of general knowledge that Spassky was considered to be a very polite and kind of nice person um, it's kind of difficult to imagine him saying something like this yeah but this is the story that I heard and uh, uh, it's possible. It's maybe possible. maybe Spassky like said it when or or I don't know. Maybe he was nice, and then like someone uh, who was there got drunk and told the story to someone else like in in such a fashion. And uh, I mean I'm sure someone in the process of this story was drunk. Either the Spassky or someone else who were repeating the story, and this is how this kind of. Uh, Verbosity arrived. Yeah. So are there still the like Carlson is still thinking after bishop c5? This is the position, yes? No, bishop d8. Uh, did I forget to mention? Yeah, it is. Bishop d8 was played. 
Yes, not that it's such a revolutionary... I think I mentioned that Carlsen didn't want to exchange the bishops, which... Now, Karyakin thought for seven minutes and just played this move H3 on the yeah, board. Yeah, actually, I wanted to say a long time ago that I think that it is a useful move for... Yeah, in case you go F4, yeah? Yeah, so if he ever wants to play F4, then he just might as well prevent uh, this square from the queen. And, and he's not giving anything by, by this move, he's not weakening anything so it's just not no reason not to play it but you know i think it's funny because he made maybe 10 or 20 moves like all kinds of checks and random moves and then he played h3 it seems like he made this move uh, you know just to avoid the rule of 50 moves without uh, taking peace or moving a pawn you know yes. uh, sometimes people do a lot of moves and they they have to move some pawns so they do it Yes. So it looks like one of these positions. Because h3, of course, it's slightly useful move, but of course, no big deal. Yes, it's still, yes. still very, very equalish position. E oh, you had a Swiddler moment. Yes. <laughs> nice. You're... Yes, I hope, I wish you will watch this part of the stream where you said that you will choose him. I'm sure you will be glad. <laughs> I had the honor to be in the same uh, dinner table with the legend and uh, he, he was really? even uh, he was aware of my channel really? he, he was quoting something from my channel oh this is this is great yes but I, I think it wasn't like what he said uh, I'll quote it I'll allow myself to quote it I hope he will forgive me if he ever hears it but yes. Uh, someone said something to me that was uh, sounded a little bit dramatic and then he said shots were fired as they say on this channel and uh, well from they didn't I mean my channel didn't include these words but after this dinner I will say shots were fired on each video just to justify it just... well, you know for, for a guy on this caliber uh, to you know to say uh... He addressed my channel without me yes. ever talking to him about it. This is uh, may perhaps your biggest achievement in life. So far. <laughs> maybe so far. maybe one day Kramnik will address it. Okay, somebody is saying Queen d5 was played. Queen d5 on the board. Okay. Oh, by the way, I mean, I probably shouldn't give stage to trolls. But I just can't help it in this particular case. Someone was claiming in the chat that they shouldn't watch us because we are two Muslims commentating on chess. And of course nobody here and nobody should have any problem with Muslims or Jews or anyone. We are, we are all very kind people who want uh, to have peace and so on. And we want to spread the love for chess. But just the fact that someone wrote such a message is is like i'm amazed i'm just i'm amazed by by what people can write and he seemed very serious in the way he phrased it <laughs> like oh my god i'm i'm so i mean i'm flattered in a way you know that that someone thinks that uh that uh, that the people shouldn't watch us for any reason it means that some that people do watch us and there's already a discussion on the topic. Wow, well, yeah. I'm still uh, I'm still having a hard time to uh, to like uh, digest the fact that we're celebrities. Yeah, very big celebrities in the chess zone. Ah, which brings me to a question. It was all leading to a question, but first make the move. Queen, wait, Bishop e3. Bishop e3. Bishop e7, queen b8, king f7, queen h8. Are you making the moves? Uh, sorry, after queen d5, bishop, bishop e3, e3, bishop e7, queen b8, king f7, queen h8. Okay, and now um, brings me to the question. Asaf, in general, yes. this is probably a question I should ask anyone on my channel. Yes. But uh, would you prefer to be the biggest fish in a small pool or the smallest fish in a much in the ocean let's say not the smallest but the small fish in the ocean 
Metaphorically speaking. Yeah, I understood it. <laughs> I don't know. I, um, I think I would rather be a big fish in a small uh, uh, aquarium or what the, the word you this said. Well, I said pool, but the fact a that pool. you said aquarium means that you mean as small as possible, yeah? No, um, In a bag. Small fish in a bag. The biggest fish in the bag. <laughs> in a plastic bag. Okay, so... Yes. So you're like Dvoretsky. In the, in the interview he said that, like, he said it about himself, uh, as far as I remember, in the chess base interview by Sagar Shah. It was yes. a great interview, by the way. Three parts. Read it. It's incredible. I can't recommend it enough. I, I started reading it actually. Finish it. Just stop the stream and go now and finish it. <laughs> stop whatever you're doing. It's just... So Dvoretsky says about himself at some point that he prefers to be a small fish in a bigger pool. No. A big fish in a, in a small pool. Addressing the fact that he chose to be a chess coach rather than a player. Because he realized he won't be world champion or something along these lines. And he said he prefers to be uh, the biggest fish in the coach pool rather than this, this, uh, rand like a, a medium fish in the player's pool. Yeah? Yes. And uh, yeah, I, I understand. It's a very practical approach. And Asaf, I can see why you're a good coach, at least uh, according to me. I think on his era of playing, it was like what the 70s, the 80s, right? So I think on his time, uh, like being a chess player, or uh, it was much uh, bigger of a deal. There was no that much uh, play. Like today, there are a lot of strong players. Uh, I think on those times, there were perhaps not that much. Uh, of uh, strong players so I, I, I think if you were like a grandmaster of the 70s it was like a big honor it was like a, a huge big deal you know so I, I don't know if him uh, if he was like a grandmaster um, just a grandmaster if it really would be considered to be like a small fish you know yes uh, I'm not so sure no, of course not, but uh, in general, it's a nice question. It's a nice philosophical question because, uh, of course, many people will answer differently. I should probably prepare a bunch of these questions for my streams and ask everyone just to annoy them. Annoying everyone who comes. So everyone would, would, wouldn't like to, to join me and I'll be alone and I can have all the glory for myself. So um, being a small fish. I, I prefer to be a small fish in the ocean, but yeah, I mean, thanks for asking, by the way. What? <laughs> no. I, I didn't ask you back. Uh, ah, sorry. Uh, I didn't sorry. hear. I, 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 did, I was not polite enough. No, it's I'm funny. Polite. I'm just, the more conflict we have, the better it is for the rating. You know, we need to create some, you know, some some drama Something... I think the position didn't change practically at all it yeah but maybe 20 moves. it feels like you you found some logical reasoning for the move h3 but maybe it was just to avoid the 50 move rule that, that's what i said before so. ah, I, i'm sorry i should listen more so, yeah, you should. so the position we have after queen h8 was updated queen e6 bishop f4 Bust the move. Uh, bishop f4 was played? Yes. After we what? Which move from black? After queen I said queen e6, bishop f4, queen f6, and queen to b8. Uh, are you trying to work on your British accent? Indeed. In okay, it's impossible. But, but first of all, you should drink tea on your streams. Drink uh, tea? Mummy. Yes. Yes, and, and secondly, you, you should use. Uh, you, you should call me mate. Yes. Well, if I'm not gonna, okay, I don't. Just to make it clear, I'm aware that my British accent is the worst I've 
and that anyone has ever had but i really want to improve it so i feel like this is a good place to place to start practicing and uh it will encourage people to give me links to youtube channels that uh that uh teach uh, british accent with recommendations so please do it if you want to stop hearing me speaking like this in a hor horrible fashion just put one link in the comment i promise it will it will uh it's a win-win let's say so <laughs> the position hasn't changed much no it's really i think maybe one explanation to what is going on right now is that karyakin knows that the game would end in a draw eventually but he just wants to show his kind of uh, what is the right word here is controlling of Carlsen that he, he wants to show that he is in control he is the one who is trying and he just want to play a lot of moves to tire him up uh, for the rest draw of the was match. agreed <laughs> draw was agreed draw was agreed I think he was hearing you saying it so I'll just mention before everyone runs away because that's what they like to do in these cases. Uh, subscribing to the channel is not necessary but appreciated. Uh, maybe I should say it in the British accent. At least I should try. Subscribe to my channel and uh, I'll be very grateful. It will be most lovely and appreciated. I, I don't know. That, that's my best uh, try. And, uh, yes, and uh, I'll do more spontaneous streams after this match. And if you didn't get it already, we don't use any engines. And we are uh, interested in improving our own chess. And generally in this channel, I want to improve my own chess. Uh, and let the viewers see it. And, and instead of talking about how to improve our chess, I want to set an example, at least for myself. And maybe at least I'll improve... I'll help inspire one person somewhere out there in Cambodia or wherever who is watching us, whichever country it is, I, I'll take it. And uh, if I can inspire one person to, to work on chess better, it, it will be uh, a pleasure. So I'll just quickly say it, Asaf, bear with me. Subscribe to my channel. We are, Daniel Asaf and I are the co-founders of this Twitch channel, Chess Juice. We have six other members who are international masters and above. And uh, we are interested in uh, more followers there. So we have a link down below. And uh, what else? Check out my website. It has nothing much, but just check it out. And uh, like our Facebook page in this. For now, it's my Facebook page. There are going to be daily tactics and uh, maybe something more when I decide, uh, when I understand what I can put there other than nonsense. And follow on Twitter. And if you do all the following, then you will be granted with my utmost gratitude. And of course, it will help motivate me to create more of this content and uh, annoy people like Asaf much more frequently. So, uh, Asaf, any last words before everyone runs away? Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, for those of you who search for some uh, new uh, YouTube channel to learn some new chess things, so uh, I, I am open up my own channel. So, at the moment, uh, there are mainly uh, videos on Hebrew which are not relevant to most of you but uh, on the future I, I promise uh, to upload some interesting English material so you're most welcome uh, ch uh, checking my channel I will maybe put it on the chat yes so, yes okay. and by the way this is something I like to refer to as the honor system there is I mean there's nothing for us to really gain from it but we want to contribute to the chess community in a way we support the chess community uh, with the little, uh, with the small actions that we can uh, do to, 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 for the masses, let's say. And we kind of wish we would, uh, or hope, let's say, to receive support from the community by, uh, by just showing, sharing the love, receiving some love. That's more or less what we are, and, and, and the passion for chess, of course, that's what we are in for. 
and uh, we find it a great luxury that we can even afford to do it and that we can afford the time and that people actually are interested in what we have to say sometimes every now and then between the nonsense so uh, really grateful once again we have we reached like 2000 viewers uh, 2150 at some point we almost made an IMO today and uh, yeah I'm very very thankful and uh, I'm sure Asaf will be soon once he takes over YouTube and uh, again Twitch channel Chess Juice will stream on a daily basis ourselves solving tactics uh, playing Blitz uh, doing other things, matches against each other and whatnot. So just support in any way possible. Uh, I know everyone says it, but we're the only ones who mean it. So that's more or less it for now. Uh, and uh, let's just summarize the match because I started talking about myself. That the result is now 5-4 to four in favor of Sergei Karyakin. Three more games left. Tomorrow is the next game. And then we will have a free day. And then, like, after tomorrow, there won't be any more games in a row. There will, it will just be a free day, then a game, a free day, then the last game. And on round, as I mentioned before, on round 11, where, uh, on Saturday, we'll have Boris Gelfand uh, with us on the stream, which is, uh, I can't begin to describe how excited I am about it. And... Uh, and the fact that uh, Magnus is... Uh, point behind and uh, three only three games to go and uh, even though I'm rooting for Carlsen and I'm assuming uh, Asaf as well uh, otherwise I won't take him again <laughs> then uh, I'll uh, I I'll have to, I'll give it to Sergei today he played fantastic chess and for the first time I can say that I love almost every move he made I mean of course er I can say every move but just he made one mistake, unfortunately, but I, it's really worth clapping for. So, good job, Sergey, in this game and in the match so far. And even if I don't love all your moves or your strategy, I respect your level and what you're doing here. It's really beyond uh, ridiculous, in my opinion, in, in a good way. And... Uh, yeah, that's more or less it for now. So uh, I hope you enjoyed watching us or at least learned something from this stream. And if you want to learn some more, then keep watching the next